Hello, everybody, and welcome to the stream. Oh, that's a bit loud. <laughs> but good morning. Today, we're playing a brand... Well, I say brand new. It's brand new for the channel. <laughs> we're playing a brand new game called Amelie. It's from the same studio, two and a half studio, <laughs> who created A Date With Death. The visual novel all about trying to smash death, who is a baby girl. <laughs> so this is a visual novel that is based around like Yuri. It's about the titular character named Amelie, who is locked in a house, a mansion, I don't know. Anyway, she's not allowed to go out. It's a dark, psychological, tragic Yuri. So I'm very interested in seeing how it goes. It's supposed to be pretty short. The average time that people finish it is about like somewhere between one and a half hours and two hours. But obviously with me talking all over it and voice acting and being a terrible slow person, <laughs> it'll probably be like two to three times that time. So yeah, <laughs> this will be a short stream for us, but it'll be nice. But good morning, everybody. I hope you're all ready for the stream. Let's go lesbians. Hell yeah. <laughs> it's been a while. In fact, have we ever played a Yuri game on the channel? I don't think we have. I think there have been like some moments where like games have had just like a glimpse of them. But yeah, I think this is the first time we've actually played a girls love game. Doomed Yuri. Yeah, here we go. But good morning, everybody. I hope you're all feeling good. Uh, <laughs> excuse me? What about Uki? <laughs> what about get banned? Read my goddamn chat rules. <laughs> anyway, hello, everybody. We have a lot of games with GL side stories. Yeah, that's what I thought it is. We definitely have like a lot of games where there have been characters who showed their LGBT side. But I think this is the first time we've ever actually played a game that's just straight up based around GL. Doomed Yuri, let's go. Hell yeah. This is the official Yuri stream, the first one on the channel. Hopefully not the last. But yeah, like I said, this is made by the same studio who made A Date With Death. It's a couple years old. Um... But I'm hoping if the writing is anywhere near as fun and entertaining as A Date With Death, it should be good. And like the artwork and the story kind of reminded me of Garden Morgana. The whole idea about a girl being locked in a mansion. Um, the art style is like a bit like classic. Everybody looks like dolls kind of thing. It's got that kind of art style. So I'm very interested. Is it about historical Yuri? That I don't actually know. <laughs> I don't know if it's one of those things where it's set like in the past. Or if it's just like very, very fancy downtown Abbey kind of style. So I don't know. But the angst is apparently intense. If you haven't already seen the pinned message, um, even when I applied to play this game, they were like, hey, you can play it, but <laughs> here's all the themes you should be worried about and you consider if you're okay with playing that on your channel. And I read it and I was like, hmm. I'm good. We played Fata Morgana. We've seen worse. <laughs> Honestly, at this point, with like Fata Morgana and my God, the two, that one scene in the first part of The Last of Us Part 2, I, I feel like we're ready for tragedy. I feel like we're ready for angst. I feel like we've played a lot on this channel where it's just like, we, we've seen some shit, man. We've seen some shit. <laughs> but just, yeah, for anyone who is like uncomfortable with certain adult themes, Feel free to look up the warnings, um, disappear if you need to. I don't, I, I know that there are a lot of people that feel like they need to watch every stream. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. Um, if any of the themes in this visual novel make you feel uncomfortable, if they make you feel a bit scared, then yeah, feel free to ditch out. It's no big deal. The VOD will always be there if you want to watch it slowly or you want to make sure that other people are okay with it. But yeah, just take care of yourselves. What I don't want to see, like, if anybody already knows the story of this game, um, I don't like people spamming in the chat, like, trigger warning, trigger warning when something's about to happen. Because then it just puts everyone on edge and it kind of, like, ruins the flow. So, yeah, please don't do that. But if you need to take care of yourself, definitely do. Reading the Goddess 505, I think it was soldiers by now. Oh, uh, yeah. Or even the shortest first introductory chapter involves, like child abuse a child almost getting thrown down an elevator shaft and some very very suggestive fucked up shit oh god and it only gets worse from there legatus 505 is wild <laughs> but with that said we're gonna start this game like i said it's supposed to be pretty short we'll probably it'll probably take us like two to three hours because slow reading and all of that but 
I'm excited. I, as soon as I saw like the artwork for this game after we played A Date With Death, I was like, oh, I'm down. This should be fun. <laughs> so yeah. Thank you all for being here. If you want to check out the game yourself or you want to support anything else that Two and a Half Studios do, the links are in the description in the video. Um, they've actually got a new game coming out. I don't know when, but they've just started advertising it and dropping like introductions to the characters and stuff. So I'm glad to see that they're working very quickly on new things. With that said, let's dive into Amelie. And if at all during this stream, the music seems a bit too loud or my voice seems a bit too quiet, please do let me know. For some reason, my computer has been trying to backstab me continuously <laughs> and randomly raising and lowering volume. So yeah, let's dive into this. Begin, Amelie. Ooh, where lies your future? Zero out of one. Oh, so this is actual Amelie. Zero out of two, zero. Oh, okay. I can't even play as Sophia or Lilica yet. Interesting. You have to start as Amelie. But yeah, this game has three roots, one for each of the characters. Let me get out of the way of <laughs> Lilica because she is adorable. Um, so we're going to be starting as Amelie, I guess. And then if we have time, maybe we'll continue by playing the other roots and seeing all of the different sides of the story. It's cool that you can. I, I'm interested in how it's zero out of one, zero out of two, zero out of three. Does that mean Amelie only has one ending? Sophia has two endings and Lilica has three endings, do you think? Or is it just like in order kind of thing? <laughs> Why do they all look insane? <laughs> Why do you think I wanted to play this game? <laughs> but let's dive into this. I guess we're starting as Amelie. Uh, yeah, she already looks traumatized. Again, oh man, I love... Like, Bags Under the Eyes is one of my favorite, like, defining characteristics. <laughs> we just had that all of yesterday with Link Click, and now we're getting it for this art style as well. She looks adorable but traumatized. She looks like she could go full Yandere. That smile but those wide open eyes tell me she's about to stab a bitch. Not sure about her. Not sure about Lilica. Could go anywhere. <laughs> Yours, Amelie. Ooh. The rain never seems to cease at this time of the year. It pours from the sky in its unending grief, as if longing for something unseen. I'm gonna turn it up just a bit because I like rain sounds. Thunder roared in the distance, enough to make the young woman flinch, but not enough to make her waver. The pendulum clock on the wall swang back and forth, ticking down the time. She seems to be late. Oh, Lilica's the childhood friend. Okay. <laughs> so the one thing that I do know about this game is it's about the main girl, Amelie, who's like locked in this building. Uh, with her is her childhood friend, Lilica. I mean, with her is her childhood friend and a pen pal is coming to visit. I, I genuinely just assumed Lilica was the pen pal just because of the way that Sophia looked. Sophia looked so yandere. I was like, oh, she's going to be jealous. <laughs> And now I can turn it back down because the music is super loud. <laughs> In fact, let's just turn the music down just a bit on here so we can balance it out with the nice atmospheric sounds. That should be good. I liked that rain. Okay. <clears throat> Perhaps she's not coming after all, Emily. There's no need to make such a sullen face. Mayhaps this is for the best. She wrote that she would be here, so I shall wait. The young lady named Amelie sat upright on the lounge that rested by the entryway. Her back was straight, and her head was level. <laughs> her back may be straight, but we know the rest of her isn't. <laughs> Do you truly believe it's safe to have visitors during the outbreak? Lilica, I believe we've been isolated long enough, and Sophia has written that it's safe. I trust her word. She'd not endanger us. And if your pen pal turns out to be a robber in disguise, what then? Amelie smiled. She has a way with words that only a woman could have. A lady robber then. I know, right? For one thing, the little pouty face is so adorable. L Lilica is just instantly jealous. This is going to be some <laughs> love triangle going on already. Also, there seems to be a outbreak. So I'm guessing like a pandemic going on in this world as well. That's so sapphic to say. Yeah, it's just like, 
Oh, silly Lilika. Women can't do anything wrong. Only men are bad. <laughs> Nonsense. By the way, Lilika, have you seen my letters? I can't say that I have. A knock sounded at the door, instantly halting their conversation. Emily rose from her place and took a steady step forward before Lilika raised a hand to her. Allow me. The door groaned as it slowly swung open and revealed the young woman who knocked at the door. She was drenched from head to toe. Amelie stood stock still, unaware of what to say, but that only lasted a moment before the woman at her door bounded forward and wrapped her arms around her. Amelie! Sophia! She blinked before finally allowing her arms to wrap around Sophia's back. Ma my, you're completely drenched. Did you forget your umbrella per chance? Or perhaps her umbrella got carried away by the wind. Lilica pushed the door shut, sealing the building. Hmm? I didn't even think to bring an umbrella. The forecast said sunny all day. <laughs> My fault for believing it, I guess. Can't believe you're truly here. Me either. About time, right? Just as pretty as I knew you'd be. Wow! <laughs> the flirting instantly begins. <laughs> also, this music is really nice and relaxing. I uh, like how... Yeah, this must be set in the past. The whole, like... Oh, perchance. <laughs> no way, you're exactly as how I imagined. Yeah, this, this has to be set in, like, the 1900s, the 1800s. <laughs> She's going for it, damn straight. Although this hoodie looks very modern, and that necklace... These two, on the other hand, man, how long have they been locked in this mansion? Or maybe they've just been raised like the village style where it's like, hey, let's raise them as proper young ladies. They don't realize what the, what the world actually looks like outside. And you t and, and you too. But what are you wearing? <laughs> Seeing your house, I feel like I should have been dressed up a little more. No. Perhaps it is I that overdressed. Lilica stood to the side, her arms crossed lightly over her chest. Her long hair reached down nearly to the wooden floor. Damn, that, I didn't even realize. Yeah, that's long hair. That shit cascades for miles. Also, her eyes. <laughs> she. Okay, I got their two characters wrong. She's got to kill a bitch. <laughs> she already looks like she's ready to stab this woman who just dared to walk into her house. Pardon my manners. My dear friend Lilica is here too. I believe I wrote about her in the past. I remember. I've kept all your letters safe, don't worry. As you should. <laughs> yeah, know your place, Sophia. <laughs> Sorry, but is there any chance you have a towel? Of course, my apologies. I would usually have someone here to attend us, but everyone's been sent home. Only the three of us remain. Let me fetch you a towel. This is adorable already. I support woman's wrongs. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> I want them to start murdering each other already. <laughs> Emily knew not to run, yet a part of her felt the need to almost skip in joy. She wanted desperately to be back by Sophia's side, chatting about everything that they'd missed in their letters. The two had been pen pals for as long as she remembered. Sophia's letter had first been delivered to the manor by mistake. But for some reason, Amelie had felt compelled to reply. Since then, the two had been the best of friends, even having not met to face to face. To finally meet now in the flesh had certainly been of great excitement to Amelie. Just saying, Amelie has two hands. <laughs> Let's hope she can carry them both without them ending up, you know, stabbing each other. Accidental pen pals. The question is. Is that true, or is there something deeper going on here? Hell of a lot of luck for that to happen. Glad Emily reached out to her, though. The fact that she's just been locked up in this mansion for God knows how long with just Lilica is worrying. She quickly retrieved the towel. In fact, this is this is reminding me of Saltburn. Already. Just switched genders. <laughs> you know, when they show up for like the mansion and then the one character's trying to keep the other one to themselves. That was a weird movie. I enjoyed it, though. She quickly retrieved the towel and made her way back to Sophia's side. 
Lilica stood a distance away from her, still looking vaguely unhappy. Sophia spun around, a look of surprise on her face when she saw Amelie. Sophia? Oh, Amelie. Please use this. Thanks. I'll bring an umbrella next time. I promise. I also just noticed she has a bunch of bandages wrapped around her thigh. I hope she's not infected. That's what salt burns about. Yeah, it's just about like a really nerdy kid who essentially gets adopted by a really rich popular kid. And then the nerdy kid has some interesting feelings. The bathtub scene? Nope, nope, move on. I, that's how I thought this was going to start. I'm not even going to lie. I thought Amelie was just going to instantly be like, Oh, Sophia, you're drenched. We need to get you out of those clothes and into a nice hot bath. <laughs> Thanks. I'll bring an umbrella next time, I promise. Sophia lightly towered her hair and clothing, drying off from the rain she'd found herself caught in. Then, if you're now dried off, would you care for a tour of the house before afternoon tea? That sounds great. On your right is the pantry, and down that hall is the boiler room, but you shouldn't have any need for those spaces. The two walked side by side with Lilica trailing slightly behind. I already feel so bad for Lilica. <laughs> Lilica has been so quiet since she showed up. She's only had one line of dialogue. She was so active with Abilene, but as soon as this girl showed up, she's just standing in the corner, just watching them talk to each other. Oh, man. I I've felt this kind of feeling before, <laughs> where you, you feel like you're somebody's friend, and then their like, closer friend shows up. <laughs> she's shy, probably. She's probably a little bit shy. She's never talked to this girl. She doesn't seem to particularly trust this girl with whatever's going on in the outside world, whatever they mean by the outbreak, she's worried. And I think there's probably a little bit of like pining and jealousy there. The art style was cute. It is. Look how detailed their eyes are. I mean, I mentioned the bags of the eyes, but the coloring, the lighting, even the lighting on like the eyelashes is gorgeous. This girl's eyes, the way they fade from like light blue to purple, pinkish even. <laughs> they like match her hair and then her hoodie. It's fantastic. These are all guest bedrooms. I've prepared this one for your use. If you find anything not to your standards, you can let myself or Lilica know. Family, I have a feeling your standards are much higher than mine. I've never even been in a house that looks like this. No? Is your home not similar? But does my home have columns every six feet with giant portraits of classical art placed on them? as well as a massive screw you I have money chandelier in the middle of a hallway, not even a dining room or like a hall, like, like a living room. No, no. <laughs> well, it's a lot smaller. Oh, the puffed up face again. These, yeah, these sprites are so adorable. There's no shame in that. You own your own property, yes? Yeah, I recently bought it. With your husband? What? No, of course not. I'm not married. Your father allowed you to buy property on your own. <laughs> Amelie, you speak just like how you write. I'm so surprised. Yeah, okay, that sounds worrying. <laughs> that sounds like Amelie has very much been raised in like a classical setting where it's like, your father let you do this. You don't have a husband or a father telling you everything you have to do. How do you exist? Did your father not decide which clothes you put on in the morning? <laughs> and you speak... Wait, Lilica? Oh, like, we can't even see her in the shot. I didn't realize this was Lilica. I don't really have a voice for Lilica. I don't have many voices. <laughs> so... And you speak quite casually. People usually say that about me. Being here around you makes me want to be more formal. What need is there of formality between friends? <laughs> That's true, too. Ahem. <clears throat> This is the morning room, and next door the dining room. We'll be having afternoon tea in the sitting room here. So many rooms. Upstairs is my bedroom and the master bedroom. I must ask that you don't enter the master bedroom, as it belongs to my parents who are currently away. Of course, I won't go poking around anyway. All this walking has made me parched. Shall we take afternoon tea now? Sure, that sounds good. Why don't you have a seat while Lilica and I prepare our food? Oh, I can come help. Nonsense, you're my guest. It would be remiss of me to allow you to lift a finger. If you insist. But I'm happy to help any time. Thank you. I'll be back soon. 
please rest. Emily? Yes? It's nothing. Take your time. There was definitely some concern there. Is Lilica not a guest? I don't think so. I think she lives here with Emily. They're not sisters, but yeah, I think they live together. Wait, this isn't rich. This is wealthy. Yeah, this is old money. This is like an estate that's probably existed for hundreds of years already that the same family has lived in forever. We're all like, listen, we aren't cultured. What is this? It's one of those days, man. We're having to deal with the rich folk. <laughs> Maybe like a helper. It could be. Who knows? Somebody asked earlier, is somebody going to die in this? I assume so. <laughs> with all of the warnings this game has, I can only assume there's going to be like a lot of tragedy and pain. Not rich, but reach. Yes, exactly. It's the type of person who would call somebody who was newly wealthy the nouveau riche. <laughs> Sophia slipped through a doorway and disappeared. Emily smiled gently, feeling giddy from the bottom of her stomach. Isn't this lovely, Lilica? To have a new face in the house. It feels like forever. Yes, how lovely. I'm glad you're having fun at the very least. Are you not? I'm always having fun when we're together, Emily. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> yeah, she's so in love. This isn't going to work out well for her. <laughs> I see. Are you jealous? Worry not, my dear friend. Of course, our friendship means just as much to me. I value you greatly. Oh, God. That shit hurt me. If anybody... Oh, God. If I've been actual friends with someone for a long time, and then they tell me the first time they meet their pen pal that I'm on the same level as the pain pal, that hurts. This is their first time actually meeting. Oof. Exactly. Just as much. Indeed. Come along, Lilica. Let us prepare tea. <laughs> oh, Emily. I don't think you can get the harem route, my girl. I don't think Lilica's down for that. That's painful. Yeah, that would hurt. Oh my god, these backgrounds are so beautiful. What do you call this art style? Is it like impressionist or is it not that far just yet? Either way, like the different like shapes for all the colors. Gorgeous. Did you finish the baking yesterday? The pastries are ready for serving. Excellent. I'll just fetch the tea then. Aw, she's finally smiling again now that they're alone. Allow me. Oh. Allow me. A lady of your standing shouldn't be doing such a menial task, should she? Don't be absurd. Even Sophia herself seems to be fine in the kitchen. Did you hear how she jumped to help? I should follow in her footsteps. What would your parents think of that? I appreciate the sentiment. They took with them all of the staff. I have little choice but to prepare my own tea. I see. Then, shall I attend to our guest? I wouldn't want her to become lonely. Would you? I'll only be a few moments. Of course. Anything for you, Emily. Oh, that's such a bright smile. That's so adorable. It's more like cubism. Thank you. I... I... I have no idea about classical art, as I've shown from every time they've had, like, references to classical art in games. A uh, blush, yeah, she's so happy to be useful. M maybe her and Sophia will become friends and everything will be fine. It'll be a good chance for you to become friends, too. I'm sure it will be. Lilica left the kitchen with slow, deliberate steps. Emily turned back to the kitchen. I wonder what she would prefer... Ooh, oolong or green? Damn. Green is, like, easier for people. Oolong has a bit more of a rich flavor. I'm gonna go with green. I feel like... Lili not Lilica. I feel like Sophia may be more of a green tea kind of girl. Oolong tea has, yeah, a bit of a sharper taste. Green tea would be my first choice. I'm sure Sophia will agree. Eh. Yeah. Amelie retrieved her finest teapot and three matching cups. Pink flowers blossomed over the white surface. Something about it reminded her, her of Sophia. It's because of Sophia's hoodie. Oh, why the music? Oh, something's gone really wrong while I've been away. <laughs> What's wrong with Sophia? What did Lilica say to you? Oh. I'm back. Ah. Uh. 
Sophia? Oh, Emily. I'm sorry. Y you scared me. Is everything all right? Yes. I think I'm just a little tired. Good. Sorry for the delay, but I prepared the tea and the pastries. So, this is what high tea looks like. High tea will come later. This is just a simple afternoon tea. <laughs> oh god, I forgot rich people eat like hobbitses. <laughs> will Lilica be joining us? I believe so. Was she here a moment ago? No, she wasn't here. How strange. She told me she was coming to sit with you. Perhaps she's gotten herself busy with something else. Should we wait? There's no need, but it'd be sad to let the tea go cold. Emily poured tea into the two cups slowly, copying the movements she'd seen Lilica do time and time again. Yeah, it does sound like Lilica possibly works here as like a staff member kind of situation. She said, what about Elevenses? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what about Elevenses? Supper, dinner, after supper? <laughs> Did she already kill her? Oh God, imagine. That'd be a very short route. <laughs> Did you have much trouble getting here? A little. My ride broke down, so I had to walk for a bit. <laughs> she looks so pissed at that. Broke down? Oh, I'm extremely sorry. If the staff had been here, I would have sent someone to collect you. It's okay. It's just a little rain. I just wouldn't want you catching a fever. My medicine store has been running low of late. No worries. I usually carry ibuprofen with me. Ibuprofen? I haven't heard of it. Anyway, I'm glad you arrived here safely. I'll draw a bath for you later to make sure you're warmed up properly. She hasn't heard of ibuprofen. One of the most common painkillers in the world. Yeah, there's something going on here. Maybe they're ghosts. That's how you read ibuprofen? It, it is, right? Am I wrong? Uh oh, <laughs> what year is it exactly? Like I said, it feels like Lilica and Alimenli are from like the 1800s. Meanwhile, it feels like Sophia's modern day. Which would be a nice twist since they're talking about the outbreak. Maybe Sophia has been talking about like the recent pandemic and they're talking about like, what was it called? Typhoid fever or whatever? I don't remember the years. Even pff, bubonic plague. I don't know. Ibuprofen? I have never heard that. I always just hear ibuprofen. Ibuprofen. Wow. A lot of people think ibuprofen. I've never heard that. Interesting. Anyway, I'm glad you arrived here safely. I'll draw a bath for you later to make sure you're warmed up properly. Thank you. Emily sipped at her tea before looking down at it with a confused expression. A little stale. I'll ask my father to, reduce, to procure a new batch when he arrives home. Oh, a little stale? Yeah, they've been here for a few centuries. Tea doesn't go stale for like ever. Where are your parents, by the way? Well, we were separated due to the plague. Plague? Okay, yeah, no. <laughs> She's talking bubonic. Holy crap. They took the staff to wait until a cure is found and left me here with Lilica as to not catch the disease. Were they trying to protect themselves or you? Because that sounds like they abandoned you and went to hide somewhere. <laughs> right. I understand. I spent a lot of time separated from my family due to the pandemic too. Yes! Oh! I love this already. This is great. The fact that Sophia is using the word pandemic and Amelie is using plague. That's sick. They are from different timelines. It warmed my heart to find another thing in common with you, Sophia. I was surprised to hear that it's safe enough for you to visit. Perhaps that means my parents will be back soon too. I think so. The world seems to be opening back up again. So, what do you do locked up in this big house all the time? That this is such a smart idea for a story as well. Damn. Well, I usually spend my time sewing or playing music. I used to write, but... But? Well, my parents wondered if it was feminine enough. Oh my god. I don't really think that matters. 
If you enjoy it, then I say you should do it. Sophia. Then what about you? Hmm. Well, I'm studying art at university right now, so I guess that's what I spend most of my time on. You attend university? Oh, here we go. She's gonna be like, ladies are allowed to do that now. <laughs> yeah, although I'm thinking about dropping out. Sophia, you truly are filled with surprises. You own your own land and you intend school. How jealous I am. Why don't you do the same? Oh no, I'm not allowed. Of course you are. Anyone could attend. W within reason. But, well, wouldn't it get in the way of my marriage? You're engaged? Emily shook her head. No, not yet, but I'm already 19. I'm sure my father has prepared my dowry. <laughs> oh my god, I love this. This is fantastic. An arranged marriage? Yes, naturally. I don't think I'll ever get married. Really? Doesn't your family object? <laughs> I don't think they mind. As long as I'm happy. You don't have to either, you know. You've given me much to think about. Much indeed. Now I wonder where Lilica has disappeared to. Well, it's no matter. The evening is already coming, and soon it will be dark. Shall I draw you a bath? That sounds wonderful. To be honest, I'm not hungry. So can we skip dinner tonight? <laughs> Yo! Sophia heard bath, and she thought in her head, Do you like a bath? Or dinner? Or perhaps... wa ta she <laughs> Bath scene, let's go, the handmaiden. Yo, that became one of my favorite movies of all time. I only watched that this year. Well, no, 2023. I only watched that like four or five months ago, but it was so good. Of course, if that's what you wish. Let me show you to the bathroom. You may not believe... It. Oh, wow, it got dark fast. You two had tea and it's already this dark. Light some of the chandeliers, my girl. You may not believe it, but my father had taps installed. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Yo, she's giving away the timeline so quickly. <laughs> like taps for a bath? That's right. We used to have our maids fill the bath, but now there's no need. Sophia's like, girl, you are so fucking sheltered. <laughs> <laughs> Emily, you're so strange. I have taps at my house, too. And unlike your broke ass who just mooches off your parents, I own my house. Goddamn, girl. Truly, you must live quite the lavish lifestyle yourself. I don't know about that. This is the bathroom. Allow me to draw the bath for you. One moment. Now the question becomes, if they have taps and running water... Do they have a boiler, though? <laughs> With haste, Amelie entered the room and began to fill the copper bath. Yo, a copper bathtub? That's crazy. It sat in the middle of a spacious bathroom. It was something Amelie was particularly proud of. She smiled as it filled without, before rejoining her companion. Feel free to go inside and make yourself comfortable. I'll return with a towel in a moment. Thanks, Amelie. She disappeared inside the room, leaving Amelie alone in the hall. I should light the sconces, too. Where did I put those matches? Yeah, they don't even... Holy shit, that sound effect! That's awesome! <laughs> the heartbeat when she appeared out of nowhere. Maybe Lilica's like a full-on ghost. <laughs> Uh, sorry, what I was gonna say was, yeah, they don't even have, like, proper electricity in this house. They have sconces. That's fantastic. I would like if they, like, twisted this around on us. Like, right now, I'm so convinced. It's like, oh, my God. She, she's in the past. She's come to, like, a ghost mansion or some shit. Meanwhile, it may be just like, yeah, she genuinely just has a really creepy set of parents who have kept her locked up all her life and live like it's, like, the 1600s. Right here. Oh, my God. Amelie's fucked up by that one, too. Ah! Uh, you gave me a fright, Lilica. Where have you been? 
preparing the guest room for your dear friend, of course. How kind! Sophia's just preparing for a bath at the present. I'm going to retrieve a towel for her from the linen closet. Emily, I think it's best you send her home post haste. What? Why would I do that? For all you know, she brings with her the plague. Sophia says it's now safe to travel. She believes father and mother will be returning soon. I believe it's perfectly safe. So they're like the Amish or something? Yeah, the Amish do the whole thing where they just like... some. I don't completely understand like the Amish or like the... the I think they're called the Mennonites. But for some reason, they just don't particularly like electricity. They like live off the land. Um, so I don't understand it too much, but yeah. Um, which is interesting because at the same time, they still... When they work, they use electricity. Like, there are a lot of Amish people that while in their own homes, they rely on, like, past situations. When they actually go out, do construction work and things, they use, like, power tools and all kinds of stuff, which is wild to me. <laughs> they don't use the grid. Hell yeah, they off the grid. Also, the person who asked what a sconce was, I, unless I'm wrong, I hope not. I believe it's one of those, like, little areas that holds a candle against a wall. So one of those areas where you can light like a little lantern or a little candle. Some of them are on the internet too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have to like show off their services somehow. And they have like mobile phones, but they're only allowed to use them for like work and stuff. They live like old pilgrims. Yeah. And they also have this really cool thing where just one year of their life, I think it's when they first turn 18, but they have like one year of their life where they go out and live like modern people. And then they return to the community, which is interesting. I think it depends on the type. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. It's just that I know, like, there's some, even in my area, that do, like, the best construction work in the area. Room Springer, thank you. Yeah, it's a really cool community. But yeah, I didn't, I don't know why they chose to live that way. But it's definitely an interesting idea. Sophia says it's now safe to travel. Oh, shit, I read this line, sorry. <laughs> and what if she lies? She wouldn't do that. Sophia is a kind and good-natured person. She would not bring any danger to us. Did you know that Sophia attends a local university? And she lives by herself with no husband. She says that if I wanted, I could also study. The lady of the house should not study, Emily. You must stay inside the house and await your parents. I wonder if this is going to be one of those things. Maybe the reason she's actually locked up is because her soul is trapped in this house. And Lilica just hasn't told Amelie that she's dead. She's trying to make her believe that everything's just fine and they're still just waiting for their parents. Hmm. But I'm sure Mother would want the best for me. Perhaps while I await her, I could go inspect Sophia's school. Amelie. You must stay inside and await your parents' return. But don't you trust me? Have I ever tried to lead you astray? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Never, ever trust anybody who uses the word astray. Anybody who uses the word astray is scary. No, Lilica. I was just thinking that. Perhaps it is truly beginning to be safe. Look, I've brought today's newspaper. Do you see the title? The Plague Run... Oh, wait, was that Sophia? Whoops. The Plague Runs Rampant. But any notion of leaving or studying away for now, yes? As soon as it is truly safe to do so, then we shall, and you'll be reunited with your family. But now, it is just you and me. Thanks, Lilica. I'm glad you're here. As am I. Ah, the towel! Let me go retrieve it. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, Lilica's scary. <laughs> Futam, what about you? I don't know what you guys mean. The linen cupboard was filled with various towels and bedding, all clean and properly folded thanks to Lilica. Imagine having a huge cupboard just for linens. Oh my god. Which would suit her? Pink towel or a blue towel? They both work. Those are both her colors. I'm going to give her a pink towel though because it's adorable. I'm going to save at every, every choice, by the way, even though I'll probably never go back. <laughs> I'm always worried about these. This one. 
It reminds me of her eyes. You could have said that for any of those. <laughs> With her chosen towel in hand, Amelie returned to the bathroom door where Lilica awaited her. She first knocked at the door. And when there was no reply, she opened it carefully. The sound of the tap running still came from inside. Excuse me. I'm coming in. Pink towel, bad ending. <laughs> Maybe. You never know. Oh, now the sprites have gone tight. There's going to be a CG in this one. But you never know. Maybe I've locked myself into a bad ending because it's like, oh no, you chose gender normity roles. Ha ha ha. Now it's bad. <laughs> Sophia? I knocked, but I didn't hear a reply. I've brought you a towel. Ah. Amelie? Oh, I might have to censor this. Um. <laughs> I'm getting ready to censor, sorry. Do, do, do. Okay, good. Amelie first saw a slender, marble-like back. Then she noticed the blue hair that fell on those bare shoulders, one side tucked carefully behind an ear. Oh, Sophia, please forgive me. I didn't realize you'd already entered the bath. That blush. This right here. This is her awakening. <laughs> Does she need the correct color of towel to raise? Maybe. The question was, well, my, was I more interested in her eyes or her hair? No, it's okay. I'm sorry. You just surprised me. Uh, I'll leave the towel over here. Thanks. Okay, they didn't show anything. We're safe. <laughs> A blush. Yeah, that was an awakening right there. She was like, hold on. Wait, why is this exciting me? <laughs> Did you tell her that she must depart? No. I... Is something the matter? Are you feeling unwell? Your face is bright red. S Sophia will stay until she decides to leave. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> she sees her naked one time and she's just like, No, Lilica, I want her to stay here, damn it. <laughs> Suddenly she found her backbone, all because of the power of lesbians. <laughs> As you wish. I'm sorry, Lilica, but... The image of that small and beautiful back filled up in Amelie's mind. I... I believe it's only fair after she traveled so far. Oh, I can tell she traveled far. She was so defined and... And she's my friend! I'll finish preparing the guest room. Let me come help, Sif. Let me come help. Wait. No, this is Amelie still. God dang it. <laughs> Let me come help. Sophia, when you're done in there, you can come to your room. From the other side of the door, Sophia's voice came in return. Okay. Thanks, Emily. <laughs> Sophia. I was about to... Dang it. You got there just before me, HH. I was about to say the thing that Pentomos always do for Reimu. <laughs> Sophia's back. <laughs> Hands in prayer. <laughs> The guest bet he yeah, fact, yeah, Amelie just found a new religion right there. Sophia's back is her religion now. <laughs> the guest bedroom was freshly cleaned with new linen on the bed and a lit lantern beside it. Oh shit, I said, did I say pentomos? I meant phantomos. My bad, sorry. We did a fine job of preparing the room so far. Thank you, Lilica. Anything for you. I was thinking... Tomorrow, if the rain has cleared up, we could open the greenhouse again and have morning tea there. It's been so long since we last used it. Didn't we already speak of this? We cannot leave the house. But... Surely the greenhouse would be safe. No one else uses it, and it's only a few steps away from the back door. It is unsafe. You know this. What's gotten into you? Is it because of your friend? I keep switch- Oh god, I keep reading the names wrong. Sorry. I just thought it would be nice to at least sit in the sun. Then you maybe sit by the window in the dining hall. Is it really so unsafe that even taking a foot outdoors would be dangerous? Yes. Um. Sophia, I see you're done with the bath. Emily shook her head, trying to remove the image that was still plastered to it. 
<laughs> okay, yeah, no, I love this game so much. Her just being like, oh, I see you're done with the... Out, out gay thoughts. Can't catch me, gay thoughts. <laughs> Were you talking about the greenhouse? Yes, did you see it when you arrived? I did, but it looked as if the plants inside had died. Oh, that's impossible. It's barely been any time at all since the gardeners left. Yeah, they've been here a while. I'm sure the plants inside are more sturdy than that. Well, even if they have died, maybe we could go in and replant some things tomorrow. How wonderful. If you've not heard a word I said, it's unsafe to do so. Uh, oh. oh. Don't be such a spoil sport. I think it would be perfectly fine. Well, it's getting late now, so I'll leave you to retire. If you need anything, my room is just upstairs on the left. Good night, Sophia. Lilica left first. The door, which was still hanging slightly open, shifted as she went. They're suspended in time. Yeah, Emily thinks it's only been like a little, like a couple days or weeks since her parents left. Meanwhile, she's probably been here for centuries. The pout is so cute. Yeah, but you know that's going to turn into a full-on, like, yandere snare at some point. <laughs> um, Emily, would you stay for a while? Is something the matter? Just a little homesick. Sophia sunk into the bed, sighing as her head hit the pillow. Of course. Why don't we chat for a while? Then come join me. Sophia gently pet the spot beside her in the bed. In the bed? Uh, okay. The bed was still rather firm, unused by many guests. Emily took a deep breath to calm her racing heart before she finally looked towards Sophia. Thanks. Oh, thanks for staying with me for a while. It's nothing to worry about. Truly, I wanted to spend more time with you, too. Really? You don't find me boring? You're the most interesting person I've ever met. Don't be silly. I'm being completely honest. You truly are so unique. I think the same about you. I've never met anyone like you, really. You wrote so much about yourself, and yet seeing you in person, I fear there's still so much I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Wait until you learn. <laughs> Sapphic society has changed in the last hundred years. Electricity has helped a lot. <laughs> There's plenty of time for us to tell each other everything. And tell me something about yourself. Something you've never told anyone. Hmm. I'm partially blind in my right eye. Aww. Really? How well can you see? It's okay. Just a little blurry, really. You tell me something. Well, when I was 12, I stole the cookie jar from the kitchen and blamed my brother. He was scolded for hours. <laughs> what a mischievous child. I'm sure your brother wasn't all too pleased. Actually, it was his idea. He knew I wanted it and told me to tell my parents it was him if I was asked. Oh, that's so sweet. What a good brother. Inventions of batteries was a game changer. <laughs> yep. What a good brother. Where is he now? Did he go away with your parents? Emily shook her head. Oh no, did he catch the plague? <sighs> he died when he was 16. Oh. I'm so sorry, Emily. What happened? Oh, scarlet fever. Okay, I was right the first time. Damn. Wait, no, I said typhoid. Shit. <laughs> Fuck. Scarlet fever. So my family was left with only me as an heir. And what worth is a female heir? Oh, Emily. <laughs> my poor baby girl. Welcome to the modern world. You're worth plenty. More than plenty. Thank you, Sophia. But some days, I'm unsure. It's your turn again. Truthfully, I... 
I said before I didn't want to get married, but that's not exactly right. I do. Oh. I just don't want a husband. Oh, sh she's coming right out. Let's fucking go. Then... I'm sorry. Does it make you uncomfortable? Uh, no. I... I've also thought that I don't... want a husband. Whenever my father has brought it up, I felt... sick to my stomach. How about coming away with me for a while? Away? Outside of the house? What about... the sickness? It's okay now. You'll be okay. You could come stay at my house. I could show you around my school. You don't have to go through an arranged marriage if you don't want to. You would do that for me? You're my dearest friend. Wow, even Sophia hit us with a classic word there. And... I... I actually... Oh, Lilica straight up cock blocking her. God damn it. How dare you, Lilica? So sweet. Yeah, that was adorable. I guess... Wow. This is such a classic story as well. Falling in love via classic snail mail letters. Oh, man. That's so cute. Lilica? At some point, the two women had gotten close enough together that they could feel each other's breath on their lips. Holy shit. They should have shown the sprites move in towards each other because that would have been great. If, if the sprites were moving together while Sophia was like, and actually, um, I, I, yeah, they were so close to kissing. She was so close to being like, I think I might like you. Peace. <laughs> the two parted with reddened cheeks, Amelie quickly brushing her skirt off and standing up. I should be going to bed. Please rest well. We can talk more about it in the morning, right? Right. Good night, Emily. I'll see you tomorrow. They're so cute. Yeah, they are. The panic that Emily is going through is so adorable. And Sophia just coming out and saying it like immediately is so cute as well. Only they drag that out in fiction, so I'm glad she is so confident. This is so far really interesting to me. I didn't think they'd be like this weird, like, time travel ghosty kind of stuff going in it. Lilica? It's late. You should retire to your bedroom. Yes. I shall. It's nice having someone else around, isn't it? I feel as if the manor's coming back to life. I hope we see mother and father soon. I'm sure we will. Shall I see you to bed? Yes, please. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> Amelie's really like, sure, you pulled me away from Sophia, so you better tuck me in this time and keep me warm. The hallway was darkened with only a few sconces and candles lit along the way. Usually that would fill Amelie with a sense of comfort, but right now the flickering flames seemed to make her feel distressed. Whether that was because of the way her mind was racing or the way the heart was beating, she didn't know. Yeah, I'm loving this writing. This is great. Two and a half studios are awesome at this <laughs> as she rose up the grand staircase her eyes lingered on the large stained glass window the moon shone through the colored glass leaving a rainbow of colors over the steps it caught her attention for only a moment before she returned to her bedroom we got a little lion a little woman i don't know what the heck that is and a whole bunch of masks this is a creepy stained glass window and yeah this is definitely feeling like Father Morgana. I'm so glad we're playing this. Cherubim? I guess they could... Oh, yeah. Maybe they're like classic angels. They've got like those geometric shapes to them. Maybe that's what they're supposed to be. Or Seraphim? Did they have six wings? I couldn't tell if there were six of them. They were all like curled around in circles. Lilica, may I ask you a question? Certainly. Have you ever heard of a woman loving another woman? Uh, as a woman would love a man? Where did you hear about such a thing? Nowhere in particular. It was just a thought that came into my mind. I think you're overtired because of all the excitement, Emily. 
I think it best that you get some rest. Yes, all right. Good night, Lilica. Good night, Emily. <laughs> Damn, yeah, she dove right into that. She was already thinking about it. Maybe they've already talked about it a little bit in their letters. But yeah, I mean, Sophia made it quite clear, to be fair. <laughs> she's honest to her feelings. Yeah, she's definitely waking up to them. When Sophia was like, I want to get married, but not to a man. Emily was just like, yes, you get it. <laughs> I never liked men either. Good morning, Lilica. I was just on my way to see if Sophia is waking yet. Emily. Hmm? Oh, you totally murdered her. Sophia disappeared during the night. I believe she went to the same place your parents went. What? That cannot be right. Don't run, Emily. Especially that line, I believe she went to the same place your parents went. So either Lilica killed our parents or she knows our parents are dead. That might that be Lilica <laughs> to the afterlife. <laughs> that escalated quickly. Yeah, it's going to be wild when we start playing this through Lilica's point of view. Emily dashed down the hall and knocked quickly on the door to the guest bedroom, which fell open with no resistance. Inside, the bedding was disheveled and her luggage was strewn about. This... It's not true. She wouldn't just leave without saying goodbye. Dear me, I'm sorry. I told you it was a bad idea for anybody to visit, didn't I? Oh, Lilica, this isn't fair. I thought she said we would. There, there. Come here. Lilica wrapped her thin arms around the young woman. Gently patting her on the back. See? You shouldn't depend on anyone else. I'm here. I won't ever leave you. Emily clutched at her back, tears already falling from her eyes. Oh shit! I got an achievement called Together Forever. <laughs> I think this may be the ending of the first of like Emily's run. Holy crap. We'll be together forever. And yeah, the way she's smiling while Emily's crying her head out. Oh my god, side Emily, one out of one. Together forever. <laughs> well, she just killed off Sophia and kept Emily to herself. Okay. <laughs> this is sick. So do I press continue? No, you actually have to press begin again. Except this time, you're Sophia. Oh, we do Sophia first. Okay, so I'm imagining Sophia's, yeah. Probably one bad ending where we get murdered by Lilica, and then maybe a good ending where we escape and, like, time changes a little bit. And then, oh god, I can't even imagine what Lilica's ones are about. I was expecting, like, witch's house type of mindfuckery. This is fantastic. I'm liking this. It was the pink towel. <laughs> yeah, if only I'd given her the blue towel. Lilica wouldn't have been so angry. <laughs> okay. Yours, Sophia. The rain never seems to cease at this time of the year. It pours from the sky in its unending grief, as if longing for something unseen. Thunder roared in the distance, enough so to make the young woman flinch, but not enough to make her waver. The taxi gently rocked as the road turned to rubble, and the rubble turned to overgrown dirt track. Outside of the window, Sophia could barely see a few feet away through the raging storm. It made her feel uneasy. In her lap, a letter. She read the words again, despite knowing them off by heart. <laughs> I just realized, because I'm doing the Amelie voice, my British accent's coming back. God damn it. Come on, Futsan. <laughs> For some reason, I'm just naturally going back to my old voice. Dear Sophia, how glad I am to hear that you're well. I am healthy, although I believe I may have a problem of the heart. It has gotten quite lonely waiting here for my parents to return. I'm thankful to have Lilica residing with me, but I still await the day when my family will be reunited. But you say that it's safe enough for you to visit? Truly? I've never even dared to dream of being able to see you in the flesh. If it is true, then I'll await you at the address written on the back of this letter. 
Yours, Amelie. Oh, that's so cute. She even went with the yours, Amelie. That's so sweet. Thought you did it on purpose. Nah, I just, for some reason when I was doing the narration, I mean, when I do narration, I normally go for like a slightly softer voice, a slightly more soothing, relaxing kind of narrator voice. But yeah, for some reason after doing Amelie for so long, it just kind of slipped back to where I sounded like, like six years ago. <laughs> You sure you have the address right? We're in the middle of nowhere. Sophia stared at the fragile handwritten address that Amelie had left her. I trusted to her. Then <laughs> a puffed up face. She's like, yeah, I'm not stupid. How dare. <laughs> yes, this is the right way. I'm sure of it. Her heart wouldn't settle. Meeting what could be a stranger in the middle of nowhere on a day like this. Who wouldn't be nervous? Yet there was something else eagerness a thrill something beyond mere nerves that turned into excitement she could barely imagine the hand that had penned the letters she'd been receiving for years on end let alone a face but for some reason her heart still beat hard when reading the words that the mysterious young lady of 19 from a manner far out in the middle of nowhere wrote to her desperate to calm her jitters she pulled out her phone looking to send her worried family one last message of reassurance only to find that it wouldn't switch on. I'm sure it was fully charged. The rain was falling even more heavenly, and now... I said heavenly. You know, you know I meant heavily. <laughs> In the distance, a building sprang into view. It was surrounded by a tall metal fence with an ornate gate firmly shut at the front. Just then, the taxi sputtered and rolled to a stop, smoke rising from the hood. What the... I had this serviced a week ago. Something wrong? Sorry, miss. It looks like we're out of action. It's okay. I think we're nearly there anyway. Pulling the cash from her wallet, she handed over her fare and stepped out of the car. Poor taxi driver. I mean, <laughs> at least he's getting the hell out of there. He's not going to be murdered. He never has to come back to this place again. Anti-tech zone? Yeah, it killed all the electricity. Because I'm guessing this place is, yeah, kind of out of time. Which is, again, kind of Fada Morgana. I like that. They get into this area and just all the electricity is just down. The rain bucketed down from above, soaking her to the very core. She shivered as she dashed towards the iron gate. Surprisingly, it pushed open with a little effort and not even a creak. Sophia stopped in front of the large wooden door, finally free from the seemingly never-ending downpour. From afar, that door had seemed inviting enough. But now it looked awfully large and imposing. And yet, she raised her fist and knocked anyway. Silence followed. Is this not the right place after all? The door swung open, this time with a low, menacing groan. On the other side of that doorway was a fair girl with long brown hair and golden eyes. Sophia... Forgetting the fact that she was soaking wet, rushed forward and embraced the girl. Emily! Sophia! Emily's gentle arms wrapped around Sophia's back in return, and finally all of Sophia's worries melted away. Why, oh, you're completely drenched. Did you forget your umbrella, perchance? Or perhaps her umbrella got carried away by the wind? Behind Sophia, the front door swung shut without any assistance. Oh! She's doing both the voices and there's no... Lilica. Lilica is actually a ghost. Because Amelie said that and perhaps her... Or perhaps her. So she's doing the voice for Lilica out loud. And the door closed by itself rather than Lilica closing it. So... Sophia can't see Lilica. That's not good. I didn't even think to bring an umbrella. The forecast said sunny all day. My fault for believing it, I guess. I can't believe you're truly here. Me either. About time, right? You're just as pretty as I knew you'd be. And... And you too. What are you wearing? <laughs> Seeing your house, I feel like I should have dressed up a little more. No, 
Perhaps it's just the dye overdressed. Oh, the blush. This is slightly different from last time as well. Is Sophia Lilica as well? No, it, it seems like Amelie is Lilica as well. Amelie has been imagining Lilica all this time talking to her, but from Sophia's viewpoint, there's only one girl. So it's either in Amelie's head or only, um, only Amelie can see her. And since the door closed itself, I'd imagine Sophia's actually there. She's just a ghost. Was that why she looked frightened before? We're going to find out now that we're going through her viewpoint. Sophia smiled. Somehow her dress seemed... Somehow her dress sense seemed to fit her writing style perfectly. Old-fashioned, and yet very neat and respectable. Sophia felt a slight heat rising to her cheeks. She really was so refined and elegant. Pardon my manners. My dear friend Lilica is here too. I believe I wrote about her in the past. I remember. I've kept all your letters safe, don't worry. As you should. <laughs> Sorry. B but is there any chance you have a towel? Of course. My apologies. I would usually have someone here to attend to us. But everyone's been sent home. Only the three of us remain. Let me fetch you a towel. That was interesting as well. Because last time, yeah, Lilica was actually there. So Amelie doing the whole, oh yes, yeah, my apologies. <laughs> She's here too. These twists are great. I did not see that one coming at all. Isn't that Lilica's line too, as you should? It might have been. That I can't remember for sure. But either, either way, she's definitely doing her lines as well. Amelie withdrew from the hug. She was a little taller than Sophia, despite both being the same age. Sophia peered up at the fur from below before she disappeared down a hallway and into another room. This really is a manner. When she told me about her house, I almost didn't believe it. A layer of dust rested against the tabletop along with a few other items. On the seti, a newspaper sat open. Oh no. Well, I'm going to save, because this could actually be a death. If I read the newspaper, is it going to say it's from like 1620 or some shit? So, Amelie is partly Yandere. She might be, or she may be haunted, or she may have just imagined that this girl, Lilica, exists when she doesn't, because she was so desperately lonely. We're going to look at the newspaper. I need to know <laughs> what date is on the newspaper. The settee was a deep emerald green. It looked almost unused despite its apparent age. On it rested a newspaper, open in a few pages. Sophia turned her head to read the headline, but from afar could only read the word plague. She reached across to pick up the newspaper. Behind Sophia, the window began to shake in the wind as her fingertips grazed the surface. It's so windy. She spun around just in time to see the front door fly open, and the howling wind filled the entryway. She scrambled to the door and with great effort shut it again. Phew. A Emily? When Sophia spun back around, the newspaper and the items on the table were all gone. Damn it, Lilica! Let me find your secrets. The plague is supposed to be what killed Amelie's brother. Yeah, he died of scarlet fever. So that is a plague. Not the bubonic plague, but it's a plague. There were footsteps. Yes, there were. <laughs> Something walked away. Something also took the newspaper and perhaps any other things that might have warned of the timeline. <laughs> and this time it's Amelie doing the creepy approach rather than so uh, Lilica. Oh, that's great. Sophia? Oh, Emily, please use this. Thanks. I'll bring an umbrella next time, I promise. Sophia took the towel in her hand. It was soft, but somewhat old. She lightly dried her hair and clothes, but still found herself clawed. I'm, I'm going to make the atmospheric sounds a bit louder. <laughs> that heartbeat thing is too good to ignore. I am going to turn down the music a bit more. Okay. Then, if you're now dried off, would you care for a tour of the house before afternoon tea? That sounds great. On your right is the pantry. Pantry? <laughs> On your right is the pantry, and down that hall is the boiler room, but you shouldn't have any need for those spaces. 
The two walked side by side, alone in such a big manner. These are all guest bedrooms. I've prepared this one for your use. If you find anything not to your standards, you can let myself or Lilica know. Emily, I have a feeling your standards are much higher than mine. I've never even been in a house that looks like this. I respect how Sophia can still raise in this situation. Yup. <laughs> no matter how creepy and haunted it is, she's still like, damn, though. <laughs> no? Is your home not similar? Well, it's a lot smaller. There's no shame in that. You own your own property, yes? Yeah, I recently bought it. Also, she's 19 and she bought her own property? Okay, Sophia's a rich kid too. How dare. <laughs> she not commenting about Lilica? She's commenting about Lilica, but she's just talking about her. So yeah, they did the dialogue in this really well because it works if Lilica's there, like being like, oh, I forgot to tell you, my friend Lilica's also here. Like that could just be a warning that like, hey, if you see another girl in the house, that's just Lilica. And same for that. It was just like, you can ask me or Lilica. Even though she's not around, the dialogue still works. It's awesome. With your husband? What? No, of course not. I'm not married. The father allowed you to buy property on your own? <laughs> Emily, you, spike, you speak just like how you write. I'm so surprised. And you speak quite casually. Also, I feel like she's blushing a lot more this time. Either I'm imagining that or she just wasn't like visualizing herself blushing in her own route and Sophia's actually seeing it. People usually say that about me. Being here around you makes me want to be more formal. What need is there for formality between friends? That's true too. Ahem. This is the morning room and next door the dining room. We'll be having afternoon tea in the sitting room here. So many rooms. Upstairs is my bedroom and the master bedroom. I must ask that you don't enter the master bedroom, as it belongs to my parents who are currently away. From the landing below, Sophia could see the door to the master bedroom. For some reason, her eyes were glued to it. Come inside. Come. Open the door. We're waiting for you. Yeah, I can see why Sophia was creeped the hell out. <laughs> that, God, I, I thought my computer crashed. I froze, Jesus. Of course, I won't go poking around anyway. Sophia shook her head and time seemed to resume around her. All this walking has made me parched. Shall we take afternoon tea now? Sure. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah, Sophia. <laughs> uh, I, I guess survival goes out of the window when it's time to just, you know. We'll say love. We'll say love. <laughs> we'll say love makes fool of us all and not lust. <laughs> Why don't you have a seat while Lilica and I prepare the food? Oh, I can come help. Nonsense, you're my guest. It would be remiss of me to allow you to lift a finger. Wait, I'm saving. I wonder if I can just click out of this and not defy my fate. <gasps> oh, I can! If you insist, but I'm happy to help any time. But what if I defy my... No, we want to go through the first ending first. We want to see how she disappears. So we'll come back to defying our fate. I love the coloration as well. Thank you. I'll be back soon. Please rest. Emily? Yes? It's nothing. Take your time. Well, we didn't defy our fate, so now we're going to find out what creeps the hell out of her in here. <laughs> That's so cool. Yeah, we have the option, or we could just keep going down this path and see. And this is, this is the better path for now. Because first, I want to find out exactly what happened in our first run through. And then we'll go back and be like, no, 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 I'm not leaving your side. Fuck this shit. Lilica gets me when I leave you alone. <laughs> the room was spacious and dead silent apart from Sophia's footsteps as she crossed the wooden floor. That, that's not a wooden floor. Those are tiles. But okay. Each step was deliberate and slow as her eyes searched through the room. Nothing in particular stood out. 
Large windows showed a glimpse of the outside world through thick curtains. The rain was still coming down hard, obscuring her view. The windows shook every now and then, but the wind had seemed to die down a little. Uh oh. <laughs> wooden checkered floor, wooden tiles. I guess that I've never seen wooden tiles. I don't know if that's a thing. They're like white and black, though. I just imagine they were like, you know, tile. <laughs> Behind her, a chair at the dining table had been pulled out as if it were waiting for her to sit down. Oh, Lilica, that's so sweet of you. Creepy as fuck, but thank you. Emily? Was that you? Emily? Her hand rested against her chest, begging her heart to calm. Or... Lilica? Whether a hollow laugh sounded through the room or not, she wasn't sure. She quietly sat, quietly sat down in the seat that was left for her. <laughs> the table was already set. But once again, she noticed a thin layer of dust on the surface. Through the silence, Sophia could hear it again. Footsteps. But this time, from directly above. A master bedroom. In front of her very eyes, Sophia watched the scene unfold. A woman, not older than 40, removed her shoes and stepped onto the table. Yet nothing was disturbed. She reached up and took hold of the noose. The rope wrapped around her neck like the finest pearl necklace. Don't use that phrase. Join me. The woman's eyes locked onto Sophia's. Her hand was outstretched, waiting to be taken. A rusty smell filled her nose, accented with the faint smell of perfume. Sophia shivered in response. A breath frosty on her lips. She reached for the hand slowly. I'm back. Uh. Sophia? Oh, we can defy our fate again. But there's only two endings to this. I guess there's a defy your fate ending where we get out of this shit and our bad ending. <laughs> oh, Emily. I'm sorry you scared me. Is everything all right? Sophia stared at the spot the woman was only a moment ago. Both she and the noose had disappeared. Wait, you guys, the stream broke? Uh-oh. We're back. Yeah, my one didn't even say it dropped frames. That's strange. VOD should be safe. Yeah, it's just on YouTube's side. Sorry, guys. How much did you guys miss? Did you guys get to the defy the fate start? Right at the important moment? Damn it. Just for a second. Okay. Sorry about that, everybody. That was not even slightly on my side. We didn't drop any frames. Nothing crashed. So, yeah, YouTube's just being silly. Um, Thankfully, this is just something that is, you know, exactly what we saw before. We're just in the same part as before where Sophia's just freaked out but still relaxing. Okay. Yes. I think I'm just a little tired. Good. I'm sorry for the delay, but I've prepared the tea and the pastries. So, this is what high tea looks like. High tea will come later. This is just a simple afternoon tea. Will Lilica be joining us? I believe so. Was she here a moment ago? N no, she wasn't here. How strange. She told me she was coming to sit with you. Perhaps she's gotten herself busy with something else. Should we wait? There's no need. It would be sad to let the tea go cold. Sophia watched as the tea filled two out of the three cups. The third cup sat empty. For some reason, the very sight filled her with dread. She picked up the cup and brought it to her lips. It was green tea. Oh, <gasps> They remembered my choice. That's kind of creepy. <laughs> The taste was bitter and musty. With her heart on edge, she placed the cup back down on the saucer, smiling towards Amelie. Bitter and musty. 
Yeah, that's tea that sat there for a couple hundred years. <laughs> How could she be relaxing at a ghost house? I am shocked that she hasn't run the hell away. <laughs> it's one thing when a door closes suddenly behind you or you're hearing like weird sounds. It's a completely different thing when you see a 40-year-old woman step onto a table, wrap a noose around her neck and t tell you to come with her. I would be so fucking gone. <laughs> Sorry, the power of boners is not that strong. <laughs> Did you have much trouble getting here? A little. My ride broke down, so I had to walk for a bit. Broke down? Oh, I'm extremely sorry. If the staff had been here, I would have sent someone to collect you. It's okay. It's just a little rain. I just wouldn't want you catching a fever. My medicine store has been running low of late. No worries. I usually carry ibuprofen with me. Ibuprofen? I haven't heard of it. Uh, anyway, I'm glad you arrived here safely. I'll draw a bath for you later to make sure you're warmed up properly. Thank you. Emily sipped at her tea before looking down at it with a confused expression. A little stale. I'll ask my father to procure a new batch when he arrives home. Where are your parents, by the way? Well, we were separated due to the plague. They took the staff to wait until a cure is found and left me here with Lilikas to not catch the disease. Right. I understand. I spent a lot of time separated from my family due to the pandemic, too. It warms my heart to find another thing in common with you, Sophia. I was surprised to hear that it's safe enough for you to visit. Perhaps that means my parents will be back soon, too. I think so. The world seems to be opening back up again. So, what do you do? Locked up in this big house all the time. Well, I usually spend my time sewing or playing music. I used to write, but... But? Oh, my parents wondered if it was feminine enough. What year did this game out? I game come out? I believe it was 2020. It was either 2020 or 2021. Interesting that she refers to it as a plague where Sophia calls it the pandemic. Yeah, because Amelie is talking about Scarlet Fever. Meanwhile, Sophia's talking about COVID, so that was our first glimpse into like, oh, they're from different times. <laughs> I don't really think that matters. If you enjoy it, then I say you should do it. Sophia, then what about you? Hmm, well, I'm studying art at university right now, so I guess that's what I spend most of my time on. You attend an anniversary? You attend university? Yeah, although I'm thinking about dropping out. Sophia, you truly are filled with surprises. You own your own land and you attend school? How jealous I am. Why don't you do the same? Oh no, I'm not allowed. Of course you are. Anyone can attend within reason. But, well, wouldn't it get in the way of my marriage? You're engaged? Amelie shook her head. No, not yet, but I'm already 19. I'm sure my father has prepared my dowry. An arranged marriage? Yes, naturally. I don't think I'll ever get married. Really? Doesn't your family object? I don't think they really mind as long as I'm happy. You don't have to either, you know. You've given me so much to think about. Much indeed. Now, I wonder where Lilica has disappeared to. Well, it's no matter. The evening is already coming, and soon it will be dark. And then it's our turn. <laughs> no, no! Shut up, Fuchan. Shall I draw you a bath? That sounds wonderful. To be honest, I'm not hungry. So, can we skip dinner tonight? Of course, if that's what you wish. Let me show you to the bathroom. Before she left the room, Sophia took one last look back at where that noose once hung. Okay, at least nothing was there this time. <laughs> you may not believe it, but my father had taps installed. Isn't that wonderful? Like, taps for a bath? That's right! We used to have our maids fill the bath, but now there's no need. <laughs> Emily, you're so strange. I have taps at my house, too. Truly? You must live quite the lavish lifestyle yourself. I don't know about that. This is the bathroom. Allow me to draw the bath for you. 
One moment. Alone in the hallway, Sophia peered back up the grand staircase, past the large gr stained glass window and at the dark door shut tight. A moment later, Amelie popped back out of the bathroom. Feel free to go inside and make yourself comfortable. I'll return with a towel in a moment. Thanks, Amelie. Isn't Amelie French? Amelie is a French name, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're in France. She draws a bath up on paper. <laughs> Allow me to draw you a bath. She sits there, paintbrush in hand. Here you go, my dearest friend. I've drawn you a bath. <laughs> you may now remove your clothes. <laughs> Sophia's just staring at her like, damn. This is the craziest fucking pickup line I have ever heard. But I'm not against it. <laughs> Order spewed from the rusted pipe. Rusted pipes into the steel lined wooden bathtub. Oh, so this house is completely different from how she sees it. Amelie saw this as like a really nice copper bathtub. Everything nice and fancy and proper. Instead, we've got rusted pipes and there's just a bit of steel inside a wooden bathtub. Everything else was silent. Sophia took careful steps forward and peered into the bath. All seemed normal. With a sigh, she finally let her shoulders relax. Yet in her mind, all she could see was that woman with her outstretched hand reaching towards her. She clutched her hand to her chest. It still shook. Sophia stumbled forward until her hands rested on either side of the washroom basin. Her fingers held on tight until her knuckles were bone white. It's okay, Sophia. You're just tired. Her eyes traveled up to the mirror. It was embellished with a golden frame. She stared at her reflection. She was still herself. It was all a figment of her imagination. That's when she saw it. In the mirror, standing behind her, was a young woman with long blonde hair that nearly reached down to the floor and deep, blood red eyes. Oh shit, Lilica's finally here. She didn't try to speak or make any movement. She just stared with her big, dark eyes. Ooh. Sophia wanted to spin around to confront the girl, but her whole body was frozen stiff. The young woman finally started to move, one step at a time, maintaining eye contact through the mirror. She crept closer, closer and closer, until Sophia swore she could feel her breath on the back of her neck. Her mouth seemed to be moving, but no words escaped her lips. Who are you? She spun around, but no one was there. <laughs> the water overflowed from the tub, spilling out over the floor. Sophia rushed forward to turn off the tap and noticed it. Blood? There's gonna be blood in the- Yeah, baby! Oh, I love this game! The water that came from the tap was red. A dark, deep red. She hurriedly turned the tap for what felt like forever. And finally it stopped. Sophia stared at the dark liquid inside the tub. Without thought, her hand dipped in. When she withdrew it, each finger was dyed red. Something about it captivated Sophia. She undressed, one layer at a time, peeling away the still damp clothing and stepping forward and into the bathtub. She sank down, down, until everything under her shoulders was submerged in the liquid. It felt heavier than water, much heavier. As she stared directly ahead, those blood-red eyes reflected in her mind. Why not just end it here? You're scared, aren't you? Just sink down. Accept your fate. Accept it? She could no longer hear the sound of the door opening as her face sunk down into the liquid, 
her eyes shut. Sophia? I knocked but didn't hear a reply. I've brought you a towel. Ah! Sophia's eyes sprung open. The water was clear and the tap was still running, causing it to overflow into the floor once again. So she's a ghost? It seems like it. It depends on if, like, Amelie is a ghost too. That's the only question. <laughs> Amelie's either, like, a ghost or trapped in this house and suspended in time. But for sure, Lilica is a ghost. Girlfriend to the rescue? <laughs> Literally, if I lose her, if I leave her side, everything in this mansion is going to kill me. The way she was, like, coerced into getting into the bathtub as well, that's interesting. So she might, if, it, if Amelie hadn't shown up or whatever happened, something happened that like scared the first ghost away too. She might have joined the woman on the table and just like slid her head into the noose as well. Sophia drew her knees to her chest, still facing away from Amelie's voice. Heat rose to her cheeks. Being seen like this. By her. Oh. Sophia, please forgive me. I didn't realize you'd already entered the bath. No, it's okay. I'm sorry, you just surprised me. Can Lilica be in multiple places? Because she was in the bathroom and talking to Amelie at the same time. Mm, no, she talked to Amelie for a bit and then she left. Amelie went ahead to decide what color of towel she wanted by herself. So yeah, Lilica appeared here to torture her a bit. So far, this is all working just properly. It's just that Lilica's a ghost who's fucking around. <laughs> Learned on this channel, ghosts can be sexy. Yo, that's lesson one. We get that every day. And yeah, YouTube is being very broken. My chat keeps dying on my phone as well. I, I was like, oh, nobody said anything in like five minutes. And then I looked at the chat on my PC and was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave the towel over here. Thanks. The door shut again. Sophia finally turned back to look at where Amelie once stood. No one was there anymore. Not Amelie. Not a woman in a long green dress. Or a young lady with blonde hair. Ooh, green sleeves. I didn't realize that. Well, I mean, it doesn't really matter that the woman wore a long green dress before. That's probably only going to pay off later when we go into the master bedroom and find like a corpse there in a green dress or something. She sighed. What's going on? She sank into the water, although this time fully conscious of what she was doing. Not feeling all that much better, she stepped out and took hold of the towel that Amelie had left for her. Water fell from her body as she stared at the cloth. The towel was pink, similar to her favorite hoodie. The towel was old and full of holes and what seemed to be burn marks. Reluctantly, she wrapped it around her body. From outside the door, Amelie's voice called out to her. So, burn marks. I wonder if that means the mansion burned down at some point too. Because if it was just old and full of like normal holes, it would be one thing. That could be like age and moths eating it to crap. But yeah, the burn marks. I guess the mansion burned down at some point. Interesting. It's a whole ass ghost mansion. And yeah, I'm thinking it's probably Amelie's mother in the green dress as well. We'll find out as this goes on. For all I know, it's like Lilica or Amelie. <laughs> Maybe that's what actually eventually happened to Amelie or Lilica, and we're just seeing what they want us to see. Wonder what the blue tower is different from the pink one? Good question. Might not have had burn marks. Might have had some different interesting things. Let me come help, Sophia. Oh, wait. Let me come help. Sophia, when you're done in there, you can come to your room. Oh, okay. So, yeah. This is Amelie shouting into Sophia. After she just talked to Lilica out the door. It's just we can't hear Lilica. <laughs> so it just sounds like she's saying random shit. Okay. Thanks, Emily. Who is she helping? Lilica? Didn't that used to be a practice after people died of the plague? I mean, it would make sense. I don't know if that's a thing that they actually did. But yeah, if like a whole family died of the plague, it would make sense to burn the house down. It would get rid of any chance of that plague spreading from that point at least. She shivered. The room had become awfully cold, and the towel did little to bring her warmth. She picked up her discarded clothes and redressed. Her clothes felt foreign and wrong on her. 
Sophia took a deep breath and swallowed hard. I'm okay. <laughs> Get the hell out of the house, my girl. <laughs> Jeez. This is giving Crimson Peak vibes. Oh, it actually is. Oh, man. Crimson Peak, and I forget the name of... Oh, there's another one where somebody shows up at essentially a haunted mansion and everything seems normal. The only scene I remember from it is like, there's a great like ballroom scene where everybody's dancing to La Dance Macabre and it's so good. Sleepy Hollow? Definitely not Sleepy Hollow. <laughs> the hall was already darkened with no light spilling in from the windows. A few sconces attached to the walls were lit with live flames, but it offered little in the way of calming her. The floor creaked under her weight. She stopped outside of her bedroom. Inside, she could hear talking. She put her ear to the door. I think it was Hill House, maybe. Yeah. Not the haunting on Hill House, but yeah, I think just Hill House, maybe. It definitely wasn't the Shining or the Haunted Mansion. <laughs> Didn't we already... Oh, wait, it's through the door. Didn't we already speak of this? We cannot leave the house. But only the greenhouse would be safe. No one else uses it, and it's only a few steps from the back door. It is unsafe. You know this. What's gotten into you? Is it because of your friend? I just thought it'd be nice to at least sit in the sun. And you may sit by the window in the dining hall. Is it really so unsafe that even taking a foot outdoors would be dangerous? Yes. That's amazing. It's amazing that I I couldn't, like, separate Amelie and Lilica's voices at the beginning anyway. And now it turns out that they were both just doing the same voice anyway, because it's just Amelie talking to herself. It's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> oh, man. There's also that film with Nicole Kidman, Others, with a similar idea. I loved Others. Oh, my God. The ending to Others was mind-blowing. Yeah, but you saw the future. I didn't see the future, but for once, my lack of having any vocal range when it comes to high pitches <laughs> saved us. <laughs> Sophia opened the door and entered the room. Um... Emily stood by herself, making the bed. Sophia, I see you're done with the... bath. There's the blush again. <gasps> Sophia looked away, thinking of what had happened in that bathroom. Were you talking about the greenhouse? Yes. Did you see it when you arrived? I did, but it looked as if the plants inside had died. Oh, that's impossible. It's barely been any time at all since the gardeners left. I'm sure the plants inside are more sturdy than that. Well, even if they have died... Maybe we could go in and replant some things tomorrow. How wonderful. You not heard a word I said. It's unsafe to do so. Uh, oh. Oh, don't be such a spoil sport. I think it would be perfectly fine. Well, it's getting late now, so I'll leave you to retire. If you need anything, my room is just upstairs on the left. <laughs> yeah, that was a creepy moment. <laughs> your, your friend is like, oh yeah, maybe we can go play in it tomorrow. And then instantly he's like... If you not heard anything I said, that would be creepy as shit. That's, yeah, run, girl. Run. <laughs> Good night, Sophia. The door shifted before Amelie could even reach to touch it. Sophia's eyes locked in on the movement. Oh, shit. Lilica opened the door. <laughs> um, Amelie, would you stay for a while? Is something the matter? Just a little homesick. Sophia sat down on the bed before resting her head on the pillow. It was hard. Of course. Why don't we chat for a while? Then come join me. Sophia gently pet the spot beside her in the bed. In the bed? Ah. Uh, okay. Sophia looked towards Amelie in the low light. Right now, she seemed hauntingly beautiful, as if she were nothing more than a ghost. Thanks for staying with me for a mile. It's nothing to worry about. Truly, I wanted to spend more time with you, too. 
But Lilica is real. Does her voice get projected through Amelie or something? Is she real or is she just a ghost that occasionally, you know, possesses Amelie to speak to her? Who knows? Or is Amelie just insane? <laughs> we don't know. This whole mansion could just be Amelie's delusion that she's like influencing on the world. It's going to be interesting to find out. Really? You don't find me boring? You're the most interesting person I've ever met. Don't be silly. I'm being completely honest. You truly are so unique. I think the same about you. I've never met anyone like you. Really. Her mind flashed back to all she had seen. Really, she truly had never met anyone like Amelie. You wrote so much about yourself, and yet seeing you in person... I fear there's still so much I don't know. There's plenty of time for us to tell each other everything. I like that line as well. That's so cute. It's almost like she's like... We have all the time in the world to tell each other everything. After all, we have a lifetime to spend with each other. The freaking flirtation is so good. And YouTube's been weird again. <laughs> and tell me something about yourself. Something you've never told anyone. Hmm? I'm partially blind in my right eye. Really? How well can you see? It's okay. Just a little blurry, really. And you tell me something. Tell me something, she thought. Tell me what's going on here. Tell me I'm not insane. Well, when I was 12, I stole the cookie jar from the kitchen and blamed my brother. He was scolded for hours. <laughs> what a mischievous child. I'm sure your brother wasn't all too pleased. Actually, it was his idea. He knew I wanted it and told me to tell my parents it was him if I was asked. What a good brother. Where is he now? Did he go away with your parents? Emily shook her head. He died when he was 16. Oh, I'm so sorry, Emily. Oh, what happened? Scarlet fever. So my family was only left with me as an heir. And what worth is a female heir? You're worth plenty. More than plenty. Thank you, Sophia. But some days I'm unsure. It's your turn again. Truthfully, I... I said before I didn't want to get married, but that's not exactly right. I do. Oh? I just don't want a husband. Then... I'm sorry. Does it make you uncomfortable? No! I... I've also thought that I don't... want a husband... Whenever my father's brought it up, I felt sick to my stomach. How about coming away with me for a while? Anywhere outside of this ghostly haunted mansion, please. <laughs> Somewhere with electricity, for the love of God. Away? Outside of the house? What about the sickness? Yes, away. Away from this place. It's okay now. You'll be fine. You could come stay at my house. I could show you around my school. You don't have to go through an arranged marriage if you don't want to. You would do that for me. You're my dearest friend, and... I actually... Lilica? <laughs> Well, <laughs> we're still not denying our fate. <laughs> At some point, the two women had gotten close enough together that they could feel each other's breath on their lips. The two parted with reddened cheeks, Amelie quickly brushing her skirt off and standing up. I should be going to bed. Please rest well. We can talk more about it in the morning, right? The liquor cock plucking? See, I originally thought it was Lilica. But at the same time, <laughs> that could just as easily be Daddy Dearest or Mommy Dearest or Brother Dearest. We don't know how many ghosts are in this house. Now that we've seen the 40-year-old woman in the green dress. Don't know. Right. Good night, Amelie. I'll see you tomorrow. Amelie left the room. 
Meanwhile, Sophia's eyes study the space. Oh, shit. <laughs> I mean, what if I just keep clicking? Come on, give me dialogue boxes. That worked in the past. Oh, I'm sorry, Sophia. We led you down this path. You got to accept your fate. Well, it is what it is. For some reason, Sophia just couldn't sit still. She tried to lay down to rest, but turned this way and that uneasy. I'll get some water. She's going to end up entering the master bedroom out of curiosity and dying, isn't she? <laughs> was it the towel? The towel made the bad end? Nah, it was the other choice option. It was the damn green tea. If I'd gone with oolong, everything would have been fine. <laughs> the hallway was dark, with most of the sconces having been blown out already. Sophia stepped carefully through the space, conscious of the sound of her footsteps created. The kitchen was... by the stairwell. Hand-painted portraits were lined up in rows on either side of the hall. She stared up the grand staircase. Each step was inviting, enticing her to make the ascent. I knew it! That's the, like, most powerful ghost area, you can tell. The large eyes stared once again at the imposing stained glass window, and then to the doors that awaited upstairs. Her hand rested against the kitchen door, her fingers dancing over the handle. It stayed there, as her mind debated with itself. Waiting. Waiting. Come here. Come. Visit us. Her hand dropped to her side as she ascended, past the glass window, and to the next floor. Two doors awaited her. A chill ran through the air as a scene played out before her. Two women dragged a man's body up the staircase, leaving a trail of blood on the otherwise pristine carpet. They pushed open one of the doors. The man's head hit the final step, and he made no move to stop them nor cried out in pain. He was already long dead. The figures disappeared into the room. When Sophia blinked, the door was shut again. She trembled. The master bedroom... From behind that closed door, a voice called out to her. The words were much too faint to make out. Her hand rested against the handle. Sophia couldn't stop it from shaking. With a careful motion, she pushed the door open. A musty smell came from further inside the dark room. Sophia, peering into the darkness, quickly took hold of one of the lit candles near the room and stepped inside. There's going to be bodies in here. There's going to be a grown-ass man, maybe two men. There's maybe the brother as well. And also a woman in a green dress. Or maybe just the parents. Here's what I'm thinking happened. Did they kill the brother? I don't think they killed the brother. I think that's probably the father. What I think happened is either Amelie never had anybody named Lilica in her life. Was just a lesbian who did not want to marry a man at age 19 and was going to be forced into an arranged marriage and maybe killed her parents so that she wouldn't have to do it. And then she just dragged them up into their bedroom, put them and tucked them into bed and just continued living her life with Lilica. Her love. The girl that she would spend eternity with. That's what I'm feeling. So maybe, yeah, maybe the brother actually did die at 16 naturally of scarlet... Well, I say naturally. Of scarlet fever. But then just, yeah... I'm thinking Amelie invented Lilica in her head, murdered her parents, and then just left them up here. Some kinky stuff happened behind the closed doors. <laughs> Not kinky, but dark. The portrait sat above a large canopied bed. The curtains were pulled back, hiding whatever was inside. In the portrait, Amelie sat beside a woman with a green dress and brown hair done up into a bun. It was mommy dearest. Standing behind them was a man with an imposing brow and a large beard and daddy dearest. Let's go. A family of mice ran from under the bed and out of the room. Fear jumped to the side, narrowly avoiding them. Step. 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 He 
Each step brought her closer to that bed. Each step made her chest feel heavier, tighter. She stood before the bed and reached a trembling hand to the curtains that hid whatever lay inside. The wind blew from somewhere unseen, and her candle extinguished. Behind her, the door shut and the room plunged into near-complete darkness. Emily? Is that you? Um, I'm sorry I came in here after you asked me not to. Oh. Oh, just go now, okay? Her body fell forward before she had a moment to react. She tumbled through the curtains and landed on something hard that rested on the bed. Bones? Bones, by any chance? What? What? The curtains flew open, and the moon shone in from outside. Ah, <laughs> well, if you're going to get married to their daughter, you might as well meet the parents first and ask their permission. Uh. 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 <laughs> the body she was expecting to find was absent. In its place, two skeletons long ago decayed. They laid side by side, one smaller and the other larger. But now, one was either side of her. A scream pierced through the air, but no one came running. She tried desperately to squirm, to run, but it felt as if something was sitting on her, holding her down. As she struggled, she saw it. Two dark red eyes hanging above her, watching. <laughs> you won't take her away from me. Also, I just got an achievement that was called She's Mine. Mine, mine, mine. You won't take her away from... In fact, she's mine. Mine, mine, mine. <gasps> you won't take her away from me. So I guess that's another ending. Side Sophia, one out of two. She's mine. <laughs> Yo, I love this game. This is fantastic. Oh my god. Okay, part two. Well, I guess I should load actually. Mm. Do I load? Or, mm. I guess I begin on Sophia again. Yeah, they won't even let me do Lilica yet. So I just have to skip a lot. There's got to be a skip button. Skip. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, this time we can look at the tabletop too. Look at the... Oh, is that going to make me skip? I really Wait, let me check my preferences. I think there's a way to not skip things you haven't seen. Skip. I, I don't know. If, don't skip unseen text. Don't skip after choices. Okay, yeah, that's perfect. Look at the tabletop. Sophia ran her finger over the tabletop. The wood was carved with an intricate pattern that rounded around the edge of the surface. The hand reached across to pick up a book that laid face down. Behind Sophia, the window began to shake in the wind as her fingertips grazed the surface. It's so windy. She spun around just in time to see the front door fly open, and the howling wind filled the entryway. She scrambled to the door and with great effort shut it again. Phew. Careful with the skip because it can click through the defy fate. Oh, thank you very much, Bobo Herring. That's useful. I'll make sure I don't end up doing that. That's silly. <laughs> Emily? When Sophia spun back around, the newspaper and the items on the table were all gone. Okay, so that wasn't much different at all. We just got a book instead. They didn't even say what was special about the book. That didn't help at all. <laughs> Why did they have to hide the book? <laughs> Um, okay, let's, do I, sa I I'll, I'll save just to make sure I don't accidentally skip the defy your fate. And then skip, stop. Oh, good, it did stop. Um, defy my fate, please. Wait, I pressed it, but it didn't change anything. Emily? Yes? It's nothing, take your time. Actually, is it okay if I ask you something? 
Of course it is. Oh, here we go. Yeah, okay, now it's different. Is there someone else in the house with us? There's no one else apart from myself, you, and Lilica. And Lilica is... She's just gone into the kitchen. Didn't you see her enter? Right. My vision must be playing up. Is something the matter? N no, it's fine. I'll wait for you inside. Okay, so that one wasn't too different yet either. <laughs> nice though. Oh, I'm liking this. Here we go. Yeah, this will be interesting. Okay, so we've changed that already. So we'll save over this one just to make sure we don't miss the next skip. And let's also make sure there's nothing different on this. Nah, this is all the same so far. Okay, skip. Now we defy our fate again. That's why they mentioned the partially blind thing. Yeah, so we have an excuse. <laughs> defy your fate. Oh, Emily? I'm sorry, you scared me. Is everything all right? Sophia stared at the spot the woman was only a moment ago. Both she and the noose had disappeared. Emily? I... Something is the matter, isn't it? Did something... happen within the room? Happen? What exactly do you mean? Didn't... Did a woman with brown hair tied into a bun and a dark green dress ever live here? Well, it sounds to me like you're describing my mother. Your... mother? Yes, she's just as you described. <laughs> she's just as you described. Hair in a bun, green dress. She never changes out of that dress and she never takes down the bun. That's my mommy dearest. <laughs> That's a weird description to be like, oh, you mean my mom. <laughs> but you couldn't have seen her here. She's still away. Right. Let me pour us tea before it gets cold. Oh, will Lilica be joining us? I believe so. Was she here a moment ago? N no. She wasn't here. How strange. She told me she was coming to sit with you. Perhaps she's gotten herself busy with something else. Okay, so we're back to doing the same stuff. Oop. Let's go defy our fate again. Taps for a bath. Do we defy our fate here? No, it's in the bedroom we defy our fate. Okay. There we go. Okay, yeah, that slamming is annoying. <laughs> the rich reusing her outfit. I know, right? I mean, I guess maybe it's just something she really likes. Maybe it's something that she was painted in as well. Married women did have their hair up in a bun all the time in olden times. You see, yeah, that I get, but I mean, she still takes it down every now and then. <laughs> Plus the green dress thing was just like, oh yes, my mother. <laughs> Only she has a green dress in this land. <laughs> Defy your fate. Lilica? At some point, the two women had gotten close enough together that they could feel each other's breath on their lips. The two parted with the reddened cheeks, Emily quickly brushing her skirt off and standing up. I should be going to bed. Uh, please rest well. We can talk more about it in the morning, right? No, don't leave me. Stay with me all night for no, no, no reason other than I'm scared. That, 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 that's why you should stay with Sophia. Right. Good night, Emily. I'll see you tomorrow. Emily? Wait a moment. Yes? Oh? What does Lilica look like? What a funny question. You've seen her plenty of times already. With my eye, I... I sometimes struggle a bit. Oh, right. My apologies. She has long blonde hair done up like this. Emily pretended to put her hair up in two low ponytails. What color are her eyes? Red. And she wears a dress of white and black with a red ribbon the same color as her eyes. And now she knows that's the creepy ghost that was staring at her in the mirror. <laughs> Thank you, Emily. Good night. See you in the morning. Emily left the room. 
Meanwhile, Sophia's eyes study the space. Oh, we are defying the shit out of our fate. <laughs> okay, this is where things actually properly change. Are you here, Lilica? Silence followed. If I stay here, will I live to see tomorrow? More silence. She gulped. The flame by the side of her bed flickered wildly. Sophia laid back, shutting her eyes, but she felt as if someone was watching her. Waiting. Waiting and biding their time. Cold tendrils wrapped around her throat like a snake. Cool like ice, and getting tighter and tighter. She couldn't breathe. She couldn't even move. She opened her eyes, but no one was there. Sophia wasted no more time. She jumped to her feet and quickly shoved them back into her shoes and headed for the door. It opened without any resistance. Outside the room, the hallway was dark, lit only by a handful of candles and sconces. Sophia swallowed and stepped out. I hope they actually let her out. I mean, she's leaving. That's what you want, right, Lilica? I really hope so. The house was silent. Sophia took careful steps, but the floorboard still squeaked loudly beneath her. During the day, she hadn't even noticed it, but now, wrapped in darkness, it seemed as if those small sounds would wake whatever was sleeping inside the house. Family? Lilica? She whispered, but heard no response. On being met with only more silence, her footsteps sped up. Far in the distance, she heard something shift. A slight sound, one that wouldn't normally be noticed. But for Sophia, it was enough to make her heart race. She sped to the end of the hall and stood at the bottom of the grand staircase. Above, her eyes honed in on two doors in particular. The master bedroom and the door to Amelie's room. Emily. The choice was obvious. Sophia raced up the stairs and stood in front of the door to her pen pal's room. Oh, hell yeah, get Amelie and get out of here together. It might make her not exist anymore, but do it. Take Amelie with you. But as she went to knock, the door fell open. Amelie? Are you in here? She received no reply. Sophia's head spun around. From somewhere deep in the dark, a gentle tune was being played skillfully. Her arms dropped to her side. Emily did say she liked to do music. The sound consumed her. Sophia drifted back out of Emily's bedroom, chasing that dreamy song. Step. 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 Through the darkness, all that mattered was that sound. She came to the end of the hallway. A single door stood in her way. A bookcase was pushed to the side. Without a second thought, she poured it open. In the center of the room, surrounded by candles, Amelie sat. A skirt fanned out around her. Spread out over the floor were piles of letters. Upon closer inspection, each was filled with words that had been crossed out and signed with Yours, Marion. Who the hell is Marion? Were you cheating on Sophia, Emily? I swear to God. Emily? Emily, are you awake? Her eyes were shut tight. Yet her hands moved enough to play the sorrowful tune. Please listen to me, Emily. Look as she isn't. I'm not what? You're going to leave her, aren't you? Sophia heard the door shut behind her. She backed up quickly and tried the handle, but it was stuck. Emily's eyes finally opened. In place of her usual golden eyes, was a glare of deep red. Emily, snap out of it. Please snap out of it. You 
want to take her away. Amelie, please! One by one, the candles blew out, and the two were plunged into darkness. Amelie's body slumped forward and crashed to the ground. <laughs> it's nice to meet you, Sophia. I'm sure we're going to have a fun time living together. Since you'll be staying with us after all. Right. And now we've got the achievement, stay with us. You won't leave, will you? Okay. Stay with us. <laughs> so the feeling from that one... <laughs> It feels like they've done this to a few other people. If she was surrounded by letters that had the names Yours Marion on it. Hmm. I feel like either one, they've done this to multiple people throughout time, led them here and then murdered them. Or maybe that was like the original timeline. Maybe Amelie had a different girlfriend back in the day, a different pen pal named Marion, who she was in love with. But again... Jumping back onto the theory where she murdered her own father. Yeah, maybe she murdered her own father because she was in love with Marion, but her father wanted to marry her off. Don't know. But either way, Sophia just got cocked. <laughs> maybe Sophia's not Sophia either. Maybe. Maybe she's a re reincarnation kind of thing. If they go the whole way for like the whole tragic lovers reincarnated thing, ah, oh, that shit's going to hit hard. I also like this. I like how you can just like, it moves around and stuff. Also, I really liked how like that music box song, as soon as Lilica took control of the body, the way the music box song got all corrupted. That was so sick. Sophia still dies. I mean, it depends on how you look at death. Like they said, she's going to stay with them in the house forever. So there'll just be a trio of ghosts now. Let's go lesbians question mark. <laughs> Yeah, let's go lesbians, but maybe not until, you know, death. Okay, well, I guess now we can do... Oh, her thing is shaking. Or maybe Lilica's a fake name. Maybe she's Marion. Maybe that's why it's shaking and things are creepy. Yours, Lilica. So that was the harem route. Yeah, we got the harem ending. They're going to be together forever. So this is me and Lilica, but we're still seeing the same rain. The rain never seems to cease at this time of year. It pours from the sky in its unending grief, as if longing for something unseen. Thunder roared in the distance, enough so to make the young woman flinch, but not enough to make her waver. The woman sat beside a man with an imposing brow and a large beard. The man wheezed and coughed, but kept hold of the newspaper in his hands, Oh, what if Lilica is the original owner of this house? Because this sounds like it's Lilica sitting next to her father. What if Marion is the mom? Marion could be the mom, but her signing the letters like yours? I mean, it could be a daughter-sister wife kind of situation. Either way, we'll find out. This is very interesting. What if Lilica wrote to Amelie under another name? That could also be a possibility as well. Especially if she was just trying to hide the fact, like, if anybody ever found the letters, maybe she didn't want them to be led back to her. We'll find out. Okay. Daddy dearest, what are we doing by the table? The front page read the following. The Great Plague of London, 7,000 deceased. The man frowned at the words. Oh, and here's the woman with the bun and the green dress. She's got green sleeves. Daddy looking fucking fine. Are you kidding me? Broad shoulders, long, wispy hair. Oh. Lord. <laughs> okay, I'll call you Lord. How utterly preposterous. What on earth are the physicians doing? The lady next to him coughed into a handkerchief. When she pulled it away from her mouth, it was stained red with blood. Oh, they're both already infected. He was coughing. She's coughing out blood. God damn it. I'm sure they're trying their best, my dear. Their best is going to get everyone... Is that better? Their best is going to kill everyone. Forget this rubbish. 
Amelie is still well and finally of age to marry. We will arrange the suitor before she becomes sick. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's so fucked up as well. The father just being like, oh, we need to get her married quickly. Get her attached to some family. Get our family some money before she dies. Jesus, dude. We sent her out there and she'll certainly grow sick. She should stay here, locked in her room until it's safe to leave. Uh, she ain't safe with you two already being sick, my dude. No man will want a woman who has spent her only good years locked in a bedroom. Fuck me. How dare she almost be 20 years of age? God, she's practically a hag already. A Christmas cake. She needs to start laying babies. Laying babies? She needs to start having babies already. Laying babies. Where the fuck did that come from, Fuchan? <laughs> but she will be safe. Oh, you fucking dick. He hit his wife as well. The lady held her cheek, which quickly reddened after the impact. The Lord glared at her behind his bushy eyebrows. You would do well to remember who she belongs to. Who you belong to. Hmm. The lady blinked, trying desperately to stop her eyes from welling up. Lilica, please come down here. Her voice carried through the otherwise empty home. Time seemed to pause for a few moments before a woman with blonde hair, cascading behind her, entered the room. She wore the dress of a maidservant and a neutral expression that wavered just so after seeing the mark left by the Lord's hand. She stepped forward, crossing the tiled floor with slow steps that seemed to match the pace of the thunder that roared outside. It is a tiled floor! Okay, screw you guys! <laughs> Trying to convince me it could have been wood. So yeah, um... What's her name? Um, Amelie and Lilica see it as a tiled floor because they see it back when it was good and beautiful. Whereas at some point, a lot of the fancy furnishings in this house have been replaced by wood. Interesting. The lady nodded to the maid. The maid nodded back to the lady. The moon reflected from the metal object in the maid's hand as she swung it down into the Lord's throat. Oh. That's what happened. <laughs> well, I got this completely wrong. Lilica and the mother murdered the father for the sake of Amelie. Good for them. But he was hot. Uh, no, no, no. You can't be abusing your wife and child. Yeah, no, he deserved to die. He let out a gargled scream. Blood splattered out from his mouth, and he tried to speak, tried to yell, but it was too late. He fell forward onto the floor, and the tiles darkened into a crimson red. He squirmed and crawled, searching for something that no one would ever know, before he fell still only a few minutes later. The lady stared at the scene, her heart raced, and a laugh escaped her lips. <laughs> Finally. Finally. You'll never hurt Amelie. I hope you rot in hell. The maid wiped the knife against a small white hand towel. The stains would never be fully removed. My lady, I'll deal with the body. Wait. This isn't what Lyric uh, Lilica's hair looked like. Lilica's hair was all like bulging out all over the place. She didn't wear a dress like this either. Have they switched places? Was Amelie actually the maid? Is this Amelie just with her head? No, Amelie... Hmm? Yeah, Amelie with her hair down, maybe? There's still something secret going on here. I'll help you. It's too much for you to carry alone. Wait, what we... But my lady, you're sick. Shit, I gave her the same voice as well. <laughs> uh, maybe this isn't even Lilica. They're just calling her maid. No, she called Lilica first. Okay, don't worry. And she's taller, it seems. Yeah, she's as tall as the lady rather than being like half that height. But my lady, you're sick. And I'll get no better sitting here. Yeah, I gave him the exact same voice. It's okay. That's what we're rolling with now. <laughs> the two grabbed him by an arm each and dragged him towards the stairwell leaving a trail of blood in their wake. 
No other words passed from their lips as they executed their task. They reached the end of the hall and began the ascent to the first floor. The Lord's head hit against each step with a soft thunk. 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 The house was silent in all other regards. Two doors sat next to each other. Both were shut tight. As the two women reached the top of the stairwell, the maid pushed open the door to the master bedroom and entered. The room was spacious and clean, with fresh bedding left by the maid just the same morning. On the wall above the bed, a newly painted family picture. The two struggled and finally lifted the man into the bed. His face was stuck in a terrified expression, and his clothes were ruined. You will protect Amelie, right? I'll do anything you desire. Then let us begin. Lightning struck somewhere in the distance, lighting up the otherwise darkened room and showing many things that should have been left unseen. The maid removed her shoes and crawled into the sheets beside the corpse, while the lady dipped her fingers into the Lord's wound and drew a line of blood around the bed. Oh! They cast a spell! So they were trying to protect Amelie by doing some sort of blood ritual. And they ended up keeping her la locked in time or something? Interesting. She spoke softly to no one in particular, chanting words that should never be chanted. When she was done, she stepped over the threshold and approached the maid. Never let anyone hurt her. Protect her no matter what. I will, my lady. Thank you, Lilica. You'll never truly understand how much your actions mean to me. The lady leant forward and lent, left a soft kiss against the maid's lips. It was brief and gentle, and something the two had wished to share for longer than either would admit. Yo! Let's fucking go! Lilica was actually with the mother? She wasn't, like, obsessed with Amelie? That's why she's looking after with Lilica so desperately, is because she loved the mother and wants to protect her daughter. Oh, man. That's such a good fucking twist. I'm so happy with that. And I guess technically the lady is still attached to the house as well. Because her spirit was here, so she's about to go downstairs and hang herself. But then she's definitely going to be part of the house as well. Interesting. As the lady pulled away, the maid drew her knife still smudged with blood, and brought it to her veins. Oh, so it was Lilica who died in the bed next to the husband. Lilica, the maid, slit her own wrists in bed with the husband and ended up stuck there. And then the mother goes downstairs and hangs herself instead. Maybe it needed two blood sacrifices for the thing to work. Interesting. Goodbye, Lilica. Goodbye, my lady. The maid bled out slowly, painfully slowly. The lady gasped for air and clawed at her neck. Everything in the manor became still. Everything apart from a young lady named Amelie, who sat in her bed upright, feeling a deep... And another young lady named Lilica, who stood over two corpses lying beside each other in bed. Interesting. So this is actually the creation of a new Lilica, even though Lilica was the maid. This blood ritual essentially created a new permanent one. Trauma for decades? Hell yeah. And I guess she never even knew to, 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 to Amelie. She just like came downstairs the next morning and suddenly there was Lilica there who was like, Hey, mama. Your parents have gone away. <laughs> a new version of Lilica? Yeah, essentially like a new reborn Lilica. The young lady named Lilica stared at the maid in the bed. Her own face. Her own blood seeping through the bed. And yet here she stood. She looked at herself in the mirror and saw a different person entirely. That's why the sprite was so different. She was no longer the maid. She was Lilica. Her voice was softer, her hair longer. It worked. When she turned back towards the bed, Lilica froze. Both of the bodies were gone. 
and in their places, two skeletons. Oh, shit. So it took a while for that to work as well. Even though she did the blood ritual, it took a while for her to actually be formed as the weird curse ghost thing. Hmm. How long has it been? She walked towards the door and found it locked. Digging through the tattered clothes of the long dead maid, she retrieved the key and opened it. The door beside the master bedroom sat ajar, just enough for Lilica to peer in. Amelie sat on the end of her bed, staring at herself in a small handheld mirror while brushing her hair. She hummed a quiet tune, but froze as her eyes met Lilica's. <laughs> soul baby! Hey, oh, that's actually cute. The lesbians made a soul baby. <laughs> also, I mean, I almost said F-preg as if that's something unusual. But I mean, like, yeah, soul baby. <laughs> so Marion was the mom. We don't know yet. It might be the mom. I just don't see why the mom would be writing her letters and signing them yours, Marion. That doesn't really. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Or maybe the letters weren't to Amelie. We just saw who they were signed by. Maybe Marion was the mother and maybe Amelie found the letters written to Lilica. Maybe they were written to Lilica from Marion. And so she found out that those two were together at some point. Hmm. Who are you? I'm Lilica. Lilica. Lilica? But your mother told me that you had a maid named Lilica. What a coincidence. What are you doing here? How long has your mother been gone? My mother? I saw her. She frowned and clutched her head, as if she couldn't quite remember. I saw her just this morning. I see. Your parents have left to be cured of the plague. They've asked me to stay here with you until they can return. Really? Cure truly exists? That's right. So until then, how about we be friends? Amelie's face lit up, and their eternal friendship began. Does that count as one ending? Nope. Okay. <laughs> Is the spell even impacting Amelie? Yeah. Either Amelie has just existed in this house for hundreds of years by herself, or... Essentially, she was just frozen in time for hundreds of years. Either way, she doesn't realize everything that happened. She just woke up, she feels like it's essentially the next morning, and suddenly her mother and father are gone, and there's a new Lilica who's taking care of her. That's so cool. So she really had no idea. I guess if she now starts writing letters, well, she gets a letter. She gets a letter from my mum, Sophia, and then starts writing letters back. So yeah, maybe for Amelie, it genuinely has only been like a couple of months. Oh, no, a couple of years. I... <laughs> Fuck me, Futan. Why do you always do that? <laughs> um, yeah, it's right on the screen. It's been a couple of years, at least, since that happened. How many years had passed since that day? Neither could tell. Time seemed to stand still within that manner, out in a field in the middle of nowhere. And that's the way Lilica wished it to stay. Unfortunately, yep, there we go. A letter arrived. Damn, Sophia ruining their eternal Yuri. Well, it's not even a Yuri fantasy. Their eternal adoptive mother taking care of her lesbian daughter fantasy. <laughs> or how they became pen pals in the first place. Just, yeah, they'd already said about this. At one point, for some reason, so one of Sophia's letters, which wasn't actually written to Amelie, just happened to show up at the mansion. And then she started writing back. Lilica, a letter has arrived. What? Yeah, her face. She's instantly like, no. Outside interference? No. Her blood ran cold as Amelie stared at the envelope in her hands. When was the last time we had a letter? How exciting. Perhaps it's mother writing that she'll return soon. Perhaps so. Oh. Oh. Well. It seems to be addressed to someone else entirely. 
Perhaps it was brought here by mistake. Then we'd best send it back. Give it to me and I'll have it returned. A peek wouldn't hurt, don't you think? Oh, shit. <laughs> Reality's cracking around them. Well, not reality. The falsehood is cracking around them. Lilica watched as the first crack formed in her fragile world. That's good symbolism. I like that. Everything that she's protected, everything that she's worked so hard to protect for her lady. But dispose of it immediately. Give it to me. But it was too late. The letter inside had already been let loose. And Amelie's eyes had already taken in the words left for someone else. Sophia, look at the blush. That's kind of fucking adorable too. She had only read one letter from her and she was instantly enamored. Aww. Lilica, I think I'll write back. I'll let her know that I received the letter by mistake. Here come more cracks. Oh, not. That isn't needed. Please? Just one letter. Thank you, Lilica. Are the cracks going to stay when we change room? <laughs> How many letters had arrived at their door since then? How many times had Amelie spoken excitedly about Sophia to her? Sophia. Sophia, Sophia, Sophia. It's always Sophia. Sophia is the crack in this fragile reality. Sophia. I have to get rid of Sophia. Lilica? Lilica's eyes opened with a jolt. I'm sorry. I'm a little tired. What did you say? Sophia says she's coming to visit. Oh, there we go. Another crack formed from the last. It sprawled across reality, threatening to shatter at any moment. Figuratively and very literally. Yeah, that's what I love about this. Like the fact that this is all a fantasy. This house is all crumbled and ruined and burned around them in reality. But that's, yeah, that's a fantasy. So technically this is symbolic, but it's also kind of physical and relating to everything that they've built around here that could shatter at any moment. The spell that could break down if it's revealed. Emily, I don't think that's a good idea. The plague, she says that it's safe enough to travel now in her letter. Perhaps mother and father will return soon too. <laughs> it's so perfect that that worked out so well as well with the scarlet fever and the COVID. Because of that, the letters were able to like, Oh yes, I wish I could go out, but the plague. And then Sophia on the other side is like, Plague? Oh, she means the pandemic. Yeah, yeah, that shit sucks. <laughs> but it's calming down now. Oh, that's so good. Lilica forced a smile. But we don't need anyone else here. We have each other. Of course, you are my dear friend, Lilica. But Sophia and I have been writing to each other for... Oh. She shook her head as if chasing off the beginnings of a headache. For a long time, anyway. I'm excited to finally meet her. Won't you be excited with me, too? We can all be friends. The piano? Yeah, this is good. You could feel it setting in, how tense it's getting. Right. Friends. I'm sure we'll all be the best of friends. So technically, the good ending <laughs> was the quote-unquote harem ending in which Lilica kills Sophia. Because that's the good ending where the spell... Well, I don't know if you consider that a good ending. Maybe we'll be able to free Amelie from the spell and she'll be fine. But yeah, that's an ending where, Am uh, where Sophia just basically gets dragged into the spell and just stays with them forever as well. Interesting. I guess neither of them would know time was moving on without them after that. For an amount of time that neither Lilica or Amelie could truly comprehend, the house was suddenly buzzing with life. Amelie's footsteps were light and her days filled with excitement as she waited the arrival of, of Sophia. And finally, to Lilica's dismay, the day came. The pendulum clock on the wall swung back and forth, ticking down the time. Lilica stared at it, wishing that it would slow down even further. Ten minutes, then twenty, then an hour passed as the two stood by the door, 
waiting for a knock. All her flesh will rot away as the spell breaks. That's what I'm worried about. That's why I was like, it could be a happy end. Maybe they'll set her free. <laughs> I mean, setting her free is probably for the best, even if she does end up dying and the time catches up to her. But yeah, the two options are either they save Emily from the spell and she gets to live in the modern age, which honestly, she'll probably like. <laughs> Compared to where she did live, that should be a lot of fun. Or, yeah, the spell will break and at least Amelie will be able to cross on and, like, move on rather than being trapped in an eternal time loop waiting for her parents. This is also a really good, like, piece of symbolism for the idea of the pandemic itself and how long we were trapped inside for. I mean, depending on where you lived and how seriously you took it and everybody around you took it, a lot of us were locked up in our houses for, like, almost a full freaking year. Things changed so much. So yeah, we had that same feeling of time moving on around us, but feeling like we were trapped where we were. So yeah, this is all done so well. I love this visual novel. She seems to be late. Perhaps she's not coming after all, Emily. There's no need to make such a sullen face. Mayhaps this is for the best. She wrote that she would be here, so I shall wait. With her face hidden from Emily, Lilica scowled. <laughs> you ain't scowling. You puffed up your face. You look adorable. I've seen scowls and that ain't it. I just want to squeeze those cheeks. Do you truly believe it's safe to have visitors during the outbreak? Lilica, I believe we've been isolated long enough. And Sophia has written that it's safe. I trust her word. She'd not endanger us. And if your pen pal turns out to be a robber in disguise, what then? Emily smiled to Lilica's dismay. She has a way with words that only a woman could have. A lady robber, then. Nonsense. By the way, Lilica, have you seen my letter? By the way. I wonder if she hates men because her father's such a piece of shit as well. Because <laughs> it doesn't seem like it's just like a general distaste of like, oh, but she's a girl. Girls can do no wrong. But it also seems like there's a bit of a level of, no, men do horrible things. I've seen men do horrible things. Girls, on the other hand, are all sweet and kind, like my mummy and her maid, who she spends so much time with, they practically spend all day with each other. <laughs> By the way, Lilica, have you seen my letters? Can't say that I have. A knock sounded at the door, instantly halting their conversation. Amelie rose from her place and took a steady step forward before Lilica raised a hand to her. Allow me. Allow me to see if she should truly be allowed entry. Also, the fact that Sophia can see Amelie perfectly, but can't see Lilica, that makes me hope a little bit. It makes me hope that Amelie is just like, you know, a part of this spell, but still alive, essentially. Whereas Lilica is dead since she slit her own throat. She is just a presence. But yeah, hopefully that means Amelie can actually be saved from this. And if anything, her mother and Lilica should probably be happy for that if it works out. Allow me to see if she should truly be allowed entry. The door groaned as it slowly swung open and revealed the young woman who knocked at the door. She was drenched from head to toe. Lilica stared at her, light hair and eyes. She looked almost like a kitten. Instantly, Lilica's dislike for the woman grew. <laughs> I love it. She's like, oh, she's cute. I want to crush it. <laughs> she's going to sway my darling baby girl's heart. How dare I wish she was ugly instead. <laughs> Lilica stepped to the side just in time for Sophia to bounce through the door and wrap her arms around Amelie. Yeah, good job dodging so she didn't go right through you. Her blood boiled. She watched as the clothes she had carefully handmade came drenched by someone unworthy. Someone that didn't deserve to even look at Amelie. Amelie! Sophia! Amelie's arms wrapped around Sophia in return, and Lilica turned away. Why, you're completely drenched. Did you forget your umbrella, perchance? Or perhaps her umbrella got carried away by the wind. With a cool anger written all over her features, Lilica shut the door. I didn't even think to bring an umbrella. The forecast said sunny all day. 
<laughs> My fault for believing it, I guess. Can't believe you're truly here. Me either. About time, right? But just as pretty as I- Oh, you're just as pretty as I knew you'd be. And... And you too. But what are you wearing? <laughs> Seeing your house, I feel like I should have dressed up a little more. No. Perhaps it's that I overdressed. Lilica stood to the side, her arms crossed lightly over her chest. Her long hair reached down nearly to the wooden floor. Pardon my manners. My dear friend Lilica is here too. I believe I wrote about her in the past. I remember. I've kept all your letters safe. Don't worry. As you should. So it was Lilica that said as you should. She has got like a little bit of yandere to her. It isn't yandere as in like she wants to be with Amelie herself, but it's Yandere as in, that's my precious baby girl. The daughter of my beloved, you are not worthy to breathe the same air as her. A little. I mean, it's just a, di it's a different type. <laughs> Why? Oh, God. Okay, another person's getting banned today. Jeez. Read the chat rules. That didn't even make any sense either. Emily side-eyed Lilica upon hearing her tone, but Lilica simply looked away. <laughs> Sorry, but is there any chance you have a towel? Of course. My apologies. I'd usually have someone there to attend to us, but everyone's been sent home. Only the three of us remain. Let me fetch you a towel. Emily disappeared down the hallway, leaving Lilica alone with Sophia. This is where it's going to be interesting. When we see Lilica alone, what did she actually do this whole time that she couldn't be seen? <laughs> it really is a manner. When she told me about her house, I almost didn't believe it. Has no one told you that it's rude to poke around someone else's house? Sophia walked straight past Lilica without even a notion of responding. Hello? You can't see me oh she didn't know either at that point i mean she knew she was like a ghost or something supernatural but she just didn't know that other humans wouldn't be able to see her love the dark expression yeah the shadow over the face is so good sophia ran her finger along the edge of the tabletop before reaching to pick up a book that rested there don't let her touch it don't let her touch anything she'll break it all she'll Undo everything she wants to hurt Amelie. She can't find out the truth. The window shook loudly in the wind. With a flick of her small wrist, Lilica allowed the door to fly open, causing Sophia to whip around in surprise. It's so windy. Lilica locked in on the object that Sophia had been reaching for. She rushed forward and took hold of it, and quickly hid it behind a cabinet as Sophia reached to close the door. Phew. A Amelie? Sophia spun around, but looked straight through Lilica. So Lilica controls the mansion? Well, a little bit. I think part of it is also the mother. Marianne, possibly. We don't know that Marianne is the mother. I do think it might be Marianne, and those might have been Marianne's letters to Lilica. Um... But yeah, that voice, like, she's the one who heard the voice in the head. Lilica heard the voice in her head. So the, like, creepy whispering, the voice without any actual body. I had thought it was Lilica before, but it could actually be the mommy. Mommy's still looking after this as well. She's just only here in spirit. Only her influence and her will is kind of held on. Sophia? Oh, Amelie. Please use this. Thanks. I'll bring an umbrella next time, I promise. Lilica watched as Sophia dried herself with the towel. Our towel. It's not for her. There can't be a next time. Then, if you're now dried off, would you care for a tour of the house before afternoon tea? That sounds great. <laughs> the cursive is the mother. There we go. Seems like there maybe is some sort of autopilot for the curse. Yeah, I think that's the idea. Like... They do that in a lot of, like, magic kind of things where the curse is basically the resentment that a person has left behind, the miasma, the, 
hateful feelings that hadn't been like truly fulfilled. So I think, yeah, the mother having hung herself, the maid having killed herself, and both of them having killed the father. I think all of that is influencing this as well. On your right is the pantry, and down the hall is the boiler room, but you shouldn't have any need for those spaces. Sophia and Emily walked side by side, close enough that their shoulders almost touched. Lilica stared at the place where they were almost connected, seething with a quiet rage. These are all guest bedrooms I have prepared this- Oh, these are all guest bedrooms. Full stop. I have prepared this one for your use. If you find anything not to your standards, you can let myself or Lilica know. Emily, I have a feeling that your standards are much higher than mine. I've never even been in a house that looks like this. No? Is your home not similar? Well, it's a lot smaller. There's no shame in that. You own your own property, yes? Yeah, I recently brought it. With your husband? What? No, of course not. I'm not married. Shut up. Your father allowed you to buy property on your own? <laughs> Emily, you speak just like how you write. I'm so surprised. Your voice disgusts me. And you speak quite casually. People say that about me. Being here around you makes me want to be more formal. What need is there of formality between friends? That's true too. Your words are poisoning, Emily. Ahem. <clears throat> this is the morning room. And next door to the dining room, we'll be having afternoon tea in the sitting room here. Sophia heard that? Um, no, she did not hearing the things that are going through Lilica's head. But when Lilica speaks, it does come out of Emily. I think Lilica's realized that as well. Because when she did speak earlier, she did realize that Sophia actually heard her. So that explains why she was being so silent when we played through the first one. She talks around Emily, but when Sophia's around, she's careful not to talk unless she needs to. She figured out quite quickly that her words come out through Emily. Which is good. <laughs> Shouldn't laugh, but the quiet seething is so funny. You can laugh, it is funny. <laughs> These two having their romantic meet cute and her just sitting there in the corner like, You're not good enough for my baby girl. I swear I'll fucking kill you. <laughs> you would think the father would also haunt this place seeing how he died. Yeah, but I think his energy was just consumed to, like, make the ritual happen. He was just a blood sacrifice kind of thing. So his will didn't matter at all because they're the ones who cast the spell. I think that's how it's working. So many rooms. Upstairs is my bedroom and the master bedroom. I must ask that you don't enter the master bedroom, as it belongs to my parents who are currently away. Of course, I won't go poking around anyway. Lice. You're lying. All this walking has made me parched. Should we take afternoon tea now? Sure, that sounds good. Why don't you have a seat while Lilica and I prepare our food? Uh, oh, I can come help. Nonsense, you're my guest. It would be remiss of me to allow you to lift a finger. If you insist, but I'm happy to help any time. Thank you. I'll be back soon. Please rest. Emily? Yes? It's nothing. Take your time. Well, we saw the ghost of the father, didn't we? No, no, no. That was a flashback. Uh, wait. Oh, you are technically right that we saw... We also, yeah, Sophia saw the flashback of the body being dragged upstairs. But at the same time, he was already dead then. He wasn't actually a ghost. He wasn't, like, influencing anything. That was just literally a flashback of things that had happened before. The mother reached out to Sophia and told her to join her. And obviously Lilica's been here the whole time. But yeah, it's more like it was just a replaying thing. It wasn't a poltergeist. It was just like a replayed memory kind of thing. It's part of the curse being drawn apart. Funny how the change in perspective makes the gay romance into psychological horror. <laughs> yeah. Emily is like a little chihuahua that gets so angry. Oh, do you mean Lilica? Because yeah, Lilica's adorable. Just sitting in the corner like, hmm. You're not good enough for my baby girl. Why are you here? <laughs> I don't know why I saved that. I just didn't feel safe for some reason. Sophia slipped through a doorway and disappeared. Emily smiled widely while Lilica just stared ahead blankly. Isn't this lovely, Lilica? To have a new face in the house. It feels like forever. Yes. How lovely. 
I'm glad you're having fun at the very least. Are you not? I'm always having fun when we're together, Emily. <laughs> oh, shit. Sever her fate. Okay, so I'm guessing if I do nothing, we're going down the same path from the first one. I'm guessing sever her fate would be like, let Amelie go. Let Amelie move on with her life, break her out of the cursed fate. So we're not going to do that first. We're not going to sever her fate. We're going to go down another fucked up route before we do that. I'm always having fun when we're together, Amelie. Oh, I see. Are you jealous? Worry not, my dear friend. Of course our friendship means just as much to me. I value you greatly. Just as much. Indeed. Come along, Lilica. Let us prepare tea. There's three endings in Lilica's, just like it said on the green screen. Yeah, I know. But one of them has to be like severing the fate, and then we'll see what the other one is. Maybe you have to complete the other two to even get to the third one. Let's go bad ends first. Yeah, then we only get like little slight bits of the mystery as we go forward. And then we'll get the big twists by the end. Did you finish the baking yesterday? The pastries are ready for serving. Oh, the gentle smile when it's just the two of them. Just as much. Yeah, now we know why we why she said that. <laughs> At first it was like, yo, that's fucked up. You've barely known this girl you've been a pen pal with. But now we realize that actually, yeah, she barely knew Lilica as it was. Lilica just showed up and time has been all timey-wimey on her for a while. Excellent. I'll just fetch the tea, so tea then been darkish so far but still not that bad yeah i don't know why i got a warning for this even cyberpunk was worse than this and i played that on like my first week on Digi sanji <laughs> maybe they were just being careful <laughs> or maybe there's more fucked up shit coming who knows allow me a lady of your standing shouldn't be doing such a menial task should she don't be absurd even sophia herself seemed to be fine in the kitchen did you hear how she jumped to help I should follow in her footsteps. What would your parents think of that? I appreciate the sentiment, but they took with them all of the staff. I have little choice but to prepare my own tea. I see. Then, shall I attend to our guest? I wouldn't want her to become lonely. Would you? I'll only be a few moments. Of course. Anything for you, Amelie. <laughs> the threat in that comment now sounds so much worse. <laughs> It'll be a good chance for you to become friends, too. I'm sure it will be. Lilica's smile at that moment seemed to hide behind it an intent much deeper than Emily realized. Yes, we'll become friends. I'm getting her the hell out of this house. Oh, shit, the cracks are back. Oh, that's sick. The walls had eyes. Eyes that tracked Lilica's every move. They followed her as she made careful, deliberate steps towards the sitting room. They stared, their eyes bulging, judging. They had no mouths in which to scream, but Lilica could still hear their words. We are sacrificed Shattered glass pierced through her shoes, cutting her feet. She could feel the blood ooze out, pooling. It was warm, comforting. She looked up to find where the glass had come from, and she noticed the cracks once again. Along every wall, every floorboard, even through the air. The world was fragmented. It was already broken. Not beyond repair. It's not... My lady, I will fix this still. You can rest. Please rest. I'll take care of everything. Anything and everything. 
For you. She blinked. The world reverted to the way it should. The glass that lined the floor gone. The eyes that followed from the walls gone. And the cracks that had begun to wrap themselves around Lilica's ankles had disappeared too. She stood in front of the sitting room's door, which sat slightly ajar. Inside, Lilica could see Sophia staring out the large window. Hold up, her eyes were glowing? Oh, they are! Yeah, they've got like little flowers in them. That's wild. And yeah, I wonder... Curious. I wonder if they killed all the servants as well. Or if they sent the servants away when the plague started in. Because they definitely killed the father. But yeah, with the whole, like, we all sacrificed ourselves, maybe they'd killed a few people before they even killed the father and dragged him upstairs. Or, yeah, it is just like the we sacrificed ourselves. It's like we, me, you, and the husband sacrificed themselves for Emily. Could be either way. The brother too. No, Emily remembers the brother dying, so I think that's just real. I gen and especially since the father was so desperate to marry her off. I think that's because they only had the one child left. She was 19. They weren't going to be having any more children. They didn't have a son to inherit their estate or marry a woman and, like, move on. So they had to marry off their daughter so they could have any kind of relaxation. I think the father genuinely did die of the scar scarlet fever at 16. The glass that lined the floor... Oh, wait. I already read this. The eyes that followed the cracks. She's there we go. Inside, Lilica could see Sophia staring out of the large window. They said it required two blood sacrifices? Did they? Oh. I thought I said that out loud. I didn't realize they talked about the ritual. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Her back stayed turned as Lilica entered the room. Of course it wouldn't have been possible for Sophia to turn and look at her. But Lilica still found herself taking careful, quiet steps. <laughs> That's funny as well. The fact that she knows she can be heard and her influence can be done. So she's like, I'll be quiet now. I don't want to scare her with my ghosty footsteps. <laughs> what if they did something though? Him trying to perform another ritual, but it failed. Why would he perform a ritual though? I think that's just like grasping at straws for now. I don't think the brother has anything to do with this. I think he just died a long time ago. Especially since he was apparently the older brother since he took care of Amelie and he died at 16. So he would have died a long time before Amelie turned 19. The window shook past the dark, thick curtains. Oh, the face. You who would attempt to defy your fate. Why don't we see how long this little game lasts? Why don't we test whose love is stronger? I swear, my love is unwavering. My infatuation, my yearning, my desire. You could never even wish to match it. Lilica pulled out a chair roughly, dragging the legs across the floor. <laughs> yep, way to scare the shit out of her. <laughs> Yet you dare to challenge me. You dare to test my love. Emily, was that you? Emily? Sophia took careful steps towards the chair, resting her head against it. Or... Lilica? <laughs> You're nothing. Sophia sat down in the chair that was offered to her, while Lilica circled around as if a cat after its prey. But her steps paused as she heard something strange. Footsteps from above. The master bedroom? In front of her very eyes, Lilica watched the scene unfold. A scene that made her blood run cold and her body freeze in place. My lady. The lady of the house stood beside Lilica, where before the two had stood eye to eye, now the lady stood taller than Lilica by at least a head. My lady? My lady? What are you doing here? The lady removed her shoes and stepped onto the table. Did you come here to punish me? Are you angry? Promise. 
or remove the plague that has entered our home. I swear it upon my undying love. The lady did not respond. Instead, she reached up and took hold of the noose. The rope wrapped around her neck, exactly where the necklace that the maid had gifted the lady should have rested. Join me. Her eyes locked onto Sophia's. Her hand was outstretched, waiting to be taken. Why won't you look at me, my lady? Are you truly so angry? Angry enough to despise me? For but a moment, as Sophia's outstretched hand came closer and closer, the lady's eyes turned slowly towards Lilica. They carried with it a message that only Lilica could decipher. Lilica's body shook. It trembled and trembled, till she could bear it no more, and she ran from the room as fast as her legs would carry her. If the hallway still had eyes, they weren't fast enough to follow Lilica. The floorboards, as if made out of quicksand, threatened to suck her up and bury her deep within the house. Her feet felt heavy and leaden. Every step was as painful as that brief glance. She raced through the hall and up the flight of stairs, past the stained glass window which left a myriad of colors over the carpeted steps, and past the doors that led to the master bedroom in Amelie's room. Closer. Closer. Until she arrived at a bookcase. She pushed it to the side and entered the hidden room. Hmm. So this is the hidden room where Amelie was reading the letter. Oh! A room is hidden because it's where they spent their time together, isn't it? It's the secret place that they went to where the husband couldn't find them and they could have their little trysts and leave letters for each other. Oh, maybe it's even her bedroom as the maid sleeping next to the other two. It's their room. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. I'm interested in what she meant by the message only she could decipher as well. I don't think she was saying like, Sophia, come join me, like some other people were saying, like she was getting cocked. <laughs> I think that was either a message of, kill her, she needs to be gone, or something. I don't know. That's really sad, though. She had to see the woman she loved about to kill herself again. I'm sorry, a tryst? A tryst! They had their tryst. You know, they smashed. They did the horizontal dance. They pop, pop, pop. They slammed against the walls. All of that shit. <laughs> a tryst and a fair. There we go. The room behind the bookcase was small. Not a single window faced outwards. Thus the room was near pitch black. And perfect for no prying eyes to spy two women grinding against each other. This is cute. I like this. <laughs> this, this is cha 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 jeez. <laughs> oh, here comes the music box again. Each wall was plastered with handwritten letters. Handwritten letters clearly for Lilica alone. Yeah, they were written by the lady to Lilica. Aww. Her eyes frantic finally started to calm as she took in the words. Her words. Words left to her. For her. Only for her. Lilica's eyes settled on a particular letter. Oh, there's the three options. Okay, let's lock ourselves into something. Left, right, or ahead? Let's look ahead. No, let's start with the top. Let's look left. Emily, Lilica, wait, what? Dear Am Lilica, how wonderful to hear that you're doing what? Wait, do I have to click through? How wonderful to hear that you're doing well. I've been very busy this week, but most of it is boring, so I won't bog you down with the details. Do you know what happened just yesterday? Of course you don't, you weren't there. I was walking home when I found an abandoned kitten. Someone left it in a box on the side of the road. How could anyone do that? Anyway, I took her home. I named her Am Lily after you. It's a little embarrassing writing it out like that. I hope you don't mind. Yours, Sophia Mariam. I'm sorry. One way. What? Dear Amelie to Lilica. Did she actually write Lilica, or is Lilica like crossing things out and pretending these are written to her? I'm confused. Yeah, this just shook up what I thought was going on too. 
Maybe Lilica never even existed. Maybe the maid was a completely different person. Maybe she was having an affair with her daughter? <laughs> or maybe something else. <laughs> Why is it intentionally scratched out? Or it could be like a code name kind of thing. It could have been that she was just, they were writing their letters like, as if it was to my daughter, when in actuality she was writing them to her lover. And so maybe Lilica, after they she'd received them, then crossed out the fake names and put in her real name. I don't know. I think Lilica was crossing stuff out. I'm not sure, because the handwriting looks exactly the same as well. That could be a choice. I'm not sure. We'll find out. Also, the fact that she changed the last name, Sophia to Marianne. That feels weird as well. I don't get why they would... Unless, yeah, the whole thing was like, Oh, it's from your pen pal, Amelie. Sophia wrote another letter to you. So just in case the husband ever found them. Yeah, maybe in case the husband ever found them, it was like, Oh, my stupid daughter, Amelie, got another one of those silly letters from Sophia. How stupid. I think it was Lilica being upset that the mum was gone. Upset that the mum was gone. Hmm. Eh. I don't get how that would work. We'll find out. Um, we looked left, so let's look right. Oh, we can look through all of them. Dear Am Lilica, I've spent the past week studying, studying, studying. Don't get me wrong, I enjoy it. But everyone needs a break, you know. Oh, idiot. Sophia was the friend. I sorry, I forgot that. I had a fucking dumbass brain fart moment. So these are these are Sophia's letters. These are Sophia's letters to Lilica. And she's just crossed them out and pretended they were from the mother instead. Lilica's insane. <laughs> Lilica's in sorry, I completely forgot Sophia was the name of the other character. I was just like, Sophia? I wonder if that's just a fake Yeah, I'm an idiot. Okay. God damn it. I think I've been doing really well theorizing things so far, but that was such a dumb moment. <laughs> oh, my blonde hair is coming back. <laughs> On my desk, I have a little cactus. Oh, does that mean they were never actually in love? That'd be really sad as well. What if Marion never actually loved Lilica? What if Lilica just loved Marion and it was just desperate pining? Hmm. On my desk, I have a little cactus in a pot. To be honest, a cactus wasn't my first choice, but I've killed every other plant I've owned. <laughs> I know that feel. I have somehow managed to kill a spider plant. Anyway, it bloomed. There's one beautiful flower coming out of it. I couldn't be happier. So that makes studying easier. I think your environment makes a big difference. How about you? Do you have any plants? I'm looking forward to hearing about it next time. Yours, Sophie Marion. But they kissed. That could have been... Remember, there's this little thing called an... Oh, I feel like an idiot. I can't even remember that. Unreliable. And they, there's this little thing called an unreliable narrator. Which means that flashback that we saw could have just been Lilica's face. False memories. Maybe she killed them all. Maybe the mother didn't actually hang herself. Maybe she hanged the mother and killed the husband. Or maybe the, the mother was just using her. Maybe Marion was just using her. Who knows? Okay, let's look ahead. I'm not done reading. I want to see all of these. Dear Amalek Lilica, Today was tough. I tried my hardest, but I still failed. Don't you think life is unfair sometimes? Sorry, I, just, I wasn't clicking through those. <laughs> I wish trying hard enough was all it took to succeed. Sorry, I'm whinging, aren't I? Whinging and gurning. Man, I haven't heard that phrase in forever. I came out of my interview and it was raining. I thought just my luck, but something interesting happened. A rainbow in the distance peeked out from behind the grey clouds. It reminded me of you, and then I felt a little better. I hope we can meet soon. Yours, Sophie Marion. Yours, Marion. That's cute as well. <laughs> the fact that she named a kitten after her, and then she even like, the rainbow, she's like, yo. For some reason, the colors of the rainbow remind me of you. Anyway, happy pride, everybody. <laughs> she ripped the letter from the wall and clutched it to her chest, collapsing to her knees. She couldn't hate me. She couldn't. She adores me like I adore her. She entrusted her everything to me. Everything. Her everything. 
Family. The letter dropped from her fingers that were neither cold nor warm. You want me to get rid of that disease, don't you? You won't accept me until I protect Amelie. Is that right, my lady? I'll do anything. Anything you asked. So if that's all I have to do, then I'll do it. I'll keep Amelie safe. Forever. Licka stood from the ground and dusted off her skirt. A face that had previously contorted in distress had finally calmed, and a smile gently crept onto her face. I love you, my lady. And for you, I'll love Amelie too. Yeah, that's creepy. <laughs> if she really did murder both the father and mother and there wasn't ever actually anything between them, she just decided, this is my delusion. We loved each other. And then I killed the father and we did it all to protect Amelie. Our child, not his child, our child, because she loved me. Who knows? Maybe she was just, yeah, pissed off about the husband being so abusive. I should light the sconces too. Where did I put those matches? There we go. <laughs> and she came back smiling. Right here. Ah. You gave me a fright, Lilica. Where have you been? Preparing the guest room for your dear friend, of course. How kind! Sophia's just preparing for a bath at the present. I'm going to retrieve a towel for her from the linen closet. Emily, I think it's best that you send her home post-haste. What? Why would I do that? For all you know, she brings with her the plague. Sophia says it's now safe to travel. It should be perfectly fine, don't you think? And what if she lies? She wouldn't do that. Sophia's a kind and good-natured person. She would not bring any danger to us. Did you know that Sophia attends a local university? And she lives by herself with no husband. She says that if I wanted, I could also study. Study? Study? She wants to leave. Leave the house. Oh. Oh. Oh, she can't leave. She can't go anywhere. She belongs here. She was entrusted to me. The lady of the house should not study, Emily. You must stay inside the house and wait for your parents. But I'm sure mother would want the best for me. Perhaps while I await her, I could go to inspect Sophia's school. Emily, you must stay inside and await your parents' return. But, don't you trust me? Have I ever tried to lead you astray? No, Lilica. I was just thinking that perhaps it truly is beginning to be safe. Look, I've brought today's newspaper. Do you see the title? The Plague Runs Rampant. Put any notion of leaving or studying away for now, yes. As soon as it is truly safe to do so, then we shall. And you'll be reunited with your family. For now, it's just you and me. Thanks, Lilica. I'm glad you're here. As am I. Ah, the towel. Let me go retrieve it. Go ahead. Alone, Lilica stared at the bathroom door, which was shut tight. Behind it, she could hear the water running. She could picture Sophia's body slowly shedding its layers of clothes before she stepped into the hot water. That image was enough to force her hand. How dare you be hot, even naked! <laughs> the running water sloshed into the steel-lined wooden tub. A state-of-the-art system. No one else in the country owned anything like it. But how many years ago was that? How long had it been? <laughs> yep, guys, the pink towel. Everything is about to end now. All because of the pink towel. <laughs> I don't know if Sophia casually pulled out her phone from wherever she keeps it. Yeah. That would actually probably scare away what's her face as well, Lilica. Too bad it's broken. It would just look like a hunk of plastic. But even then, like a hunk of plastic, like shaped that way and like with the glass on it it would be quite surprising they think it would just like be a piece of art or something but how many years ago was that 
How long had it been? Sophia leaned over the sink, her bone-white knuckles grasping either side of it. Her back was turned to Lilica. If she wanted, she could stab her in the back and be over with it. No. No. I need to keep Amelie's trust. She needs to leave, or go somewhere she'll never be found. Or... do it herself. Sophia lifted her face to the mirror, then froze. Her eyes bore into it, as if she was seeing something she shouldn't. Lilica stared back, unmoving. Leave. Leave already. Who? One step at a time, maintaining eye contact through the mirror, Lilica kept cl crept closer. Closer and closer until the two were nearly touching. Why do you want to take Amelie away? Can't you see that she loves me? Me. Not you. Your words are poisoning this household. If you don't leave, I'll kill you. I'll have no choice. I'll just kill you. Who are you? Sophia whipped around, but her eyes didn't focus on any spot in particular. To her, Lilica was gone. <laughs> oh, better save this one too. Lilica walked towards oh, Lilica walked towards an open cabinet and pulled something out. The metal of the razor glinted. Lilica raised it up and she moved to stand over the bath. With ease, the metal cut into her arm. Drops of blood fell into the water, leaving tiny splashes where they connected. Blood still runs in my veins after all. Sophia rushed past Lilica, desperate to turn off the overflowing water before she froze again. So it is blood? Yeah! She sliced her own wrists and bled into the water just to fuck with her. That is metal as fuck. <laughs> Sophia, she just threatened you, girl? Yeah, but she didn't hear that. Remember, she only saw the lips moving. She had no idea what it said. Imagine if she showed a picture from London Pride. If only the phone worked. If the phone worked, this would have been over so quickly. A woman in 2020 with her phone on her, she would have flipped open her phone within like five minutes of meeting Amelie, taken some selfies with her, and Amelie would have been like, what the hell is this? Are you a witch? <laughs> it's like she's projecting her feelings for the mom onto Emily. A little bit, but they're definitely not like romantic in nature. She's definitely just trying to protect her. Which is cool. It'd be a viral TikTok. Oh dear God. <laughs> Did she use cast a spell? Yeah, Lilica and apparently the mother helped cast a spell. Although the mother may not actually have been part of it. That may have been Lilica's imagination. We'll find out. The water was a deep, dark red. Her slender fingers dipped into the liquid as if she were entranced. One layer at a time, she stripped bare, her expression hollow and lifeless. Lilica watched as her naked body stepped into the crimson water. Why not just end it here? You're scared, aren't you? Just sink down. Accept your fate. Accept it. A knock came from the door. Lilica's widened eyes went from the door to the young woman in the bath, then back again. Excuse me. I'm coming in. Lilica ducked behind the folding screen just in time to hear the door open. Oh, you mean Lilica cast a spell just now with the blood? It could be considered a spell. I think it was more just like a compulsion kind of thing. So just like a, almost like a possession kind of thing that a spirit did. Like she didn't have to draw anything. She didn't have to like say any words like she did with the last spell. So I think it was just like, yeah, just her compelling her to get into the water. And then she was probably going to either get her to slit her own wrists or to just drown in the water. Sophia? I knocked but didn't hear a reply. I brought you a towel. She didn't wait any longer. As Amelie stepped into the room to set down the towel, Lilica quietly dashed out into the hall. 
Yeah, it would have been real awkward if Amelie caught Lilica staring at a naked bathing Sophia. <laughs> would have been like, no, Amelie, it's not what you think. I, I was just coaxing her into the bath. Everything's fine. <laughs> the towel. There we go. <laughs> Before Lilica had a chance to even catch her breath, the bathroom door opened once again, and Amelie stepped out with flushed cheeks. It's a good thing that Amelie ended up having so much gay panic that she couldn't even look in the room. Just as soon as she saw the naked bath of so the uh, bath, the naked back of Sophia, she ran away. <laughs> Without that, that would have been a real bad misunderstanding. <laughs> Did you tell her that she must depart? No. I is something the matter? Are you feeling unwell? Your face is bright red. S Sophia will stay until she decides to leave. Did you see? Sophia's back. She won't leave. I won't have her be apart from me. I wish to trace my fingers along the ridges of that back. Damn it, Lilica. Pretty much that. That's what's going through her head right now. <laughs> No. No. She must leave now. Tonight. No longer. As you wish. I'm sorry, Lilica, but... I... I believe it's only fair after she traveled so far. And she is my friend. That woman. That siren. Look what she does to Aunt Amelie. I'll finish preparing the guest room. Let me come help, Sophia. When you're done in there, you can come to your room. On the other side of the door, Sophia's voice came in return. Okay. Thanks, Emily. Oh, yo. Hey. Hey. <laughs> what is up, Piotan? Happy birthday. It's, yeah. It's officially your birthday in some time zones. Happy birthday. You know what? Everybody in chat, let's do this. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Pio Chang. Happy birthday to you. Hope you had a good day, buddy. I can't wait to do things tomorrow. That sounded weird. I can't wait to stream together tomorrow. I'm very excited for everything you have planned. Happy birthday. Between darkness and tragedy. What is more delicious? Maybe a combination of the both. Like dark chocolate with a little tragedy. A little dark chocolate tragedy. That sounds delicious to me. But I hope you guys had fun on the birthday countdown. Happy birthday. Um, I'm playing Bug Fables tomorrow for that. <laughs> and then, yeah, I'm looking forward to all the streams we're going to do together. But what's up, Pio Chan? What's up, Scythekicks? Um, if you don't want to be spoiled from this game, feel free to head out. That's completely cool. We thought Bug Fables was this today. Nah, because I wanted to do it on uh, Pio Chan's birthday on my time zone. <laughs> so we're doing it tomorrow, the same day that the actual like celebrations are going on. Um, but this is a game called Amelie. Sorry, it took me a moment. <laughs> this is a game called Amelie, which was made by the same studio that made uh, A Date with Death. So it's another visual novel, but this one is a dark psychological fantasy visual novel. And it's Yuri. Um... So far, I'll give you like the premise without spoiling anything in case you guys ever want to play this alone because so far it's been incredible. It's like a bit like Fada Morgana, but really condensed. There's been a lot of twists and a lot of darkness. Same studio, this is going to be hype. It's been incredible. The artwork's been amazing. The music's been amazing. And while we've been guessing some of the twists, there's been so many that surprised us. So the basic story is this girl on the right, this beautiful, gorgeous, doll-like creature here is named Amelie. She's a 19-year-old girl who's been locked inside the house for an un unknown amount of time during the pandemic. And this is her maid, I guess, kind of childhood friend slash maid, Lilica, who's been looking after her. And suddenly her pen pal, Sophia, has come to visit. And so there's a lot of like a love triangle kind of situation going on and a lot of like panic and fighting between them. And also there's a lot of mysteriousness going on. That's all I will tell you without any spoilers. It's been incredible so far. If it sticks the landing, it's maybe one of my favorite stories in a long time. <laughs> but yeah, if you want to ditch out and not get spoiled at all, completely fine, head out. The game is actually really cheap and it's on sale right now, by the way. I should have said that at the beginning of the stream. Uh, for the next five days, I think it stops on February the 4th. 
it's 50% off. So it's down to something like $2 or something on Steam. And it's been incredible. It's so good. Um, yeah. <laughs> on sale? Yeah, it's been on sale. I, I unfortunately bought it like a week ago, so I didn't get it on sale. <laughs> But yeah, no, it's on sale and it's pretty short. Most people finish it within two hours, but obviously since we're doing voice acting and discussing and things, we've already been going for what? Oh my God, three and a half hours. Um, so yeah, we're coming towards the end now though. We're doing our third run now. Each run gives you more information. It's one of those ones like near and a couple well there's a bunch of games like that but where like each ending you get gives you more storyline. so yeah, it's so worth it. It's been so good. Art for this game looks so cool. It is. I love their eyes. We were talking about at the beginning. Right now, they're like super shadowy. But when they're in the light, like their eyes, they have these nice little pink lines around them. They light up. She's got the like dead red eyes, all dull. Like everything's perfect. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it. If you're sticking around, feel free to stick around. We're going to continue the story. But thank you so much for the raid, Pio-chan. I hope you have an amazing birthday. I hope tomorrow's streams go awesome. I can't wait to see them. And thank you so much. Oh yeah, and you do play different POVs each time as well. So it's like the same story, but three different times. So yeah, we are on our third now. But it's like the same one day, like three different times, time loop kind of thing. And so it unlocks like different POV, different parts of the story. And yeah, a bunch of different memories and stuff. So we're getting like the full story now. It's been interesting. <laughs> and yeah, I won't spoil anything for now in case you guys want to leave, but we're about to dive back into it. So feel free to head out or get comfy. It's just story time today. Okay. Thank you for the raid. Thank you for being his sidekicks. Thank you for P.O. Have a lovely day. The guest bedroom was freshly cleaned with new linen on the bed and a lit lantern beside it. Fortunately, Lilica had prepared the room well in advance. You did a fine job of preparing the room so far. Thank you, Lilica. Anything for you. I was thinking, tomorrow if the rain has cleared up, we could open the greenhouse again and have morning tea there. It's been so long since we last used it. <laughs> and there's the final crack in reality. Oh dear God. By now, a dozen cracks stemmed from a dozen other cracks, filling the entirety of Lyrica's world, Lilica's world. At any moment, even a breeze would make everything collapse. Didn't we already speak of this? You cannot leave the house. But surely the greenhouse would be safe. No one else uses it, and it's only a few steps from the back door. It is unsafe. You know this. It's gotten into you. Is it because of your friend? I, I just thought it'd be nice to at least sit in the sun. Then you may sit by the window in the dining hall. Is it really so unsafe that even taking a foot outdoors would be dangerous? Yes. Um... Sophia, I see you're done with the bath. The look across her arms over her chest. Anger already rising in her chest. Yeah, this is the third girl. This is the pen pal who has appeared in the mansion to show up and be like, Hey, what's up? <laughs> Were you talking about the greenhouse? Yes. Did you see it when you arrived? I did, but it looks as if the plants inside had died. Oh, that's impossible. It's barely been any time at all since the gardeners left. I'm sure the plants inside are more sturdy than that. Well, even if they have died, maybe we could go in and replant some things tomorrow. How wonderful. Have you not heard a word I said? It's unsafe to do so. Uh, oh. Well, don't be such a spoil sport. I think it'd be perfectly fine. Oh, it's getting late now, so I'll leave you to retire. If you need anything, my room is just upstairs on the left. Good night, Sophia. Poison dripped from her voice as Lilica left the guest room behind. Oh, now we get to see what she did in these moments. Oh, yeah, she's really losing it. The greenhouse is a night metaphor. Whatever came before might be long since dead, but these two could still have an opportunity. Yeah, depending on how this ends... Like, if we get a dark ending, it's, yeah, everything will remain dead, trapped here forever, just rotting. Meanwhile, yeah, if they manage to break the curse, if they manage to set Amelie free, there's always a chance that they can rebuild, replant things, bring life back into the life. Bring life back into the life? Bring life back into the house. 
The house had a heart, and that heart was beating to the same rhythm as Lilica's. It was frenzied, on the verge of losing control. It echoed through her head, through the hall, through to every corner of the building. Like Morse code, it was as if the house itself was telling her to do something. Get rid of her. Get out the disease. Protect Amelie. She bit her thumb, pacing back and forth. Amelie will be upset. But Amelie doesn't need anyone else. She has me. She won't be upset for long. And she'll forget. That's right. She'll forget. Her breath hitched in her throat. What do I do? What do I do? She just won't die. My lady, what am I supposed to do? At that moment, Lilica put her ear to Amelie's door, listening intently. How about coming away with me for a while? Away? Outside of the house? What about the sickness? Away? Outside of the house? It's okay now. You'll be okay. You could come and stay at my house. I could show you around my school. You don't have to go through an arranged marriage if you don't want to. Licker's hands boiled into fists at her side. You would do that for me? You're my dearest friend, Emily. And... I... I actually... You think you can take her away from me? Lilica's bald fist slammed against the door, each one set a pain shooting up her arm all the way to the shoulder. Inside, the voices went quiet. Ooh, shit, which one's... Oh, God. We're aiming for a bad end first. I guess... Allow her fate? Because we were talking about severing her fate. So I guess allow is the bad end. Deny her fate. Yeah, allow her fate should be like... Letting her stay trapped in this house, I guess. We'll see. She doesn't belong to you. Lilica? Finally, Lilica snapped out of her daze. At some point, Amelie had left the guest bedroom and was standing a short distance away from her, looking worried. Instantly, she took a deep breath and composed herself. But her heart still beat as loud as a drum, and the cracks that seemed to be centered around Amelie were still spreading at an increasing rate. It's late. You should retire to your bedroom. Yes. I shall. It's nice having someone else around, isn't it? I feel as if the manor is coming back alive. I hope we see mother and father soon. I'm sure we will. Shall I see you to bed? Yes, please. The hallway was darkened with only a few sconces and candles lit along the way. And Lilica relished in it. On a night like this, long ago in the past, she had sealed her fate along with Amelie's. Yeah, okay, we did want to allow her fate. That's, yeah, her fate is fucked up. <laughs> and tonight, she would seal the fate of yet another person. Oh, uh, Sophia, you were too cute. I'm sorry. You tried to steal the baby girl. Now you must die. The two rose up the grand staircase side by side. Moonlight drifted in through the stained glass window. This seemed to be the only place free from those cracks. If she squinted, she could almost see it. Almost hear it. That head hitting each step with a loud thunk. Those eyes would never open again to look upon a woman with scorn. That hand would never be raised to leave a mark on pristine skin. The sound filled her with joy, and the thought of repeating that fateful night left her footsteps light with excitement. <laughs> Time for another murder! <laughs> Lilica, may I ask you a question? Certainly. Have you ever heard of a woman loving another woman, as a woman would love a man? <laughs> Don't twist the knife. It didn't work out for her. Where did you hear about such a thing? 
Nowhere in particular. It was just a thought that came into my mind. I think you're overtired because of all the excitement, Amelie. I think it's best for you to get some rest. Yes, all right. Good night, Lyrica. Lilica. God, why does my brain keep doing that? Lilica, who was seated on the edge of Amelie's bed, stood with unsteady feet. Standing in the doorway, she looked back at Amelie. As her hand rested against the door, a sudden pang went through Lilica's cold heart. She's important to you, isn't she? Oh, wait. She's important to you, isn't she? Of course. Her words have always been something that have brightened my day. Even if she were to leave. Leave? <laughs> well, I believe she'll eventually leave, Lilica. There's little choice, really. All I can do is hope that she'll visit again. I see. Good night, Emily. Sleep well. Whatever Emily said in reply was lost in the darkness as Lilica stepped out of the bedroom. Driving the knife in more? Yeah. Especially since she'd been stealing the letters from her. Deciding that no, 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 those weren't for Emily. Those were for me. For my lady, of course. As she left the room, she noticed it. A dark shadow stalking through the night, slowly creeping through the hall. Lilica frowned. My lady, you must forgive me. I've rarely seen Emily so happy. But she cannot stay. No. No, she must leave immediately. And I will make her. She said she never saw them. Wait, what? <laughs> the Lulu is the Salulu? Hell yeah. Just live a lie. Then you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> she stood on the grand staircase, outlined in the moon's glow. Sophia, you can't see me, can't hear me, but you can sense me, can you not? The shadow paused, her eyes going up the staircase. There she saw a shadow warp strangely across the carpeted steps. You will leave this place immediately, and you will never come back. Lily? Ka? The blonde girl pushed a vase from a step, and it crashed to the ground below, smashing into tiny pieces. Sophia jumped in response, a shiver running down her spine. I won't warn you again. Leave. Slowly and unsteadily, Sophia crept up the stairs until her face was almost close enough to touch Lilica's. Is that you? Lilica? In a small motion, Lilica dropped something from her sleeve. It clattered to the ground at Sophia's feet. She gripped at her shirt even more tightly. This is your last chance. I don't care whether you live or die. This is only a favor to Amelie. As if her nerves had finally gotten the best of her, Sophia turned on the spot and ran, back down the staircase and into the dark hole. Maybe she actually runs away this time. <laughs> Maybe she gets to live. That, that might be nice. <laughs> Just woke up from a nightmare. I'm glad Fuchan is still streaming. What up, Michaela? Keep in mind. Yeah, they, um, they're probably entering a new nightmare. She's giving her a choice. Yeah, she's getting her to just run away. That's nice. <laughs> Lilica followed behind her, slamming doors and knocking things onto the ground. Sophia, too scared to even turn around, ran as fast as her legs would take her until she reached the front door. Instead of being locked and closed up tightly, it sat open as if waiting for her to leave. She didn't waste even a single second more. And she was gone. She's gone. <laughs> gone. I did it. <laughs> Amelie, I did it. You did what? Uh oh. Oh shit, she got caught in the act. Did you? This isn't what it looks like, Amelie. Please, listen to me. Did you force her to leave? N no. 
I... I'm going after her. The liquor jumped in front of the door, arms spread wide. You can't! Why? It's unsafe to do so. You belong here. With me. Together. I had enough of this and that being unsafe, Lilica. Either you move to the side or any friendship I thought we had is gone. Lilica wavered. Her arms, which had held such conviction, began to droop. I've always done what's best for you. Have I not? All of this time? I not remained at your side? Please, trust me. I only did what I had to do. So this is what you've decided. Don't come near me again. Emily turned her back on the blonde-haired woman, dropped to her knees as she watched her leave. Emily. Good night, Lilica. Oh, shit. This is a really, I, I guess, sad ending, unless Emily does actually get to leave. I'd imagine if Emily leaves right now, she's just going to turn into a corpse, though. Or just, like, cease to exist, but damn. Darkness filled every inch of her brain. A voice screamed out from inside her, mocking her. This isn't right. My lady, this isn't right. Didn't I do the right thing? Let her go. I did her a favor. But Emily is upset. The lady offered her no answer. Is this punishment? For not doing as you wished? Sophia should have died. She should have died. Should have died. Died. Now she's alive. And Emily is angry. In that dark room, all alone, Lilica clutched onto something. Something she kept hidden in the closet, away from any prying eyes. She held it tighter. Its green dress fell apart at her touch. Oh, she kept the corpse! Oh my god. That's fucked up. Can't she make this all better again? Can't we make her forget? Her forehead fell down and rested against the other person's shoulder. Wait, where did she say she kept it? <laughs> Sorry, that's... <laughs> she kept it in the closet. She hid her lesbian lover in the closet. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> well, she brought it out of the closet finally. That's good for her. Took a couple hundred years, but... It's all out now. Can't you make this all better again? Can't we make her forget? Her forehead fell down and rested against the other person's shoulder. They remained silent, as they had been for many long years. I'm sorry. I'll make it all better. We can make her forget, can't we? Can't we start again? Just like before. We, we can start again. Lilica stood, placing the skeleton of a lady carefully back in the closet. Keep waiting for me. I promise. I'll make everything right again. And then we can come out of the closet together. Let's start again, Emily. You and me. Forever. Are they actually... Yep, they're resetting time. She can do that, apparently. Wow, this curse is stronger than I thought it was. Lilica walked into the room, holding a tray carefully in her hands. On it sat a teapot and two cups. Emily, I've brought the tea. Excellent, it smells delicious. Emily smiled brightly, filling Lilica with happiness in return. Lilica, may I ask you something? Horse. I found this letter by the front door. Do you know where it came from? Emily held out an envelope. The front was blank. How strange. 
Perhaps it was delivered here by accident. The looker took it from her and opened it. At the bottom, it was signed. Yours always, Sophia. Yes, it seems to be for someone else. I'll mail this back, yes? Thank you, Lilica. I appreciate it. Finished with her tea, Amelie stood first and left the room. Lilica smiled. From under the table, she pulled out a stack of envelopes that seemed to match the one Amelie had given to her. And all at once, she threw them into the fireplace. Goodbye, Sophia. Achievement unlocked. Your letters. Now a smoldering pile of ash. Oh, man. If she doesn't get her lesbian love, no one does. This is BS, man. <laughs> oh, and Sophia, if there was no nothing written on the envelope, that means Sophia came back herself as well. Sophia didn't even just send that letter to the address. She straight up came here and hand delivered it, hoping that Amelie would get the letter and be like, oh, yeah, this house is kind of crazy. Maybe I should leave. Oh, at least Sophia survived. And we don't even get to hear what her final letter was. Yeah, Sophia's alive. She just lost the love of her life. And Amelie's stuck here forever with Lilica. <sighs> That's a terrible ending. Side Lilica, one out of three. Goodbye, Sophia. It was good. I liked that. Okay. Do we have to, um... I think... I think maybe starting from the beginning and, like, changing everything, like, severing the fate, is probably going to be what changes everything. That'll probably be ending three out of three. So I'm just going to do deny her fate first. I'm not meant <laughs> to blue towel for sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't think the towel color mattered. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> How is Sophia alive and able to deliver it? But Amelie is dead. Amelie's a ghost. Um, they, Amelie and Lilica have been here for a couple hundred years. Um, if you missed bits of the stream earlier, essentially, yeah, a lot of murder happened. A lot of blood sacrifices happened. They've been here for a couple hundred years since Scarlet Fever. When she talks about the plague, she means Scarlet Fever. Meanwhile, yes, yeah, Sophia's from modern days. When she talks about the plague, she means the pandemic, COVID. So yeah, very different. Maybe there's one dedicated postman who walks to this mansion, but it literally said the envelope had nothing on it. The envelope had nothing. So Sophia came here herself. Sophia came here and just like ditched the envelope in. Yeah, but how did Sophia meet them and not question it? Um, you're going to need to watch the beginning of the stream. Essentially, it was all very like cryptic. Everything was like covered up pretty damn perfectly to the point where... It didn't, it seemed odd, but it didn't seem dangerous until death started happening. <laughs> okay, let's deny her fate this time and see what happens. She doesn't belong to you. Lilica? Finally, Lilica snapped out of her daze. At some point, Amelie had left the guest bedroom and was one standing a short distance away from her, looking worried. Instantly, she took a deep breath and composed herself. But her heart still beat as loud as a drum, and the cracks that seemed to be centered around Amelie were still spreading at an increasing rate. It is late. You should retire to your bedroom. Yes, I shall. It's nice having someone else around, isn't it? I feel as if the manor is coming back to life. Hope we see mother and father soon. I'm sure we will. Shall I see you to your bed? Yes, please. <laughs> towel ending? Maybe, if I choke her to death with the towel. <laughs> the hallway was darkened with only a few sconces and candles lit along the way. And Lilica relished in it. On a night like this, long ago in the past, she'd sealed her fate along with Amelie's. And tonight, she would seal the fate of yet another person. Oh, yep. <laughs> She gonna die. <laughs> God damn it. That's a bed tryst. No, it is not. She wasn't into Amelie. She's into Amelie's mommy. Very different. The two rose up the grand staircase side by side. Moonlight drifted in through the stained glass window. It seemed to be the only place free from those cracks. If she squinted, she could almost see it. Almost hear it. 
that head beating each step with a loud thunk. Those eyes would never open again to look upon a woman with scorn. That hand would never be raised to leave a mark. Okay, this is all actually exactly the same. <laughs> I'm going to save real quick and then I'm going to try the skip button and hope it doesn't skip the new stuff. Skip. Did that... Is this new? No, this is still exactly the same. There we go. Now we're at something new. Tomorrow, everything will be better. So sleep well. Lilica steeled her resolve. Stepped out of the bedroom. She first went back to the guest room and put her ear to the door. No sounds could be heard from behind it. Then she noticed something. Someone else walking down the hallway unsteadily. Lilica followed closely behind. Through the darkness, the other person was only a shadow, their features obscured and hidden. The sound of her light steps on the old wooden floor beds mixed in with the rain that was still raging just outside those walls. The kitchen was... by the stairwell? <laughs> Hope Fuchan plays Otome games someday. I literally did one earlier this week. It was a sponsored stream. <laughs> That's right. By the stairwell. But you aren't going to the kitchen, are you? Hand painted portraits were lined up in rows on either side of the hall. It seemed as if their eyes moved to follow Lilica's every move. Sophia stared up the grand staircase. She seemed as if she were entranced with each and every step. They're waiting for you. Those two people. They're calling for you. Go on. Go to them. Sophia's unsteady hand reached for the banister. Her ascent was slow and careful. Her eyes fixed on that door. That special door. That room where the maid had met her end and her most hated person rested beside her. A room where she'd made a promise to the person she loved. Lilica needed only to reach into the kitchen to procure the item that was waiting for her had been waiting for her all this time since Sophia had arrived. A knife with dark aged stains over the blade and hilt. Long had it sat there festering, waiting, desperate for more, more blood. Like a hunter stalking her prey, the looker followed behind Sophia, the knife gripped tightly in her hand. The two stood side by side, staring at the door to the master bedroom. It was shut tight, as it had been for countless years. Sophia trembled. With a smile, Lilica reached over to give her arm a squeeze. Go on. You want to know the truth, don't you? You can hear the voices. I'll allow you this much. With a careful motion, Sophia pushed the door open. All at once, Countless memories came flooding back, of love, hope, of the future, and of death. Sophia disappeared into the dark room, the only light being a candle she carried in her head. A family of mice ran out from the floor and down the stairs. The taste of freedom was oh so sweet for them. Who were the footsteps in the bedroom? Yeah, either... I think it was actually the father rather than the mother. Possibly. Maybe his spirit's trapped up here. Or maybe it was the original Lilica, the original maid. Don't know. But if anything else, like the mother appeared after that as well and stood on the table. So maybe it was the mother waking up. I just don't see why she would have come from the master bedroom. This is a dark Yuri game? Yeah, it is. Does she gatekeep their voices and memories? Um, I think she just... I think just as a spirit, she's able to influence things. It's not quite full body possession, but yeah, she's able to make people speak and she's able to make people like to convince people to do things. I think it was the mother coming downstairs. That's also, yeah, a possibility. Because then she, yeah, did appear in the kitchen and climbed up on the table. More quiet than the mice that had escaped, Lilica followed Sophia into the room. Wax stripped from the burning candle onto the wooden floor. She trembled as she reached a shaky hand to the bed. And at the same moment, 
Lilica swung the door closed behind them, and the room plunged into darkness. But that darkness didn't matter to Lilica. What to she who knew this room like the back of her hand? Emily? Is that you? Emily isn't here to save you. Sophia's eyes searched the room to no avail. Um, I'm sorry I came in here after you asked me not to. Oh, I'll just go now, okay? The pale-haired woman fell back onto the bed before she had a moment to react. The yellowed bones of the lord of the manor and the maid rattled underneath her, flesh long deteriorated. Lilica smiled. How long has it been since I last saw myself truly? Uh, what? <laughs> it looks like we're finally meeting, Sophia. With a leg on either side of her, Lilica held Sophia down to the bed, still smiling. She tried to squirm, to escape, to run free. Her eyes were filled with terror. <laughs> you won't take her away from me. Wait. Oh, it's just a necklace. I thought it actually showed the slice. Sophia's scream became a muffled cry before finally extinguishing fully. <laughs> Finally. My lady, did you see? Are you watching? I've saved her. I've saved Amelie. Only when Lilica tried to stand did she notice it. An aged bone poking out from her stomach. Dark liquid dripped out from around it. With a slight frown, Lilica pulled it free. Ugh. It's okay. It'll be okay. Lilica closed her eyes. I'm just a little tired. I'll just... sleep for a bit. Her eyes grew heavy. So heavy. So heavy that the only option would be to sleep at this very moment. Holy shit! She died too! Either her, like, being pushed around the bed, or maybe, maybe, Sophia actually did it. Grabbed one of the bones, one of the rib bones, and stabbed it into her. Sophia got revenge and killed her too. Or just in wrestling along the bed with Sophia, she ended up dying. That's crazy. How could you do that? Lilica. Why? 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 Would you hurt um, me like that? Why? Did you kill Amelie? <sighs> her eyes opened with a start, her heart racing faster than it ever raced before. The room seemed to be spinning, and her head throbbing. Then she saw it. Lying on the bed between the two skeletons was the body of a young woman. A young woman with long, brown hair. It was Amelie rather than Sophia that she killed? Her dress was stained red. Am Amelie? No. That's not... That's not... Who did this? Who? Sophia? Amelie? Wake up! Wake! She blinked, and the young woman below her disappeared. In her place, Sophia appeared. The room was still dark, but even a drop of sunlight peeked through the covered windows. <sighs> what a cruel trick of the eyes. 
Interesting. Okay. One second. I need to go back for a moment and see something. Who does this look like? It doesn't seem to match, like, any of the previous sprites. It vaguely looks like Sophia, I guess? But no, it has longer hair. Oh, it's her! It's Lilica. It's Lilica looking back at her. That's interesting. Yeah, her hair's huge and down to the floor. So maybe this is like a representation of the curse kind of thing. Um, another thing that I wanted to point out was when they did the whole, like, the rib... I thought the rib had been stabbed into her and she had died. But it sounds like it wasn't that and she was just imagining all of it. So now I'm wondering, is that a reference to like Adam and Eve? Adam having to rip out one of his ribs to create Eve? That's like the idea of like the original sin. And how women have been like accused of being evil since biblical times. Even though that's all fucking bullshit. Women are always lesser than because they were created to be man Adam's partner. Maybe. Lika also sounds like Lilith. Ooh, good point. God damn, nice one. And we have got like that image of the stained glass window full of seraphim and cherubs and shit. She stepped out from the master bedroom just as Amelie did the same right next door. Good morning, Lilica. I was just on my way to see if Sophia had awakened yet. Emily. Hmm? Sophia disappeared during the night. I believe she went to the same place your parents went. What? That cannot be right. Don't run, Emily. Emily dashed down the hall and knocked quickly on the door to the guest bedroom. It fell open with no resistance. Inside, the bedding was disheveled and her luggage was strewn about. This... It's not true. She wouldn't just... Just leave without saying goodbye. Deary me. I'm sorry. I told you it was a bad idea for anyone to visit, didn't I? <laughs> Lilica, this isn't fair. I thought... <laughs> she said we would... There, there. Come here. Lilica wrapped her thin arms around the young woman gently. Patting her on the back. See, you shouldn't depend on anyone else. I'm here. I won't ever leave you. Emily clutched, clutched at her. Tears already falling from her eyes. We'll be together forever. <laughs> oh, that is not great. Oh, dear God. As a native Hebrew speaker, Sophia contains the word sof, which means end in Hebrew. Interesting. Oh, and I guess this could be seen as their own little private garden of Eden. For these two, not actually for Sophia herself, who came. Shit, okay. So we've got Lilith. We've got Amelie, which would be Adam. And then we've got Lilith being replaced, essentially, by sof, which I guess would be Eve. So yeah. Lilith being thrown away despite being the first woman. Being cast out and made into one of the first demons. Sophia equals Seraphim? That works too. <laughs> it's getting docky docky in here. Yeah, everything's getting glitchy. Let's go. <laughs> Shit's gonna be painful. Bum, ba -da -bum. Oh, and that links to the, go the greenhouse as well. The greenhouse being a garden which is currently dead and corrupted. It's like a twisted version of the Garden of Eden, which was supposed to be for just the two of them to stay together forever. Oof. Sophia could be seen as the serpent tempting Amelie out of the garden. Yeah. Possibly, yeah. Giving her the apple of wisdom as well. Giving her the wisdom that, no, time has moved a lot. And by the way, women are allowed to love women now, so. <laughs> Come. Sin, Amelie. <laughs> well, new ending. Let's see how this goes. Amelie froze in Lilica's arms before pulling back completely. What's... What's happened to your face? Oh, here comes the music box again. My face? Lilica's hands went to her face instantly. Is something wrong? Amelie's expression had darkened. 
The mouth shut firmly in a line. My face? Pulling a small mirror from her pocket, Lilica finally saw it. A black void of nothingness where her face should have been. She turned and ran, down the hall and up the stairs, before Lilica could even call out after her. The void seemed to seep out from her very skin, oozing, leaking out from, from the wound at her stomach. That, that, disease-ridden hag. Emily, wait, it's okay. Everything will be all... Lilica's hand that reached out towards Amelie fell to her side. At the top of the staircase, in this manor in the middle of a field, far out in the countryside, Amelie stood in an open doorway. A doorway that hadn't been opened to her in more years than she could truly imagine. And inside, she witnessed a sight she never should have. Her eyes hollow, and her body petrified. So, fear, Emily, this isn't, stay away from me. The long brown hair cascaded out around her as Emily rushed into her bedroom, slamming the door behind her. Lilica rushed up the staircase, banging her fists against her locked door. Emily, Emily. This is all a misunderstanding. She was... She wanted to hurt you. I've... Saved you. She fell to her knees, her fist still pounding on the wooden door. A muffled sob came from within. Then silence. The void surrounded Lilica, flowing from her wound and wrapping itself around her body. She curled into a ball. The sound of a chair hitting the ground inside the bedroom <laughs> was the last sound Lilica heard before her eyes closed and she became one with the void. I got an achievement that said one with the void. <laughs> Your screams will howl here forever. <laughs> Holy fuck. That's a bad ending. What happens to Amelie in this ending? I mean, Sophia's dead. Amelie knows about the murder and possibly about the curse and now Lilica's gone and become one with the void oh dear god sighed Lilica two out of three one with the void did Emily kill herself did it suggest that the sound of a chair oh she did kill herself and that's why everything became pure void Without Amelie, the curse was gone. Yeah, that makes sense. Jesus, I didn't even pay attention to the sound of the chair falling that much. I was thinking, oh, she just threw something around. Jesus, good reading into it, guys. Well, now we have to go for the huge long ending. <laughs> we have to start from the beginning. Gonna be a lot of skipping in this one. Let's see the final ending. Hopefully it'll be a true ending, and hopefully a happy ending. <laughs> Skip! Wait. Yeah, okay, it stops me at Sever the Fate. That's fantastic. Okay. I'm always having fun when we're together, Emily. Sever her fate. Ah, I see. Are you jealous? Hurry not, my dear friend. Of course our friendship means just as much to me. I value you greatly. This is not the voice I was doing for her. What the fuck? <laughs> Just as much? Indeed. Come along, Lilica. Let us prepare tea. Emily, I have something to say to you. You're my very best friend. Did you know that? I feel the same way towards you, Lilica. And as such, I feel the need to be truthful with you. You appreciate the truth don't you? Of course. I trust your judgment very much. Is something the matter? Oh, shit. Well, okay, we're going to have to break down. We're going to save this on number nine. We're going to have to break down all these lies one by one, huh? Absence of choice. 
I'll go with the top one. Your mother contacted me. She believes they'll be able to return shortly. Oh, Lilica, this is wonderful news. Indeed. She was very excited for me to pass on her message to you, but... <laughs> what about the third one? Well, she wasn't pleased to hear that you had someone visiting without her permission. Oh, what she'd be delighted to hear that I had invited a friend. Your entire existence is a lie. <laughs> Existences, that one sounds safe. Of course I pleaded with her that Sophia was a dear friend, but she wouldn't listen. I see. Did she say when she would return? No, but it seems to be soon. Then I'll send Sophia away like normal tomorrow. I can't exactly force her out in the storm, can I? Why not? Lilica. Naturally, I'm just teasing. Of course it wouldn't be right to send her away at a time like this. I'm glad to hear that we've come to an agreement. How pleased I am to know that Mother will return soon. Let's go prepare tea, shall we? Oh, shit. Okay, so this is the same as before, so skip. Should I read all of these again, or should I ignore them? This is an interesting question. Let's, let's read them again, just in case. I think knowing all the information is a good idea. Skip. Skip. Oh, here we go. Wait, this is new? Why is this new? Oh, okay, yeah, because this is influenced by the last decision. You say... Okay, let me scroll up to see what... Sophia says it's now safe to travel. Yeah, okay. This is just the same conversation they had, but now... This. You say Mother is returning soon. It should be perfectly fine, don't you think? And what if she lies? She wouldn't do that. Sophia's a kind and good-natured person. She would not bring any danger to us. Did you know that Sophia... Did you know this... Oh, this is all the same again. It was just that one line of dialogue. Okay, we have to sever her fate again. Let's do it! Lilica walked towards an open cabinet and pulled something out. The metal of the razor glinted. Lilica raised it up and she moved to stand over the bath. With ease, the metal cut into her arm. Drops of blood fell into the water, leaving tiny splashes where they connected. Blood still runs in my veins after all. Sophia rushed past Lilica. Desperate to turn off the overflowing water before she froze once again. I wonder where this changes, because so far this is still the same. The water was a deep, dark red. Her slender fingers dipped into the liquid as if she were entranced. Okay, let's skip again and see where it takes us. We definitely kicked Sever her fate, so... Oh! It changes from when she says accept it, and we get... I'm fine, CG. <laughs> okay. Okay. You can hear me now. Can't you? Oh, God. Is she going to just make her kill herself early? Why not just end it? You're scared. You're so terrified. You just came here to see your friend and look at what's happened to you. Emily? Yes. Emily. Emily. Where did you go? Where are you? Emily. I want to see you. Shut up. You don't deserve to speak her name. You don't deserve to be in her presence. Why don't you just give up? Just sink deep into the abyss. Isn't it inviting? Sink. Right. I should. Isn't the water so warm and inviting? That's right. Just sink down into it, and you'll finally be able to rest. Emily. You. Ah, oh, and Emily still saved her. 
And yeah, I was going to make the comments too. <laughs> that hand is going directly down. Yeah. Good for her. Good for her. She finally got to touch another woman. Wasn't the woman she wanted, but... <laughs> Damn it. Okay, now this is all the same. Oh. This time we don't get the option. We have to destroy her fate. Zero other option. She doesn't belong to you. Lilica? Finally, Lilica snapped out of her daze. Okay, so this is the same as before. Let's skip. And this is new, apparently. Good night, Amelie. Sleep away. Sleep well. Tomorrow, everything will be better. Lilica stepped out of the bedroom, shutting the door softly behind her. I, I really like this whole gimmick they've got as well. Like, the text when you've already read it before, when you've already been down that route, is like a little bit more gray. It's a little bit more dull. And then when it's actually new, it's like a bright, like vivid white. The hall was still dark with only a few candles to light her descent. It was quiet. Everything was asleep. The eyes that followed Lilica wherever she went were closed. The voices that crept up from between the floorboards were silent. Somehow, that only made Lilica more uncomfortable. That didn't matter. Not now. She knew where she was going and what she must do. She inched closer and closer to that door. The door that held behind it a sickness named Sophia. It was closed tight. Lilica raised her hand, almost as if to knock. But instead, pushed it open and entered. Did she ever come into the bedroom before? I don't think we've seen this in any of the routes. I think Sophia always wandered out by herself before. And then it was just a choice of if she went to the bedroom or the secret room. Just as the hallway was dark, so was the guest bedroom. The lantern had been blown out only a short while ago. No sound came from the bed. All was still. Lilica crept closer. Closer and closer. Until she stood over the bed like a shadow. The woman underneath her kept her eyes shut tight. Her face was calm and serene. Lilica couldn't help but smile as her hands wrapped around her fragile, pale neck. Oh, this is... Okay, this is the one where she finds the secret room. Because this is the one where she felt like there were snakes wrapping around her, choking her and, and like holding her down in bed. But then she manages to escape and goes upstairs and finds Amelie in the secret room. Okay. Her fingers dug into Sophia's flesh, so soft and easily bruised. Still, she didn't even shift. For some reason, that made Lilica even more furious. But as the young woman named Sophia laid as still as a statue, her mind wandered back to another that had once done the same in this very house. I knew it. The mother wasn't... The mother didn't hang herself, did she? Lilica choked her to death as well. Shit. A young woman who had left Amelie in Lilica's care, who had only wanted the best for her daughter, had only wanted for her to be happy. The problem is she'll leave. That's the problem, isn't it, my lady? The cold fingers slowly unwound from Sophia's throat. But she'll leave and take Amelie away. But if she stays, then won't Amelie be happy? Oh, so this is the same ending. This is the best ending we're going to get in this game. <laughs> is her murdering Sophia, but making her part of the curse and keeping her with them. Holy shit. She'll be so happy. Always. Forever. And then, maybe you can. Lilica withdrew from the room in a rush, her feet carrying her faster than they ever had before. Through the hall, up the stairs, and into Amelie's bedroom once again. The bed was warm and inviting. Lilica enveloped herself in that heat, wrapping her arms around Amelie tightly. So, Lilica? Do you want Sophia to stay here forever? What? 
She'll leave if we don't do anything about it. She'll leave, and you'll never hear from her again. That's not true, Lilica. She wouldn't just do that. My dear Amelie, I spoke to her just a moment ago. She was already packing up her bags. At that, Amelie rubbed at her eyes and sat up. It can't be true. Go check for yourself. Amelie, not wasting even a single moment, walked towards the door and peered down. From here, the moon was shining in through the stained glass just right, illuminating the hallway below. In the distance, a shadow could be seen moving. Lilica smiled. See? Lilica picked up a toy doll that, was that, that still sat on Amelie's bed, a relic from the past. Its straw-colored hair almost seemed to stand on end. Don't you want to keep her here? Don't you want her to be like this doll? Keep her here? Right. Your own special doll who will never leave you. Don't worry. I'll make it happen just for you. I'll make sure you're happy forever. Go down the hall to my room behind the bookcase. Wait for me. Emily's eyes had gazed over as if she wasn't truly there. She stood from the bed and picked up a small black case that rested on a nightstand before leaving the room. God damn. So they're not even going to make her part of the curse. They're just going to straight up kill her but preserve her body so she's like a doll. This is a much more wor much more horrible ending than I thought it was. <laughs> the manipulation, yeah, she's good at hypnotizing people or I guess influencing people. It wasn't long afterwards that Lilica followed in her footsteps, just in time to see Sophia ascending the staircase. She walked straight past Lilica who was smiling happily and approached Amelie's door. As she knocked, the door fell open with a groan. Emily, are you in here? Emily's waiting for you. Giving Mad Father? Yeah, this is exactly Mad Father right here. <laughs> From somewhere hidden in the darkness, a fragile melody filled the air. Almost instantly, Sophia turned toward the sound and began to follow. Lilica sped up enough to walk beside her. Isn't this great? You like Emily, don't you? Don't you want to make her happy? She'd be ecstatic for you to stay forever. So, why don't we help her to be happy forever? She offered no answer. They entered the room together. In the center of the room, surrounded by candles, Amelie sat. Her skirt fanned out around her. Spread out over the floor were piles of letters. Upon closer inspection, each was filled with words that had been crossed out and signed with, Yours, Marion. Amelie? Amelie, are you... awake? Her eyes were shut tight, yet her hands moved enough to play the sorrowful tune. Please, listen to me, Emily. Lilica is... She isn't... I'm not what? You're going to leave her, aren't you? Lilica shut the door, dragging the heavy lock across. In response, Sophia rushed backwards and tried the handle to no avail. Emily's eyes finally opened in place of a... Oh. Emily's eyes finally opened... In place of her usual golden eyes was a glare of deep red. Emily, snap out of it. Please snap out of it. You want to take her away? Emily, please. One at a time, the liquor blew out the candles on the floor. The room was plunged into darkness. Emily fell forward, the body exhausted. It's nice to meet you, Sophia. 
I'm sure we're going to have a fun time living together. Since you will be staying with us after all. Right. Okay, so we're doing the time walk again. Let's do the time warp again. But this time, we got triple. We got three girls living in the same house. Yay, she's going to be here forever. Uh, is she going to be like an actual toy? Like the toy that was on her bed? Or is she going to be like a corpse? Or maybe, maybe her soul will be here. And it'll be cute, happy, disturbing ending. Lilica. Did you pass the sugar? Of course, Amelie. With a smile, Lilica pushed the sugar across the table towards Amelie. She picked up the teaspoon and dropped a single cube of sugar into her tea. Would you like one, Lilica? No, thank you. Just being around you makes my tea sweet enough. And you, Sophia? You're awfully quiet today. I'll just give you one. Next to Amelie sat Sophia, perfect and pristine, to Amelie's eyes at least. But Lilica saw the truth. Her flesh convulsed and pulsated, and her eyes bulged from what was once her head. The shape of Sophia was gone, and in its place was a mound of a person who used to be. Lilica smiled. You know she likes sugar in her tea. There's no need to ask. You're right. I'm so happy. Sophia, Lilica, you're both so important to me. Thank you for being by my side. Anytime. Isn't that right, Sophia? From now on, it's just the three of us. <laughs> and I got a... Achievement that said, it's just the three of us. Forever and ever. <laughs> oh, God. Does she look like badly taxidermied animals? I, I don't think she was even taxidermied from the sound of that. The sound of the description of her eyes bulging out of her head and her flesh pulsating. I, I think she's still rotting. Very much like bulging, filled with gases and possibly... Ugh, creatures. Just a choked corpse? Yeah, just a bloated corpse. Pulsating, she's alive. I don't think she's alive at this point. I don't think so. She may be, which would be even more fucking terrifying, but I think she was dead. From the eyes, like, bulging out of her head and her not saying anything, her not doing anything, I think she's just a dead body. Plasticized? Well, not plasticized, because, I mean, she looks perfect to Amelie. But, you yeah, know, it's just a rotting corpse, bloating, getting ready to, like, explode and stuff. Ah. <sighs> Side. Lilica, three out of three. The three of us. So that was the true ending, huh? <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, oh, we're not done. Is this really okay? What about... The future. Should you try again? I mean, oh, I can't even save. You sons of bitches. <laughs> yes, I want to try again if there's a better ending. Oh. We're back in Sophia's room. Is Sophia gonna maybe find a safer way to deal with this? Okay. Well, I'm glad that wasn't the final ending. I want them to have a happy ending. I know I described this continuously as tragic Yuri, but I really want them to, you know, break the curse. The room was dark. Amelie had long gone to bed, leaving Sophia alone in her room. She ducked her head under the cover and pulled out her phone. Still dead. Sophia clutched it to her chest. What do I do? What exactly is going on here? Sophia's body stiffened up. Her back was to the door, but her mind screamed not to turn around. 
Footsteps crept closer, closer, and closer, until... Stay away from me! <gasps> Sophia threw her bedding at the approaching person and jumped to her feet, ready to run. But the person she saw collapse to the ground was not the person she was expecting. Oh my gosh! Emily, I'm so sorry! Sophia knelt down, quickly helping the brown-haired girl to her feet. It's quite all right. I didn't mean to scare you. I apologize. <laughs> no, it's my fault. I'm too jumpy. I'm glad you're here. I'm really glad you're here. Maybe this is the happy ending where they just, you know, cuddle together in bed and then Lilica can't choke Sophia or scare her out of the house. They just live happily. <sighs> Sophia's arms draped over Amelie's shoulders and she pulled her in tight. Emily froze for just a moment before she melted into the embrace. Oh, we may have to hide this scene. <laughs> Let's see how far this goes. I'm here. But is everything all right? No, I don't think everything is all right. What could be the matter? Emily, my phone died as soon as my cab approached your house. Do you see? She pulled out her phone, showing her the black screen. Oh shit, she actually showed her the phone. Well, this is gonna really fuck with Amelie's worldview. <laughs> what exactly is that? M my mobile. Oh yeah, this is an English story. <laughs> Nobody in America calls it their mobile. It's a cell phone over here. A mobile, bruh. Amelie picked it up curiously, turning it in her hands. You've never seen a phone? What is it used for? For... Texting. Making calls. Playing games. Those kinds of things. Amazing. Emily. What year is it? What year? Why do you ask? Please. 1665, of course. Let's go! Oh shit, wow. London got really fucked up around this time. I didn't know this scarlet fever hit London right before the fire of London. The fire of London was in 1666. So damn, London got so royally fucked this two years. <sighs> Sophia took a step back from Amelie. What is it? Amelie? I... This makes no sense. Lilica, this house? You... Emily, it's 2021. Okay, so it was released in 2021, not 2020. Sorry. What? Sophia, that's preposterous. Oh my god. I fell back onto the bed. My leg's not able to hold her up any longer. Oh my god, Emily. You're not joking. You, you're really... 1665 is bubonic. Ah, oh, so brother just died of scarlet fever, but the bubonic plague is the one that's actually hitting. Damn. <laughs> Fuck me. Scarlet fever, then bubonic plague, and then the fire of London. Jesus. This is a rough decade. <laughs> Are you feeling unwell? Maybe you need to get some rest after all. Emily, please listen to me. Out there, the world has changed. We have phones, cars, computers. Just saying words doesn't mean anything, Sophia. <laughs> Look, I can do that too. Sophia, no, it's nine, it's 2387. The world has changed. We have bleep bloops, smorgles, garbs ups. I swear. <laughs> we don't need a husband. We don't need permission to buy a house. You can go to school, get a job. Do whatever you want. There you go. That's what you want to say. I know I probably sound crazy to you right now, but please. Please, I'm telling you the truth. You're trying to tell me that nearly 400 years have passed and I've been stuck here. How would that even be possible? I don't know. Emily, how long have we been writing to each other? Well, I, I 
don't know. It's been five years. Oh, shit. They've been writing to each other since they were... Well, since Sophia was 14. That's a long pen pal relationship. That's adorable. I need to find Lilica. She'll know what's going on here. No, wait. You can't ask Lilica. Why not? I... I can't see Lilica, Amelie. I haven't seen her once. But she's been here from the start. Oh, that face is perfect. You can see that's a smile, but so much discomfort where she's like, no, she was right there. You, you talked to her. She talked to you. I've only seen you in this house. Amelie, something's going on with this, this house that's been keeping you stuck here. I think she's the one that's done it to you. It can't be true. And why don't we find out together? How? The master bedroom. Lilica was the one who said you couldn't enter, wasn't she? Please. Sophia reached out her hand carefully. Amelie stared at it, unsure before deciding to take it. I don't understand what's going on, but... I trust you. Let's go. The hallway was still dark, with no sign of Lilica anywhere. If she appears, then tell me, okay? Okay. Hand in hand, the two walked quickly through the hall and up the staircase. They stood in front of the master bedroom side by side. Their hands were sweaty, knees weak, arms were heavy. <laughs> there was vomit on the sweater already. Mom, spaghetti. No matter what's in here, I'll be by your side, okay? Amelie offered no words, instead just squeezing Sophia's hand gently. And at that, Sophia pushed the door open. Holding hands is too lewd. Now I'm really going to have to take down this VOD. I knew there was a reason we got given content warnings. I can't believe they just held hands in my adorable, pure, Yuri visual novel. What the hell? Just like the rest of the house, the room was dark and quiet. Only the moon shining in from the dirty window guided the two in. It smelled musty, as if they were in a tomb only just uncovered, not a bedroom. They crept closer and closer to the bed. It was surrounded completely by the canopy, keeping whatever was inside hidden. With a shaky hand, Sophia reached towards the light velvet. At once, the truth came into view. Emily gasped and almost fell to her knees, but Sophia's hand kept her steady. I'm sorry, Emily. But they left. They left only a few weeks ago. It looks like they've been gone for a... Mm, sorry, wrong voice. It looks like they've been gone for a very long time. Emily, I know this is hard to believe. I find it just as hard to believe as you do. Please, we have to leave this house. Now, before Lilica finds us. She... She knew. I think that you've been bound to this house by her. We need to find a way to leave. Okay. This visual novel is absolutely incredible. She doesn't even know that's not her mom. True, she might think it's her mom. She might think it's her mom and dad in bed rather than uh, the previous Lilica and her dad in bed. Skeletons do always look the same after about 400 years. The two only got halfway down the stairs when Amelie grounded to a halt. Sophia turned to look at her, her eyes wide in surprise, only to see that Amelie's expression was one of immense fear. Also, yeah, I mean, that works on me as well. <laughs> when we got the first description and we had, like, Sophia in bed with the two of them, I remember, like, being, oh, look, you're meeting the parents now. Here's mommy and daddy. And it was like, yeah, it just, it made sense. They used that against us. And now if Amelie felt the same way, that's great. <laughs> Which means right now, Amelie probably doesn't even know that Lyrica's, no, Lilica's dead either. Sophia turned to look at her, her eyes wide in surprise, only to see that Amelie's expression was one of immense fear. Lilica, what are you two doing out of bed? 
Lilica, I... So, you went in there. She nodded upstairs. You lied to me. Only to keep you happy. Happiness with lies is their foundation isn't true happiness. But why not? We've been perfectly happy here for longer than you've even existed. And you come along and... And... I'm sorry. Emily, I'm so sorry. The liquor burst into tears, wiping in her eyes with her sleeve in a desperate attempt to stop them from overflowing. Lilica? Wait, Emily, don't... Emily took a step towards Lilica, as if to comfort her. Please don't leave, Emily. Can't we stay here together? Emily, she's lying to you. She wants to keep you trapped here. Please... But, but, please, Emily. Sophia pulled on Emily's arm, forcing her to turn to face her. Emily's eyes were filled with confusion. I know you two have been together for a long time. I know. I know I can't compete with that, but, but I want to give you the life that you deserve. You deserve to be free, to live, to experience everything that you've missed out on, to be stuck in here forever. And the truth is I, I kiss her. Oh, that's fucking adorable. Whatever words were coming next were lost before they were even spoken as Sophia leant forward and placed a gentle kiss against Amelie's lips. The cries from below extinguished in an instant as Lilica watched on in horror. But just for a moment, the rest of the world melted away, and all that existed were the two of them Amelie and Sophia. Amelie closed her eyes. The sensation was new and foreign, yet not unwanted. Butterflies were let loose in both of their stomachs. Where they connected, Heat spread throughout their bodies, and then Sophia pulled away. Oh, I didn't expect it to actually happen. I'm so freaking happy. That was so cute. Take the L, Lilica. Yeah, it's literally in her name. L for loss, L for lesbians. Get the fuck out of here, Lilica. They're leaving. The truth is, Emily, I've liked you for a very long time. And even if you don't like me back, I want to help you. I want to help you live again. That's such a cute line as well. She's like, yeah, I don't care if you're in lesbians with me. As long as you're in lesbians with life, let's go live life together. Oh, so she's so good. Emily, don't listen to her. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Sorry, Lilica. She just kissed her on the lips. You, you ain't stopping her. <laughs> a decisive smile came to Sophia's lips. She had no time to dwell on the sudden kiss, nor her confession that would usually make her feel so nervous she'd be sick. All she had time for was to escape. Her eyes went down the hall where an enraged Lilica stood in their path. The windows were bolted down, unable to be opened. There was nowhere, nowhere at all to escape. Go through the stained glass window! Sorry, I'm excited. This is cool. That is. Except. Do you trust me? I do. Sophia didn't need any more of a confirmation. With Amelie in hand, she turned, ran, and jumped. Shattering Lilica's world! Oh my god, the writing in this game is so good. The symbolism? The fact that they're smashing through a window that's covered in angels, they're going to heaven. Oh, it's so fucking adorable. The writing, everything came together. And the fact that that's the one part of the house that didn't end up all like cracked when Lilica's plan was breaking through. Ah, oh, that's so good. The glass shattered as the two girls hit it hard. Oh, they're gonna hit it hard. <laughs> Give them a few days. They've, they've had their first kiss already. 
They fell, surrounded by the shards until they hit the ground below. Still raining, though. The moon shone from high above, shielded away by the storm that never seemed to end. Emily, are you okay? Yes, I think so. Sophia rushed to Amelie's side, quickly helping her to sit up. Side by side, they looked up at the remains of the stained glass window. Lilica stood, completely still. I can see her. I'm sorry, Lilica, but... Lilica just shook her head. She grasped at her throat with her hand, and her lips moved, but no sound came out. Giving up, she looked back at Amelie, holding eye contact. Her expression wasn't angry anymore. It was just sad. She lifted her hand and waved, a slow, small motion, before she crumbled to dust in the wind. <gasps> Storm's over. They did say it was supposed to be sunny all day. So yeah, the storm was just constantly surrounding the area. That's so sweet as well. Lilica let them go. Yeah, she moved on. I mean, the, the mother, the whole thing that Lilica had promised to do was to keep Amelie safe. And the whole time she was judging Sophia, she was constantly saying, you're not good enough. You can't make her happy. I've been with her longer. I'll protect her. I'll make her happy. So when she saw that Amelie jumped out the window with Sophia, that Sophia was willing to risk her life, risk everything to be with her. She's like, no, you'll be happy now. My job here is done. So yeah, the curse is lifted. The magic is done. Amelie will be protected now by Sophia. That's going to be so fucking weird, though. Imagine coming from 1665 and having to adapt to 21st century life. Such a good ending, bro. Yeah, it's so beautiful. I'm so happy. Oh, man. The fact that they took us down to the three out of three and made it look like there was going to be no good ending. Oh, man. Lilica was too persistent. She she just wanted to protect her baby girl. She wanted to protect the woman she loved's baby. And at this point, I'm wondering if she really did choke the mother to death. Maybe I just read that wrong. Maybe I analyzed that wrong. Maybe she, when she was talking about another person not struggling as she choked, maybe she was talking about the mother hanging herself rather than her choking the mother to death. Maybe there was some romance between them. I don't know. Do you think Emily will like Beyonce? I think she's going to have to get used to a lot of stimulus. <laughs> Everything's so loud in our world. And she's allowed to vote and, you know, love whoever she wants to love. <laughs> stopped. Elika. It seems it wasn't you bound to this house by her, but the other way around. Yeah, exactly, because that wasn't even the original Lilica made. That was a new spirit, a new spirit that was created just to keep her in that house. So yeah, she's free now. And they're all free. And the torture device called a bra. <laughs> wow. Uh, keep in mind, there's a lot of other fun technology that she's got to be enjoying. Think Amelie will learn about a Tuny cyborg? Nah, no, let's be honest. She's, she's probably not going to be interested in the internet. She's got to be having so much fun with her musical instruments. And she's finally able to write. She said she liked writing, but her dad made her stop because it wasn't feminine enough. Now she can go be a writer and write a beautiful story. What? What am I meant to do now? Emily, you're free. And you can do whatever you wish. Sophia, exhausted... Oh, wait, what the fuck? Sophia, exhausted once again, wrapped her arms around Emily, who returned the gesture almost immediately. There, they embraced under the now free moon. She can only write period pieces. <laughs> nah, man, she's hitting up AO3 and what exactly? <laughs> Veli Chan. Oh, shit. Somebody else said it before as well. She's hitting up AO3. She's hitting up Wattpad. She's got to find some TV shows. She'll probably watch Downtown Abbey and be like, no, 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 no. I don't need any of the guys in this show. Let me create my own period piece where it's just women, just ladies of the court being with one another. This was in 2021. She can watch Fu-chan's debut soon. Oh, it's crazy. It was that long ago. 
<laughs> and wait four hours to see them not kiss. Kaya, you really need to pay attention. They kissed five minutes ago. <laughs> in this manner, in the middle of a field, far out in the countryside, the curse was broken. A young woman freed. What her future held wasn't certain. After all, the future never is. But she made her decision on that fateful night. To trust in the future. To trust in herself. No matter what. Oh, that was a beautiful game. <laughs> the translation is by someone named Yuri. <laughs> oh no, maybe it's just a name, Yuri Atelier. Two lead developers, a couple of producers. Yo, quite a few game designers. CG artist Sasa. They did a great job. I loved the art in this. Oh, there was a different sprite artist. That makes sense, actually. The CG and the sprites had slightly different. Four people for the music. That's great. This was such a nice game. I can't believe I hadn't heard of this. I'm so glad that we ended up playing thingy thing. Patrons. I wish I'd been a patron. <laughs> I wish I'd known about this back in the day. This is such a beautiful story. Such nice music. Such nice art. The writing was good. The fact that the symbolism all came together at the end. And me. You're damn well right. And you guys. And me. They're thanking all of us. But yeah. I'm so glad we played A Date With Death. I'm so glad we looked into more of Two and a Half Studios games. Because this was gorgeous. And we get a post-credits domestic scene. Where's the cat? I know you named a cat after Amelie. You named it Emma or something. Show me the cat, damn it. Emily, I'm black. I'm back from my class. Sophia, quick, come here. Is something the matter? No, look. Emily held a phone screen up to Sophia, who just laughed in response. <laughs> She's playing a fucking gacha? No! They corrupted her so fucking easily. <laughs> but she's definitely not playing Love in Deep Space. Um, I'm imagining something like Arknights, maybe, maybe even like Fire Emblem. Uh, there's a lot of gacha with like some cute girls in them. A fate worse than death? Yeah. <laughs> Keep in mind, she doesn't have a birth certificate. She's not a citizen. She doesn't exist, really. So, chances are... <laughs> She's just a trophy wife at this point. Sophia's going to have to work hard to keep that gambling, well, Genshin addict. Genshin? Gacha. Gacha addict playing. <laughs> you got a five-star character in that game you like? Isn't it amazing? All I had to do was insert the numbers on that card you gave me. <laughs> I fucking knew it. She used her credit card. How many times did you roll? Oh, dear God future truly is astounding. I... We'll talk about it later. Oh, what's this? I'm not sure. It was slipped under the door while you were out. A plain white envelope sat on the coffee table. Nothing on it identified who sent it or who it was addressed to. With little concern, Sophia opened it and pulled out a letter. But the words may as well have been a different language as she could not read them. Her eyes went straight to the name at the bottom of the page. Future achievement. We're free at last. Dot, dot, dot. Right. Don't do that. <laughs> Yours, Lilica. <laughs> Fuck you, game. Fuck you. <laughs> so this may all be in their heads. They may still be in the mansion. <laughs> they may still be in the manor. <laughs> Or it just means that Lilica's still out there, which can't, isn't necessarily a bad edit, but I like how it also brings you back to this menu where the creepy music plays. Lilica's still alive. Yeah, honestly, that's the thing. In my mind, I'm like, did they never leave the manor? Are they all still living there together and this is just in their head? But maybe it's just that Lilica didn't actually completely like whoosh, into the dust in the wind and maybe, maybe she wants to just come and say, hey, maybe she wants to say, hey, is my baby girl doing good? Um, mommy-in-law wants to, mommy-in-law? Mom, step mommy. Step mommy wants to come visit and see how you're doing. Lilica seemed okay at the end. <laughs> no, I want to see how Sophia handles Amelie's gacha addiction. Probably pretty well. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> She's playing Genshin, Honkai, Idolish 7, Ensemble Stars. Bro, nah, nah. The 
mana is probably still there. It has to be. If she managed to drop them a letter. That was... Uh, mm, you know what? I'm fine with that ending. <laughs> it's a little bit painful. <laughs> it's just a little bit painful. Um, Gives you that hint that maybe they're still trapped or maybe something bad will still happen. It also means they could make a sequel someday if they wanted. Maybe Lilica is still protecting Amelie since the blood ritual burns since Amelie. It could be. Maybe she's just like... My dearest Lilica, I have to let you know. Gacha is bad. You are going to have a very unhappy life if you don't learn. Gacha no good for you. Gacha costs money. You know earn money. You know have job. Get job, then play Gacha. <laughs> well, who knows? Maybe it's a reincarnated Lilica. But yeah, she's around. The curse is still in. Oh, God. <laughs> hope Lilica wrote a nice letter despite the illegibility. I hope so. Oh, God. Maybe she plays Deep Space. It could be anything. I'd imagine it's like a gal game, though. <laughs> I'd imagine it's something where, like, yeah, just sexy women fighting. <laughs> She's free to play. Oh, forced to play. F to P, forced to pay. Yeah, she needs to get a job. I'm kind of sad they didn't show the cat. That would have been an adorable little callback. Nikkei. Oh, Nikkei. Yeah, with the bouncing booties. She'd be so into that. Blue Archive. Blue Archive works, too. <laughs> By the way, Futsan, have you ever played Umin Echo when they cry? No, because it's so freaking long. I loved the animes of both Higurashi and Umin Echo, but I've never played either of the actual games themselves. Um, well, actually, I loved the anime of Higurashi. I was okay with the anime of Umin Echo. The anime of Umin Echo wasn't great, but I've heard the visual novel is incredible. Maybe someday, but that's like a... That's like a 70 hour game I've heard. <laughs> so that's not something I'm going to be committing to anytime soon. You playing Cookie Run Kingdom? You know what? I much prefer that. <laughs> I'm sitting here like, nah, it's got to have sexy girls in it. My girl, Amelie, she likes booties. Meanwhile, yeah, maybe she's just playing like Cookie Run Kingdom. She's just collecting cute little cookies. She's having a good time. <laughs> animated versions of the visual novel there's an animated version oh yeah i forgot when i move this moves when i move you move just like that anyway you have played father moru yeah but okay hold up this is the thing let me look up the lengths father morgana how long to beat so father morgana on average takes people around 30 hours obviously it took us like 60 to 70 hours because I dumb dumb. <laughs> I talk through things. I voice act. It takes me a long time when it comes to visual novels. Just like this game, the average runtime is about two hours. It took us five hours to beat this. So we actually take more than double the time to finish off a visual novel. Because I talk too much. I theorize too much. Yeah, shit like that. Anyway, so on the average, the House of Fada Morgana is 30 hours. So let's see... Umi Neko, how long to beat? <laughs> oh, and there's different arcs. The question arcs by themselves take 60 hours. That's just the question arcs. Holy shit. So for me, the time it would take to beat Ume Neko, just the question arcs, would be about 120, 140 hours. That's like three years. Let's be, that's, yeah, that's like three to four years of streams. <laughs> Let's see the answer arcs. That's another 60 hours. So 60 hours on both. So we're talking like 400 hours. I don't know. I don't know. But I don't know if there's anything beyond the question arcs and the answer arcs. There's apparently something called Umeneko no Nakukuro ni Hane. And Saku? There's multiple. Oh, those are short ones though. Those are both only like three, four hours. And Subasa? What the f Okay. Stream schedule for the next three years. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm never going to play those on stream. If I ever played them, it would be off stream. If we played them on stream, yeah, that would be like... We would just be playing it probably until like the world ended. <laughs> until I ended. <laughs> never. That may be longer than how I've played Animal Crossing. Yeah. That's the thing, like, we've put, like, long hours into some games, but I think the longest, like, running series we've ever had on the channel was, like, 70 hours. I think it's Fada Morgana. And the only things that come anywhere near close to it are, like, the two Zelda games. Dedication, exactly. Played Piofuri for 90 hours. 
I mean, if we talk about like online games, I think I put like 3,000 hours into Smash Bros. Ultimate. No, it was 100, sorry. 300 hours into Smash Bros. Ultimate. I put like 300 hours into Chivalry. I, I play a lot of games. <laughs> We played Dramatical Murder. We did. Well, we played the demo. We're not allowed to do the full version, unfortunately. But we did play the demo. If you do play it by yourself, I recommend the voice actor and animated Doom and Echo Project. Is that an official thing? Because if there's a PG version of New Carnival. No, there's not. There's an NC-17 version of New Carnival. It's just not 18 plus. <laughs> Only 300? I think so. I don't remember exactly. Someday I'll go into my Switch and see how long I've actually played Smash Ultimate. It was a long time, anyway. Have you heard of an Otome game called No, I Have Not? Vush Evermore? Nah. Whole game of DMMD is something. I was surprised when we got to the scenes with the big guy. Where Alba was being held down and it looked very much like something terrible was going to happen. But yeah. <laughs> I mean, I got heavily warned for that stream as well. That it was like, bad things are going to happen. You might have to censor some things. <laughs> I'm just surprised we got so many warnings about this one. Because this one, this one was, yeah. This wasn't bad. There was some abuse. There was some self-harm. There was some darkness. But this, this really wasn't bad. Bum, ba -da -bum. Yeah, Mink. Mink was, oof. One had nothing on Fata Morgana. No, Fata Morgana was wild. Storyline-wise, though, I really liked this one. I liked this whole, like, tragic scenario they had going the whole like breaking away from the magic thing how Lilica just wanted to protect her I like that they didn't go into love triangle that was pretty impressive to me normally <laughs> like I fully expect expected this to go into love triangle and I feel like they used that against you as well they make you think oh Lilica loves her she's jealous she wants Amelie to herself and then you find out what it really is and it's like oh that's cute and then you think that maybe it's more dark than cute and I don't know. <laughs> anyway, this was amazing. This was great. Okay. Oh, I just chatting screen. Switch the music around to. I think I'm going to put on my... Mm, yeah, I think I'll put on my ears. I like the ears. <laughs> been, where, maybe I've been wearing the ears too much. You know what? Let's put on the suit. Everyone likes the suit. There we go. Um, um. Yeah, let's get away from this creepy music. Quit. Bum, bum, bum. You know what? Let's, yeah, let's play the hopeful music from earlier. Shit, I didn't even talk about that when we started stream. My bad. I was supposed to be like, oh yeah, this is, this is a new track. It's the Shepherd's theme, but this is the sleepy hopeful version. But yeah, it's just a new arrangement. Oh, right. This is not the loop version. Let me grab the loop version. Bum, 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 bum. But yeah, I'm glad so many people liked this one. I just got this one from the composer yesterday. So this one is brand new. And they're currently working on an extra sad version. <laughs> That's what I do with my time. I make people sad. There we go. That's the loopable version. Bum, bum, bum. So good. Lamb Udon. What about Lamb Udon? Love Lamb Udon. Somebody just made me a Lamb Udon asset. So that's going to be fun. <laughs> I have a lamb udon asset and I'm pretty sure I have a lamb kebab asset as well so I can eat all kinds of you sheep delicious sir. can we listen anywhere else not unless you're a member right now you can't listen to this one as a member either but for the memberships I, I release the OSTs as memberships once a month I try to drop like one or two tracks uh, I think last month I released two of the shepherd theme arrangements but yeah, I drop them for memberships to listen to whenever they want to. Bum, 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 bum. If you haven't played it, I feel like you might like something by My Vow to My Leech. Never heard of that one either. I might check it out later. Please try out X Note and 99. What is 999? Do you mean the, 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 the game that's kind of like Danganronpa? Or is this a different one? Yeah, nine hours, nine persons, nine doors. I didn't stream it, but I played that like forever ago. Zero Escape? Yeah, if you mean Zero Escape, I've played that myself. I never played the other two, though. Mimineko is great, but I doubt it would be allowed on stream with the heavy topics it has. You'd be surprised. Um, 
I don't know exactly what topics Umineko has, but with everything that Fada Morgana had, I was surprised we were allowed to do that one, honestly. That one... That one challenged YouTube. I had a few of my videos... I had to fight for the fact that they could stay up without being 18 plus marked. I was like, yeah, come on, it's a visual novel. Sure, it's like text descriptions, but it's fine. Fada Morgana went pretty hard. I think the only like more adult thing we've played, maybe Cyberpunk, because Cyberpunk had a full on like graphic sex scene. But thankfully we covered that up. So it was just the sounds, but we still heard a lot of moaning. <laughs> what about slow damage one day? Nah, it's not going to happen, unfortunately. I don't think we'll ever be allowed to play a full version of one of the Nitro Plus games. Someday I will do the Tagainu no Chi demo. Um, but that's it. If it doesn't have a demo, and the demos generally are like safe for all people versions. Um, the demos, they generally like filter out the like worst, most adult parts of things. And unfortunately, that doesn't have it. Disco Elysium was always was also pushing it. Yeah, that one had some very like just in the first like 10 minutes, it had graphic descriptions of dead, bloated bodies and shit. That was pretty wild. And then it went like super into politics and shit. I was like, yeah, I, I don't think I can do this on stream. I will constantly be tense and worrying what the characters are going to say next. <laughs> there was a bunch of political stuff. There was, oh God, all kinds of things. Anyway, it looks like it's a beautiful game. Like I, I definitely got to play that offline someday. Whenever I like next take a long break where I'm not in a hospital bed at all times. <laughs> yeah, I definitely want to play Disco Elysium because the writing was so good in it. Like the dice rolls and stuff. Just like leaning into the silliness of like dice rolls D&D style was so good. wonder if this creator has any other good games. I think they've got they've got another one that kind of sounds like the Dong. The Dong, Dong uh, sound kind of sounds like the web novel Seizing Dreams. Um, let me look it up two and a half studios because yeah they've got a few visual novels under their belt they had amelie they had a date with death do, 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 do. that's it dreambound dreambound is another bl game um ba -bum -ba -bum. when introverted artist noah finds himself deep within a series of murders he's forced out of his shell and back into reality or in his case back into the dreams of those that wronged him in the past so yeah, he's able to like dive into people's dreams and he's trying to solve a bunch of murders. That one sounds interesting too. I think that, wait, is that not BL? Oh, that one's not been made yet. That's to be released. That's the one they're going to release after the one they're currently working on. My bad. Um, uh, LGBTQ+. Yeah, okay, so that is going to be a BL game. You can get the demo right now, but the full version of the game isn't out yet. Sick. So yeah, we'll probably play Dreambound when it comes out because that sounds good. I love the whole like being able to enter people's dreams and like especially when they use like dreams to show twisted versions of reality based on people's perceptions. Things like the Persona series, things like Psychonaut series, Seizing Dreams, the video, the ancient video game Alundra. Well, I say ancient, it's PlayStation 1. And Alundra is one of my favorite games because again, diving into dreams, always a cool mechanic. They influence, they do it really well in that one and it also had a cool anime opening and it was kind of the gameplay was based off of zelda ah and i haven't actually read season dreams yet but i've heard it's beautiful and it's like another one of my chinese web novels that someday i'll read <laughs> hopefully hopefully they'll actually you know get an official release they've also got something called the divine speaker that took me to dreambound again is this broken Yeah, for some reason on their website currently, when you click on the Divine Speaker, it takes you to the Dreambound page. Something called Start Again. Do -do -do. Awakened in an unfamiliar location, four strangers are forced into a life or death situation they must escape within two hours. But yeah, they've got a lot of visual novels. Ooh, Beyond the Abyss, the characters look so pretty. This is so Shansha, look at the flowing robes and the boob window. Go boob. I can't even click that one. Damn it! <laughs> Fine, I'll look it up on Steam. Think I care? Show me beyond the abyss. Two by two and a half studio. Oh, it's not even on Steam. It's only on itch.io. Huh. Must be 18 plus. Oh, we're not playing this on stream, apparently. <laughs> oh, beautiful characters, though. And yeah, it is Shansha. Interesting. That's adorable. Bum, bum, bum. 
Yeah, this one was years ago. Damn. So yeah, they've done a few visual novels. We'll probably check out some more of them someday. But this was beautiful. What a shame. Yeah, that one's 18 plus. That one's not going to happen. Oh, man. Ah, oh. Kara no Shoto? Wait. What does that remind me of? Oh, I was thinking of Karino Kyokai. <laughs> when I saw Karino, I was like, oh, I love Karino Shoujo. I've not heard of Karino Shoujo. Karino Kyokai is great. Karino Shoujo. An adult visual novel adventure by Innocent Grey for Windows, released in 2008. Oh, it's on Steam. Oh, it's also 18 plus. <laughs> wow. At least you guys can play them offline. <laughs> we won't be able to play them on stream. So many 18 plus visual novels. Although, considering Scarlet got permission to play Sextet, she got permission to play, yeah, that game uh, Isekai Sextet, or like whatever the Sextet thing was she was playing, where, yeah, she had to cover some things in that. <laughs> Divine Speaker has a streamer mode, so it can be safe. Oh, cool. That's pretty awesome. But do we want to cut out the sex scenes? How did she even? Scarla's very persuasive. She is an enchantress. Remember that fact. She's good at getting permissions for things too. <laughs> it's just a little suggestive. It's okay. I mean, that's the thing. We managed to play a cyberpunk and cyberpunk had full graphic sex scenes in it. We just have to cover up the sex scenes. That isn't even like a Niji Sanji thing. That's like a YouTube thing. <laughs> bum, ba -da -bum. Jojo BB, thank you for donating the few funds. It's just boop. The stream taught me that due to the mystical ritual of f -prec, women can lay soul babies. That and that love wins. Love does win. That ending was so beautiful. I was so happy with it. God damn. Uh, ba -ba. What the heck is Donna Donna? Never even heard of that one. YouTube couldn't please. Yeah, they don't like sex scenes on YouTube. Which is fun. Yeah, even if you like mark your stream as 18 plus, they're like, no, no, no. Not on our service. Take that shit over to a certain other website. <laughs> Love prevailed. Hell yeah, it was so cute. I'm glad. Thank you for donating the food funds, Jojo BB. I hope you enjoyed the stream and I hope you have a lovely evening. Speaking of itch.io, short game. Yeah, we're not we're not taking game recommendations right now. Like I'm sorry, but boom, boom. <laughs> we've got enough game recommendations for now. So yeah. And we've got enough visual novels for now. Probably, once we release the Archivist, I'm probably going to dive back into Fada Morgana. Because um, Fada Morgana, we still have to do, like, all the bonus stuff. So, yeah, that's probably when I'm going to start doing that as well. So, we've got visual novels all over the place on the way. I'm imagining, like, Requiem... Whatever it's called. The bonuses from Fada Morgana are going to take us, like, another, like, 40 hours, possibly. The Chan and his never-ending list of games. The problem is it keeps growing. <laughs> Like, I'm currently trying to get permission for us to be allowed to play in Shrouded. Um, what else is there? Uh, that, 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 that bird one, I forget what it's called. There's some bird one, which is pretty much like in Shrouded as well. It's another, like, crafting survival one. Raven something, I think. It's coming out, like, in a month. Um, we just started The Last of Us Part 2, which wasn't on our list because it just suddenly came out. <laughs> we, we have lots of games. Did you ever come back to Spirit Hunter? Yeah, we're actually... I've talked about this before. We're playing that through February. So before the Archivist comes out, I want to finish that one. I think it will take me like three to four more streams. So we're actually going to be going back to that next week. So again, more visual novels. <laughs> I like visual novels on the channel. They give me a chance to voice act and do some silly things. So that'll be cool. So yeah, we'll be finishing off NG... And like I said, there's a chance with some things that are going on that someday we may be able to play Deathmark and Deathmark 2. Um, it would be cool if I could finish Deathmark before Deathmark 2 came out, but I doubt that's going to happen. I might even leave Deathmark for like next Halloween and do that for next spoopy season since we're going to have so many other visual novels. Uh, but we'll see. Will you continue Long Gone Days? That one I'm not sure about. Having played that one, like the gameplay didn't make me fall in love with it too much and the story was weaker than i was expecting i played that one because i'd heard some good recommendations about it and like the basic storyline sounded good but it felt the storyline felt a bit rushed to me and it was the storyline i wanted the most from that i wanted like a traumatized like 
fucked up soldier who had like been lied to and conditioned all of his life and he he just broke out of the conditioning like instantly it wasn't for me i wanted like some sagara sosuke traumatized on the battlefield 86 trying to adapt to human life and nature shit and yeah just the story didn't quite stand up um unfortunately the lack of angst well it was just the speed it was just like we killed some people and then it was like oh no they weren't bad guys and it was like surprised pikachu face it was like if you were raised for your whole life to kill a group of people i'd be like yeah kill those people <laughs> give me a couple hours of you being like a sociopath before you go are we the bad guys <laughs> don't just literally in the first like half hour be like we are the bad guys <laughs> killing is bad okay that's the thing he still killed he just started killing for different sides bum, ba -da -bum. i love cyano uta me too man me too no way in hell we're ever playing that on YouTube. <laughs> Try Princess. Thank you so much for donating the food funds. No message, but thank you so much for being here. Thank you for the support. I hope you enjoyed the stream today and I hope you have a lovely evening. Sakue Atsufuchan. Thank you for the stream. Watching you play this visual novel game was a pure delight for me. Really love your voice acting. It's always so amazing. Bye, you. I enjoyed this too. My voice acting sucked this time. <laughs> Let's be honest here. I have like one grill voice and it's not even a convincing grill voice. <laughs> so yeah, having to do like three different grill voices was just like, mm. but I wanted to play some tragic Yuri. It was a fantastic story. I enjoyed it, even though two of the characters sounded, ex no, three of them. The mother sounded exactly the same as the other two as well. <laughs> and I just made the other one slightly more American. So <laughs> God damn it. Oh God. Bum, ba, bum, ba, bum. You'd read it completely deadpan and it would still be fun. No, that would be boring. You have no idea. Have you ever tried to listen to someone with like an actual like proper like quote on? I call it the history teacher voice because I have always had history teachers that are just like. In fact, yeah, let's just read Sakue's comment in history teacher voice and I'll see you how fucking annoying it gets. Matsufu-chan, thank you for the stream. Watching you play this visual novel game is a pure delight for me. I really love your voice acting. It's always so amazing. Are you? Like when there's like no emotion, there's no like inflection. I just, ugh. I'm like, no. So ASMR. No, because it has to be like a more grating voice than ASMR as well. Like it has to be a voice that's kind of nasally and kind of annoying rather than like the deep, relaxing. Hello, everybody. This is a calming and soothing voice. There isn't too much inflection or change of emotion in this, but it's a relaxing voice. Rather than, yeah, that. Come to think of it, yeah, Uki has that kind of voice as well. Like, Uki's like permanently ASMR mode. <laughs> That's what I mean. Like, Uki's voice, beautiful, relaxing. You can fall to sleep to it. You can enjoy it. History teacher voice, you fall asleep to it, but not in a good way. <laughs> you fall asleep to that one and you're just like... Oh, I wish I could have done stuff today. My energy's been drained. Oh, that's the person who has a good history teacher voice. If any of you watch the television series of what we do in the shadows. Yeah, the energy vampire. I forget his name right now. But the energy vampire who's just like always explaining things like that. And just there's no real inflection or change. Colin Robinson. Thank you. I only remember Jackie Daytona. <laughs> Volleyball teacher and bar runner extraordinaire. <laughs> Futsan, you don't know how many feelings of the characters you showed in your voice. I tried to give them feelings at least. At least we had a fun like yandere stuff. <laughs> history teacher ain't teaching shit with that voice. Yeah, especially since history is already like a painful subject. Like history can be fun if you're taught it properly. Meanwhile, if it's yeah, that boring like Hey everybody, today we're gonna be dealing with the Battle of Hastings in 1066. It's like, yeah, you already have to, like, remember all the dates and all the, like, the bullet points and stuff. And it's like, no, get the fuck out of here. I need, I need excitement. I need it to be taught dramatically. Put on a movie for me. <laughs> be like, here's how we're going to teach you about, I don't know, um, what oh, has a good movie. I mean, you could do so many movies for, like, World War II and, yeah, shit like that. Their voices fade into the background noise. Yeah, it just, it makes you turn your brain off so quickly. Rengot, thank you so much for donating through funds. Whenever I listen to Fuchan's visual novels, they're always very realistic. When they're scary, 
They are really scary and Tuscaru. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm glad to hear that. I love doing visual novels. It's just like reading a story, but with pictures and animation and music and sound effects. It's great. And if I had the time, that's how I'd do my role-playing streams. That's how I wanted to do, like, parts of the Fooniverse thing. Like, I, the only thing I actually managed to put in with the three hours that I had left to put it together <laughs> was just, like, the water sounds. But there was supposed to be, like I said, there was supposed to be, like, hair brushing. There was supposed to be, like, all kinds of weird sound effects, ASMR kind of -y things, jumping around things. There weren't supposed to be, like, any animations or anything, but I would love to, like, essentially be able to, like, make visual novels and then just act them out. Bum -ba -da -bum. Anyway, thank you so much for donating the food funds, Rengor. That's so sweet of you. Hope you have a lovely evening and please rest well. Michaela, what's your foot China? May have woken from a nightmare, but I didn't expect a tragic visual novel playthrough. It was fun. Please don't take down the VOD. I'm not going to take down the VOD. I don't think YouTube will either, because <laughs> we were fine. This was nowhere near as bad as I heard. I actually feel kind of bad for scaring everybody. In fact, I'm taking that pinned comment down. Bum -ba -da -bum. Um, I wonder why they warned me about this one. Maybe the studio warned them because the studio didn't realize the kind of shit we already do. <laughs> but it is what it is. Thank you for donating the food fund, Michaela. Hope you have a lovely day. Brushing? Maybe. Doesn't matter anymore. Now it's going to be in a voice pack. You'll never get to hear it on a live stream. Vixen Narwhal. I'm new to your streams, Fuchan, but I love your energy and humor. And your laugh is very contagious. Oh, that's so sweet. Hope to catch up on more streams. Thank you so much. If you enjoyed this one, I really do recommend my playthrough of Fada Morgana. It's like 60 hours long, so that might scare you away. <laughs> but it's one of the best stories I've ever played. It's absolutely beautiful. And it has like similar vibes to this with like a cursed mansion. And that's all I'll say. It just has similar vibes, beautiful artwork, incredible music. I still listen to the soundtrack. Giselle and what's the other one there's two of the osts that i still have on like my main writing playlist one of them is giselle i think the other one's c c c o yeah it's Cecil. <laughs> let's try to remember the word bum -ba -da bum we've become immune to angst and violence yes this is what the forest is for we've trained with legatus 505 shepherd's story is going to be great as well we're, we're full of angst we're full of angst an amazing and memorable journey it was. And we're still not done. We've got all the extras to do, so that'll be a lot of fun as well. You may hire. Thank you for donating the food funds. I love this game. TY for the stream, Fuchan. It's always fun to be introduced, introduced to stuff I wouldn't have known about otherwise when you play them. Ah. Thank you so much, You may hire. That's so sweet. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Hope you have a wonderful day. And yeah, maybe we'll dive into some more of Two and a Half Studios games in the future. Um... It's nice that they actually let us play them. Because a lot of people, when it comes to visual novels, um, they're like, oh no, if people play them on stream, no one will want to buy them. But I think if a visual novel is good enough, like, even if I'd watch somebody else play Father Morgana, I'd want to play it myself again someday as well. And that one doesn't even, like, properly have choices. I mean, we hit every choice because I wanted to see all the bad ends. <laughs> but for the most part, that's just like a linear story. I guess so is this one. Because we ended up seeing all the stories just to get the full story. Can't spell it, but the intro music of Father Morgana is beautiful. Oh, it is. Every time we played that game, yeah. I left that on during like the intro stream for like a solid five minutes and just vibed to it. It was so good. It's so pow powerful. Bum -ba -da -bum. I bought Father Morgana as a gift for my friend. That's lovely as well. That storyline was so good. I felt so attached to Michelle and Giselle by the end of it. In fact, I liked pretty much every character in it, except for Michelle's family. And even then, I ended up liking his brothers. I know a lot of people still hate Didier. I... Uh, Didier was a complicated character. He was trying to do things for his family. Um, shit, stop spoiling things in case people want to watch that. I haven't done it yet. Um, but yeah, I, I liked every one of the characters except for like Michelle's mother and father. Those were the two where it was like... You know what? Yeah, I even liked the psycho. <laughs> I even liked a certain other woman whose name I won't mention, who did some horrible things, who was still very sexy while she did them. <laughs> still hate that one evil bee. Chewing knows who I'm talking about. Those were some sexy CGs, man. You remember the ones where she was crouched down, smiling? Ah, oh. we had her. God, the fact that in one game we have her, 
I forget the name of the Mafia woman. We had the her, we had Mafia woman, and we had Yuki Masa. Oh, God. And then you have, like, Michelle and Giselle, who were just fucking adorable. That was a bisexual nightmare right there. Not even a bisexual dream. Everyone was just too sexy. They hit everything. Maria, thank you. Yeah, Maria was awesome. <laughs> oh, God. I'm looking forward to diving back into those eventually. But thank you for the donation, you may I hope you have a lovely evening, and thank you for being here. I liked Didier. Me too. Um, I definitely, I remember the director... He, when he put out like a special image for Didier's birthday, he he made it clear that yeah, he a lot of people had hated Didier still, even after like all of the story, and it was like, mm, that's sad. It's fair though; people can have their own opinions. It's just to me, it was like it was a complicated character, but yeah, he, he had his moments, and he was kind of sexy. <laughs> Found some official art of Yuki Masa in modern day clothing. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, the art, I, God, yeah, the art book should be coming soon, actually. It releases in February. Yeah, I bought the second art book on pre-order. Uh, sometime in February, that's going to come to me, and I can't wait to see, like, all the modern-day stuff as well as, like, all the behind-the-scenes stuff. Lala Leilani, thank you for donating the few funds. This story, oh my God. There were twists and turns everywhere. Yeah, I love how so many times I thought, I thought I'd understood it. God, for so long, I was just stuck in that theory where I was like, I don't think name come to me Fuchan brain not Amelie not Sophia why can I Lilin Lilin Lilica Lilica um yeah for so long I thought Lilica just didn't exist wasn't anything I was like nah that's just like some spit personality or some weird shit going on meanwhile she did exist <laughs> Fuchan I don't think I mean, true, true. <laughs> of the POV of every character, there was certainly angst, but also understanding. Yeah, it was so cute. I'm glad we got a happy ending too. The tragic endings were fun in their own way as well. I mean, fucked up, but oh God. I, yeah, now I, I think about it, I can see why people were bringing up Sai and Outa. There's no spoilers, but man. One of those final, very dark endings was very Sayano Uta. Oh, God. The BG art was beautiful. Have a nice rest, Folga. Thank you so much, Lala Leilani. I hope you have a wonderful rest, too. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much for joining us. And take it easy. Annie, thank you for donating the food funds. No message. Was there a super sticker? No. But thank you for donating the food funds. Hope you have a lovely evening. Thank you for supporting the channel. And please rest well. Oh, and M. Jane, sorry, it didn't get caught by the comment grabber, but thank you so much for donating the food funds, M. Jane. No message, but I hope you have a lovely evening. Especially at the end. Also, we aren't sure if Lilica doesn't just look after them. That's the thing. I like, I like the way they ended that. If they had ended it without the Lilica's letter, it would just be like, oh, they're so domestic. They're so happy. It's so cute. But with that ending, it's like, is Lilica evil? Did they ever even leave the manor? Are they still trapped inside their own heads, imagining a beautiful, like, story happening around them? We don't know. We don't know. And that's cool. <laughs> Someday they could even do a sequel where it's like, yeah, you were still trapped in the manor the whole time. Mommy's ghost is holding on to you, baby. And daddy's ghost has cursed you to an eternity of hell. Maybe they're doing the Fata Morgana thing of giving you just a little bit of hope and just a little bit of happiness to make it so much more painful when they rip it away from you. Exactly. Ending's a little open-ended, but it gave us time to imagine. Yeah, the important thing is it gave us that cute domestic scene. I am sad we didn't see the cat, though. I don't like cats, but I like that they would have had a cat, especially one named after Amelie. <laughs> Lays, thank you so much for donating the foo funds. Achoo foo! This game's story was beautifully written. My mind was continuously blo- wait. Wow, yeah, this was a five-hour stream. That's crazy. Considering at the beginning of the week, I was like, yeah, we're going to play Amelie on... Is it Tuesday or Monday? Um, one second. Tuesday. We're going to play Amelie on Tuesday. It's just going to be like a one to two hour stream. It's going to be awesome. And now I'm sitting here five and a half hours in. <laughs> oh, man. My mind was continuously blown with all the twists and turns. Thank you for the stream, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I will. Seems like I'm not going to be riding more Legatus 505 today. I played myself. I played myself. 
I remember saying like, yeah, that's going to be a riding day. It's just going to be like a two hour stream. And then I'll probably just walk dog and chill. And then I'll go back up and do some riding. It'll be awesome. <laughs> now it's more like, nah, we're going to go walk dog. We're going to lay down for a bit. We're going to have dinner. Then we're going to start working on the offline work that we always have to do in the evenings. Typical Futan short stream. Yup. Every time I'm like, this is a short stream, we end up like doubling or tripling it. <laughs> and then sleep. Yeah. Oh, man. I've been really sad recently because, yeah, Niji Sanji and their sleep schedules are fucked up right now. <laughs> Everybody, like when I'm going to bed at like midnight to 1 a.m., that's when all the addicts finally start playing like Monster Hunter and Final Fantasy 14, which seem to be like the two big games right now. Offline, like everybody's playing FF14, they're playing Monster Hunter, sometimes on stream with that one as well. And everybody's like practicing for Mario Kart as well. But yeah, they all seem to just like start doing shit at 1am and I'm like, are you guys okay? And then I wake up at 7am and I'm like, you guys are still a lot, you're still playing. When do you sleep? <laughs> when do you guys sleep? <laughs> oh damn. Yours sounds like a normal sleep schedule. Yeah, I'm too old for that shit, man. <laughs> I need to be in bed by like midnight. Unless like specifically I am not streaming for like a few days in a row. I don't like to mess up my sleep schedule because then it gets harder to get it back on time. A what? Sleep schedule? Never heard of it. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, it's just sad because I'm like, ah, oh, if they started playing at like 8 p.m., <laughs> I'd be there. It is what it is. Miss Jerry Lolly at Fugoshi. Thank you for donating the few funds. Watching you play visual novel games is some of my favorite streams that you do. Your voice acting really brings the game to life. Thank you for the stream, Fuchan. That's so sweet of you. Thank you so much, Miss Jerry Lolly. I enjoy doing visual novels again because I like doing voice acting. Adam Organa gave me a chance to go like really nuts with the voice acting, like doing Yuki Masa's voice. Some of the like Michelle lines where they were like, crying and slowly get emotion into them all the torture and shit man that was so much fun but i love like voicing those kinds of roles where they're like really dramatic bestia voice is still top tier oh i think one of my favorite things was bestia technically not even bestia but yuki masa's torture scene ah oh. being able to do both the torturer and the tortured victim at the same time i fucking loved that they won't <laughs> Should I say this? I, I tried to do a voice pack like that one time where Legardus was interrogating Archivist. And they, they told me no fucking way in hell are we really think that. <laughs> Compared to like Legardus waking up from a night terror and just like groaning and screaming a bit. They were like, no, 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 we, we can't release this. I'm sorry, no. <laughs> and it was like, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. I, I think people would have liked it though. <laughs> They don't know us. They know you. They just also know the company. They know they have to keep a nice reputation. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, none of that. Luthier, thank you for donating the Foo Funds. So hyped with Code Geass collab, sir. My favorite anime and my oh sheep. Oh yeah, I haven't talked about that yet. Um, Noctix and Etheria are going to have a Code Geass collab. Um, they're going to announce things properly on March the 1st, but they just announced like the members who are participating. So I won't announce anything either. I'll just say, you have no idea. Um, Noctix actually jumped on a voice call when we got that announcement. When we got those messages in our box, we were just like, did you guys fucking code gear? No fucking way. So I can't say what we're going to be doing yet or what it is involved with it. I'm thinking that will be announced on March 1st. So we've still got to wait like another full month. A full month and a day. But yeah, eventually you guys will see what we're actually doing for it. It's so cool. And yeah, Code Geass is something like we all enjoyed back in our teenage years. It was like such a big moment for anime fans in general. And Albin stole my tweet. <laughs> when it was announced, I was like, I'm going to quote tweet it and just be like, Jibunwa. And by the time I got to Twitter in the morning, because they announced it in the middle of the night, my time, Albin's tweet was already there doing like the whole fucking line from the song. And I was like, wow. I'll just, I'll just retweet it then. That's, that's fine. <laughs> I almost did the like, not to this shito again one. And I was like, nah, there's, there's going to be some people who try to twist that and be offended over it, even though it's just a fucking meme. He is a phantom thief. I mean, I, I mean, Jibunwo is just like so classic. Everybody knows that. 
it's a lot it's up there with like songs from anime conventions where like if you just shout out i want to be the very best everyone at the anime convention will shout back like no one ever was it's the same for jibunwo you just shout out jibunwo and everybody joins in um probably not nowadays now that i think about it jibunwo is probably fine but the original pokemon theme yeah i doubt that does that still work at conventions maybe i'm too old <laughs> it's like the tokyo ghoul song oh shit how does that go i remember the high-pitched voice yeah i can't remember it right now it's the same as Sasagayo. yeah exactly thank you there we go just needed to see the word but yeah thank you so much for donating the food funds luthier i'm so excited for that too that should be very exciting it's so cool niji sanji yen in general have been getting a lot of big sponsorships recently oh lyra got to play ace attorney the other day that was so freaking awesome but yeah that's a cool one hopefully we'll get sponsored by a visual novel someday too <laughs> i guess no love and deep space is like action rpg with some visual novel elements i guess and like dating game and gacha it's a combination of lots of things that was fun as well that's the thing like i can't complain we've been getting so many sponsorships recently it's been freaking awesome did you sanji en been popping off and they haven't even like all been completely announced yet all the ones we know about there's a lot more going on hopefully the new apollo justice games are out so cool yeah and yeah if you haven't seen it yet alira did a sponsored stream for that the other day and she loved it Touch Starved was not sponsored? No. <laughs> Touch Starved. I just really, really wanted to play that game. Um, I, I talked to the devs about it like a few different times. Um, it was very nice of them to let us play the demo and to let us voice act it. And they even like, they specifically extended their, um, what's it called? Kickstarter campaign by an extra week because it was going to end like the day before our stream. And they extended it by an extra week just so that we could do the touch starve stream and then they could like yeah try and reach some more goals which they reached they got like a they're going to be releasing on switch now as well and i think it's going to be fully voice acted when it maybe not fully voice acted but i think they reached the goal where they were going to get some voice acting in it as well so i'm not sure if it's like some lines or like all of the lines i don't know but yeah no that wasn't sponsored that was just like yeah the devs were incredibly nice to us um, they also sent me like a bunch of like different art assets that I could have used and made it like super easy for me to just like dive into it and to sway the other people. <laughs> like when I messaged the other boys about it, I straight up like messaged them one by one. Like there's this game called Touch Starved. I'd really like you guys to like jump in one by one and voice the characters as they come in. And here's the character I want you to play specifically. I think your voice would be really good for it. And I know we all love voice acting. And yeah, it just came together really well. And no, not sponsored. <laughs> not sponsored at all. And yeah, that game is gonna like that game's gonna have an incredibly huge release. I don't think they need any sponsorships to spread the word about that one. The artwork, the song, oh my god. I think Danny Avadan cover shit, what is the song he's covering for that? But anyway, the fact that they got Daniel Avadan to do the song is great as well. What game? It's called Touch Starved. Literally just touched off. I'll, I'll type it out because I know my voice is weird. Some people don't get my accent. Um, it's a visual novel dating game with demons and monsters. And if you search that and then Folga Ovid, you'll find a video in which me, Vox Akuma, Sunny Brisco, Ike, ba -ba 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 -ba, Evelyn, <laughs> and Dopio Drop Scythe all voiced the different characters and went through like the demo together like a five hour video of just like everybody who loves voice acting in niji sanji yen at the time because there's more voice actors in niji sanji yen more people that like voice acting i should say in niji sanji yen but at the time those were like the ones who were all like playing visual novels things like dang and rompa and other things just getting into the voice acting and having fun rip ike's last name yeah it took me a minute on that one <laughs> the stream was so good dopio's voice was Toscaru. Dopio's voice was freaking amazing. He did like this sexy Foxman character, which suited his voice so well. But everyone did amazing. Ike with like the really soft doctor. Vox with like the really seductive, slightly sadistic, sexy demon. I mean, <laughs> Vox was just made for that character, let's be fair. 
everyone did good. Oh, and Sunny being like the flirtatious, oh, over the top, like brash dude. Everyone did everything perfect. The only weak part was me. <laughs> I wanted to play Min because I was like, he's got white hair and he's angsty. I'm sure this will be fine. And then I actually started playing the game and I was like, oh, I cannot do a Min voice. Min should have been like someone like with a much lighter area voice. Um, I think I put the emotions into it pretty well. But yeah, I just don't think my voice suits Min at all. <laughs> he's a sexy character, though. I like him. Oh, and they also hit like an extra stretch goal. They're going to add two more characters when the like full game comes out. That's really cool as well. There'll be like two more whole routes to go down. We haven't even seen all the characters. Don't talk like this about my Oshi. Look, I I take the compliments when people tell me like, oh, you you did really well on like Fada Morgana. Or you did really well on this, like putting emotion in your voice. I take those compliments. And I enjoyed Min. However... <laughs> I, I I don't have the voice for Min. <laughs> I just don't. Everyone else was like cast so perfectly though. Sunny is Leander. Uh, uh, Ike is the soft doctor. Vox is like the aggressive demon. Everyone was matched so fucking well. Dopio is like the seductive fox boy. God fucking damn. That shit was amazing. <laughs> but yeah, no, that stream's one of my favorite things. And as I said, we, we're still working on it, but we're hoping to get like that group together for a different thing in the future i was hoping for it to happen in like a couple of weeks it's, it's being delayed we're doing our best but hopefully it'll work out we'll see what happens but anyway thank you for donating the food funds luther okay ski i believe youtube ate my super maybe um let me check if it was before i started reading supers remember i don't read any until i get to like the end of a gameplay session oh it does seem to have eaten your super just scrolled through and I didn't see any other one by Ukeisuke. Sorry about... Oh, wait. There it is. Okay. Um, it's really funny when the line hands are holding or something like that was read and the automatic bit was arms heavy, mom spaghetti. <laughs> Me going, God damn, I knew it would happen, Otsufu. Yeah, I think everybody at this point knows how stupid I am. <laughs> and then instantly taking it into the lewd. How could they not censor the, vo the hand holding? That's just so typical, Fu. I also love like throwing in like the dirty moments in the middle of like really cute scenes. Like when I was like, they smashed through the window and they're going to smash hard later. <laughs> it's like uh, just seeing ev the chat just instantly flood with Fuchan, not Fuchan, not Nat Fuchan. That kind of shit is always fucking hilarious to me. <laughs> Funny mom spaghetti line, goddamn thoughts line. Thank you for donating the food funds in case case. Sorry. That one, yeah, did not get grabbed by the comment grabber, but it was there eventually. Thank you for donating the food funds, and I hope you have a lovely evening. There was one more that wasn't grabbed by the comment grabber, which is Xylomin. Thank you. Oh, that's a big donation as well. I'm so sorry. Such a good game. It was really quite interesting. And I feel like I really understood Lilica and her dark perspective. Makes me want to revisit other dark visual novels like Tokyo Dark and Corpse Party. Corpse Party was fun. That one's definitely like a lot more silly. It's over the top with like the violence and not too heavy on the storyline. But yeah, Corpse Party is good. It reminds me of the same kind of energy that things like Mad Father um, and what was the other ones we played? Like Witch's House? Those ones. It reminds me of that kind of energy, but then with like really freaking good visuals. All those CGs are always so twisted. Thank you for the stream. No problem. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And yeah, with Lilica, you can't really blame her too much. Like the only Lilica we actually knew was the one who literally only existed for the sake of the curse anyway it's not like she was just some random person Lilica literally only the Lilica we know anyway only came to exist from the curse so she only existed to do what she did so you can't really blame her you can just enjoy her sadistic antics <laughs> corpse party really felt like gore porn oh it really did that's what I mean about like the storyline not feeling too deep because there was an okay storyline there but it felt like most of it was just like, how many ways do you want to see these kids be tortured? I remember the one scene that really like fucked me up because I played that game when I was pretty young too. Um, no, I wouldn't even talk about it. Yeah, that's just definitely not one we could play on stream either. <laughs> that's, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. Um, to the person who got timed out, you got timed out for spamming. Chill. <laughs> Chill. <laughs> Um, Yanka, thank you for donating the few funds. 
Long time no see, Mr. Borg. I missed you in your streams. I hope you're doing well. I'm doing fantastic. We're back up to being like a... I wouldn't really call myself an endurance streamer because I think people like Vanta and Alira are more endurance streamer than me because they do like 10 to 12 hours a lot of the time. But yeah, this is definitely like... We're back up to the point where most of our streams are between like five to six hours. So <laughs> we're recovering well. We're having a good time and everything's been amazing around Niji Sanji AEN recently. It's been great. And, oh, and Scala. Holy shit, I forgot Scala. Scala probably streams... Yeah, in fact, Scala definitely streams more than anyone in EN. To the point where I'm worried about her throat. I hope she takes more breaks in the future. Um, but yeah, I mean, she's even had to use text to speak sometimes because she just doesn't want to skip a stream. It's scary. I hope she does okay. Hopefully the surgeon she's seeing today gives her some help. But yeah, people have to look after themselves, man. Scarlet doesn't stop streaming, I swear. Yeah, it's just sometimes she does like 12 hours a day, sometimes like 16 hours a day. It's it's impressive, but I do hope she's taking care of herself, especially considering like some of the things that have happened. Bruh. Scarlet streams more than she doesn't stream. And she's freaking getting a degree at the same time. I can't even imagine that. I already feel like the amount that I do of streaming plus offline work, I feel like I can't really do much else. The fact that she's going to college right now while doing all that is just like, dude, how? I mean, I know she lives off of energy drinks, but I just, ugh, I can't imagine. <laughs> she's powerful. She is literally built different. <laughs> Michaela again. I hope you can play Versh Evermore Error Salvation. I recommend it because it's dark, beautiful, and angsty. Playing blind means insta-death. That doesn't sound fun. <laughs> Might be angsty, though. Thank you for donating the food funds, and I hope you have a lovely evening. She's powerful. Yeah, she really is. Maybe that's the secret energy drinks. Until your heart explodes. <laughs> with everything that's been happening, like with those P Panera drinks recently. Yeah, nah. I, I mean, I have a caffeine sensitivity. Fuck that shit. But even just in general, people, yeah, d just do way too much caffeine nowadays. It can't be good for people. <laughs> That's why our room is so messy. Nah, maybe. Apparently, Kodika's room is really messy as well. We got a lot of messy people in Niji Sanji. And... Anyway. Louise Nicole Kanenzaka. Oh, this is, we're going back to old Super Chats, by the way, so I won't be able to comment grab any of these. But we're starting back to the old super chats and then we'll check Streamlabs. I'm not sure if we actually got any Streamlabs today, but we do our best. Louise Nicole Kanenzaka, here for the thesis visual novel research purposes. Are you actually making a thesis on visual novels? Because if so, that's badass. That's a sick thesis to do. <laughs> There's definitely a lot to dive into about how they're kind of like stories, but kind of like games. Visual novels are interesting as well because they can become so immersive. Like some of them are just straight up like text on a screen with some images and that's fine. That's enjoyable. But then some of them, they have like fluid animations. Some of them, like I remember Fata Morgana having like different text boxes for every different character and completely different OSTs for every different timeline. And yeah, there are so many out there that have like the little animated moments that make you feel more intrinsic. And then there's things like, um, there are ones that like, pretend they've infected your gaming console and shit like some of them are so good and yeah have like virtual desktops and stuff that you can explore so yeah visual novels if you do them just like the plain way they're very simple but a lot of people have been like really fucking creative with them and done some really interesting things my mom says i play too many games but it's just visual novels well then they're not <laughs> That's the same as just reading a bunch of books just with music and voice acting and sound effects. And yeah, yeah, screw that. Tell them you're just reading a book, essentially. You're enjoying a story and getting to empathize with different characters and expand your worldview. Saj, what's you on the game, foo? I also saw on Twitter that you got noticed by Howlin for your link clip post. What? I didn't even know that. What? <laughs> when did that happen? <laughs> I'm going to go check this. Lee Howling? I don't see why he would. I'm a nobody. I was just like a random watch along stream and then a really short post. Wasn't even like a proper analysis. It's kind of embarrassing. I didn't want him to see that. If anything, it would be better to like do the clip where I was talking about the show. Damn it. it oh yeah, for some reason it does have a lot of engagement. Lee Howling five hours ago. 
Thank you so much, and I hope we can show you more wonderful animation in the future. What the heck? That's freaking crazy! Dude is such an amazing director. How did he find my post? But yeah, he's the director of Link Click. He's the director of Heaven Officials Blessing, Tianguan Sifu. To be hero, to be heroine. Way back in the day, Fox Spirit Matchmaker. Holy crap. How did he find that random ass tweet? <laughs> Actually, yeah, that's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> I wish he found something more impressive. <laughs> oh, god dang it. I just said like, oh, it's good. This is good. That's god damn it. Well, I'm glad he liked seeing the post. <laughs> what the hell? Well, hopefully that means someday we'll get to do more Donghua based stuff. I love Donghua. Hopefully, yeah, we'll get to do more official watch alongs. It was so nice when we got to do an official watch along for the first episode of Heaven Officials Blessing. That was incredible. I'm so glad we got to share like the video and audio. We actually got to watch it together. That was sick. Congratulations, Futan. I'm just embarrassed, man. That's so nice, but man, it's like, I'd imagine it's what it feels like if you're like an artist and you're used to doing like really nice, fully detailed, fully fleshed out images. And then like somebody massive comes along and you've just drawn like a dick butt or you've drawn like a quick scribble, rakugeki kind of thing. And someone that you admire has just like retweeted that and been like, yo, this is cool. I'm just like, okay. I hope you're doing amazing too, Li Haoling. You're doing amazing shows. I'm so happy. <laughs> Fuck me. Oh, thank you so much, Sarge. I didn't even know that was a thing. Oh, damn it. Ah, uh, thank you for donating the food funds as well. Kestrel. It was my six-month sheep anniversary, and I lurked, but I'm just saying I'm super hyped for what you've planned this year. Thank you! You've grown so much even in this short time, and I'm so excited to see where you go from here. You're doing amazing, Fu. Oh, thank you so much, Kestrel. That's so sweet. Fu, you did that to me. I do that to a lot of people, to be fair, Sneku. <laughs> a lot of the time, the things that I end up liking the most are, yeah, things that people have done, just crypt scribble. If people do, like, like quick, easy, like, rakugeki kind of scribbles when it, like, comes directly from a stream, like, I love those because they just, they feel like little snapshots of our stream. So it almost feels like memories from a photo album. And, yeah, you do a lot of those, Sneku, so I always like those. Anyone who does, like, quick little chibis for like silly moments that happen in games i'm always like this is beautiful thank you so much but thank you as well kestrel yeah i'm so excited um like i said the other day saw the harida notice is harida the tekken guy i feel like harida's the tekken guy right you mean rosami um but yeah what was i saying oh shit i was in the middle ah right um like, I'm so glad that I finished recording Enshrouding. So, yeah, Enshrouding is done. It's been passed on to the mixer. So, I'm glad that I'm done with that. <laughs> I never have to sing again. It's in their hands. I've done my best. <laughs> we'll see where it goes from there. But, yeah, we're, we're trying to do a lot for, like, our second anniversary and then the archivist debut is going to be great and then this uh, the, 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 the shepherd is going to be incredible shepherd is going to be like a big direct well i don't mean direction change on the channel but it's just like we're going to be starting a new story and we're going to be writing this one properly we're going to be fleshing it out and everything what do you mean you'll never sing again i mean i'm free i recorded noctix's second song i've recorded my second song <laughs> no i'm kidding i'll still do karaoke's and stuff and I'm probably going to eventually release a song for the Shepherd. But I think when it comes to the Shepherd song, it'll be something like a drinking song. Like it'll be one of the ones that you don't have to have any technical skill for. I'll probably just recruit a bunch of people to just shout into a microphone at the same time. And it'll be like one of those kind of drinking songs like in The Hobbit where it's like, you can take ba 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 you can ba 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 But the one thing we can agree on is drinking at the Green Dragon. Shit like that. <laughs> It'll just be like, oh, Wellerman style. Yeah, or like one of those. Like, what do they even call those? Sea shanties? Yeah, one of those kinds of things where like, you don't really need technical skill. It's just about like, just belting a bunch of people at the same time. And it sounds good just because of the like, bum, 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 kind of like atmosphere. <laughs> We're doing shanties. I mean, that's the thing. If I was a tavern song, exactly. If I'm going to release a song for the shepherd, it's got to be like that because... I cannot sing. Like, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I've done my best over the years, 
But if I want to release like an official song in the future, yeah, it'll be like one that'll suit me. Folk song? Kind of, yeah. Kind of. And that'll suit like the setting for the shepherd as well, since he's in like a fantasy world. It, it'll be fine. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not planning on trying to like properly sing in the future. I'll leave that up to the people that have created AI voices of me. <laughs> we'll just have our fun singing. We'll keep doing our karaoke's. It'll be fine. And if they ever want Noctigs to do another song where they do like a group cover, and yeah, I'll join those. Don't worry. Those are always fun. <laughs> Peppy4, thank you so much. So much? Thank you so much for donating the food funds. And Peppy's another one who does beautiful artwork every day, all the time. I don't know how you do so many beautiful pieces of artwork, Peppy. But I always love seeing your art as well. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for donating the food funds. I hope you have a lovely evening. Karaoke is so much fun. It is. It's incredible. Especially when you have the right atmosphere. Like, don't get me wrong. <laughs> the thing is, I can't sing properly. <laughs> I enjoy singing, but I'm not technically skilled at singing. And I don't want to be. I'd rather improve, like, my voice acting, my writing, and some other things in my life. There are definitely other things I want to do above singing. But what I'm saying is, like, people that can sing technically well, like Enna, Millie, Alira, Shutan, Ike. Oh, there's so many. Uki, Sunny. There are so many people who can sing ridiculously well. And it's always fun to listen to people like that sing. But I also just like karaoke, the atmosphere of karaoke, where you're just like putting on songs that everybody knows, screaming your heart out, all singing together. I love that shit. That shit's good as well. So as long as you guys have fun with it, that's all that matters. Kasumi Hayasi, thank you so much for donating the food funds. My Kami Oship Fuchan, you are amazing. You are awesome. You are wonderful, and I love your voice. Have a wonderful day and good night. Bye, you. But all I can say to that is reverse uno. <laughs> thank you so much for being so sweet, Kasumi Hayasi. And thank you for somehow always making such beautiful outfits for your dolls and all the other Fuchan merch you've got. It's been so beautiful to see. Kasumi Hayasi somehow managed to make the exact, like, ghost. In fact, let me switch into it real quick. I hope it's on this model. <laughs> it might not be on this model. One second. It might take me like 30 seconds if it's on a different model. <laughs> um, oh, good. It is on this one. Bum, ba -da -bum, ba -da -bum. So yeah, Kasumi Hiyasi managed to somehow, like only like two days after I used this one, because this one, it has existed for like a year. I just, I didn't use it for a really long time. But they managed to make like an exact replica of this for their ball jointed doll. It looks so cute. I always love those ball jointed dolls and Kasumi Hayasi always manages like every time I do like a sponsorship and get some new official art and every time we get like new official art or new like assets that are like popular and get used quite a bit. Somehow Kasumi Hayasi manages to always like put them together and share them with everyone really quickly and it's always so nice to see. It's like a 3D Fuchan. <laughs> okay, let me change back. But yeah, I really like that asset. Oh my god, I forgot to use the Kigurumi asset yesterday. Stupid fucking Fuchan. <laughs> I'd literally said to people I was finally going to use the Kigurumi asset because a watch along was like the perfect time. And then I just wore the sheep ears yesterday. Ah, damn it. Ah, someday. Someday we'll wear our customized confidant Kigurumi. You can use it today. No, I haven't set it up. That's the thing. <laughs> I need to actually like set it up so that it like moves along with me and stuff. Next time, yeah. I mean, we, yeah, that's it. We're going to do a Heaven Officials Blessing watch along at some point too. So we'll drop the Kigurumi for that one. <laughs> but I like the ghost one as well because that'll be cute for like Halloween streams as well. Like next time we do reading like horror stories or playing some sort of spoopy game. Like having the ghost outfit on that would be so funny. So cute. Hi, <laughs> Candy Butts. Thank you so much for donating the few funds. I'm sad to leave early, but I hope you have a good time. Foo. I had a wonderful time. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for donating the food funds. Lovely to have you here. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day wherever you went. I hope you enjoy the VOD when you get to watch it too. Because the storyline for this game was so good. I had so much fun. Also, for anyone who was there for the stream yesterday, I'm sorry I had to ditch out so early as well. I didn't get to read Super Chats. I didn't get to read the membership that joined during the stream. So I'm really sorry about that. It was just because like I had said on the stream, I had zero hours of sleep. As soon as I was done with that stream, I walked dog, then I posted some stuff on Twitter, and then I just slept. <laughs> I think I slept from like 
5 30 p.m till like 8 30 p.m woke up had dinner did some offline work and then i went back to bed again just like immediately at midnight it wasn't even <laughs> then i slept all the way until like 8 a.m so i got like 14 hours of sleep last night to make up for the fact that the day before i got zero and i felt great this morning so it balanced out <laughs> it balanced out <laughs> i just sleep yesterday oh yeah no really well it was really nice. Like I said, a extended nap that was pretty much just extra sleep, followed by like a good solid eight hours. It was nice. Woke up full of energy today and finally got to retweet and respond to some fan arts. I still have some fan arts I haven't caught up on either. I felt really bad. I hadn't like shared any of the fan arts in like a good three to four days. I'm normally on top of that. So I'm sorry about that as well. Wait. Happy, did you drop a super? Oh, you dropped a super sticker. It said thanks. Sorry. I didn't even read out the thanks before. Thank you for the super sticker, Peppy. That's so sweet of you. Thank you always for the beautiful art. Xylemin again. Watching your streams always brings me joy. Especially now that I'm pretty damn sick and have been for a while. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. It is mm. When you're sick for a while, it sucks. So I hope you get better soon. I actually, occasionally, I like sick days. If it, like, gets you to the point where you're just like, you know what? I should actually take a few days off. But yeah, when you get sick for a while, it sucks. But occasionally it's nice to just like take some time off and just let yourself be sick and just lay in bed with the heater on, read some books, watch some shows. I'm glad that you're finding comfort from the streams at least. I always feel better after one of your streams. Thank you for your funny and awesome streams. You're too nice. How dare you? Thank you for donating the food funds. I hope you feel better soon. Yeah, get well soon. Take it easy. Have a wonderful evening and thank you for being here. Oh yeah, I'm finally reading a book again. <laughs> it's been like forever since I felt like I actually had the time to read a book. Um, but I'm finally, I think it's called The Justice of Kings. It's like a fantasy novel, which is a bit derivative of some other things, but it's like written really well. And it's like the world building is insane. It's like a combination of... I'd say like Game of Thrones and Dune, which is a weird combination, <laughs> but it's like proper fantasy world. Um, it's the only thing that's really Dune. I, sh I shouldn't say it's like a combination of that and Dune. It's just like the, these group of people called the Justices, which kind of reminds me of the Legardises from 505, if I'm not lying. <laughs> but this group of people called the Justices have this like special magical power. It's kind of like a Jedi mind trick or kind of like the voice from Dune, where they can just command people, make them not lie and make them do things with their voice. And it's all about this investigator going around the kingdom trying to find like different things he he acts as judge jury and executioner and he has a little like band of people with him that serve him it's really good it's been pretty dark so far i'm only like three chapters in but it's been really good um a lot of cliffhangers a lot of world building to the point where it's like this world feels awesome tell me more but yeah it's been nice doing that anyway thank you for donating through fun xylemin i hope you have a lovely evening Okay, on to Streamlabs. I'm not sure if we got any today. So this may be nothing. Oop. Sounds interesting. Yeah, it's great. I mainly picked it up because it's like, it's, it's supposed to be a trilogy, but the first two books are out. The third book is supposed to drop in like a day or two. A day or two? No, a month or two. Sorry. <laughs> I think it drops like late February. Um, But yeah, it's a trilogy and the trilogy altogether is called like the empire of the wolf trilogy or something like that that caught my eye and then i saw the cover where it's just like a fantasy looking knight sitting on a throne with a sword and i was like yeah th th I, and i read the blurb and it was like judge jury and executioner the judges travel the land executing the will of the lord and i was like i'm reading this that's it i'm buying it <laughs> um oh shit we got a few today sorry i was completely wrong Julian, thank you so much. Oh, please don't read. Okay. Thank you so much for donating the food funds, Julian. That's so sweet of you. I will read this off stream. It's a three-parter, but thank you for all the donations. How many bookshelves does Fuchan have? Only one. <laughs> I think I'm going to take a picture of it at some point in the future. Because right now what I have is that one bookshelf that I took a photo of before where it was already full and there were already a bunch of books on top. So what I actually have is one full bookshelf. And then like 12 giant bags that are each full of like eight books <laughs> just stacked next to it on on top of each other. I just, I figured I'm, 
I'm gonna move houses in like a year, so I'll wait to buy a new bookshelf. Um, and then I'm gonna have like, yeah, when I move to my new house, I wanna have like an entire wall in a bedroom or a study uh, or an office, one of the two or three. Um, I wanna have like an entire wall just covered in bookshelves and most of it's gonna be books and then there'll be like some of my other like memorabilia, like all my Donghua chibis, my little Wei Wu Shen and Lang Wang Jin. Well, actually I've got all the Mo Shang Tong Shu characters as an androids my little like figures and stuff and all the Fuchan stuff will still be in boxes <laughs> I've got so much Fuchan merch as well the only thing I actually have hanged up is Lamb Mama's birthday image from last year they, they sent me the canvas version of the Lamb Mama's beautiful like me surrounded by darkness and red flowers love lies dying so yeah I've hung that up but all the rest of them <laughs> They're just in boxes still. <laughs> they send them to me. I open them. I'm like, cool. I do things like I sniff the the scents we got and stuff like that. I like check the quality of things. And I'm like, that's so cool. Back into the box you go. <laughs> Free the Fuchans. No, that's my secret shame. <laughs> Come to think of it. I wonder if they're going to make Archivist merch. I don't actually know how that works. Since the Archivist... Well, and then the Shepherd is going to be my main model after the Archivist. I'm still, like I've said multiple times, I'm still going to use them all for different things. But I definitely feel like the Archivist is going to be my main model and then the Shepherd is going to be my main model. Um, so I wonder if they'll start switching to using my Archivist form when he drops or if they're still going to use the Goddess. Curious. Maybe they'll like change things for different things. I don't know how that works. I don't know how it's... Does anyone know how it's worked for Kyo? Does Kyo have like any adult version of him merchandise or is it still all chippy him? Probably be similar to Voxy where they use his, They still use Voxy's 1.0? I didn't even think about Voxy, yeah. Hmm. Although, no. Does Voxy's technically count as a new model? Yeah, it has a new face. So yeah, it technically does count as a new model. Interesting. I think he's still chibi. Yeah, maybe it'll always just be Legatus then. Interesting. Interesting. Yuki Tempura. Otsu doomed lesbians. They're not doomed. Well, they might still be doomed. Um. <laughs> Yeah, that ending got a little bit interesting. <laughs> it doesn't seem like they're doomed, though. It seems like they're living a happy domestic life full of bliss. So that's nice. But thank you for... Mm, I forgot, Yuki Tempora, you have that image. <laughs> There's been so much Seahorse Fucha and like fan art and fan edits and stuff. It's been really funny. I'm glad I did that part of the stream. <laughs> the Seahorse kiss. Yeah, the person who like edited together the clip to make it like... What was that? It's the shape of water kind of thing. Um, a lot of people have done fan art where it's either like a cute little kiss scene or it's like a really creepy like... Somebody did one the other day where it's like POV if you were actually the shrimp and it's like a really close up like the giant open mouth or nostril or whatever of the seahorse is like glaring at you. It's so funny. <laughs> Thank you so much for donating the food funds, Yuki Tempo, and I hope you have a lovely evening. You like it? I'm glad. Yeah. As long as the official... <laughs> This is the thing. I just finished a stream where I put my whole fucking cybussy into some of those voice acting scenes. Do you think they're going to clip my creepy ghost voice doing the whole like, come with me? No. You know what they'll clip? They'll clip the fucking seahorse clip. They'll take the seahorse or they'll take like, I don't know, Legardus being like slightly seductive or something like that they'll take the most cringe thing they can find and they'll be like here's fucha <laughs> we want to show to every niji sanji fan what type of streamer fuchan is this is the type of streamer <laughs> oh damn it <laughs> they never clip the actual funny things okay <laughs> neko baga thank you so much for donating the food funds the newbie gm is so amazing i'm looking forward to the whole shepherd's world me too i can't wait for it I'm glad I've got so many people working on so many different things. Um, yeah, we, I, I'm going to have like new music being commissioned this entire month. So like every couple of every week or so for a while, we're probably going to have like a new song that I'm going to be too excited and just play straight away. But then, yeah, these songs are going to become like the OST for every time we do a read along and like a writing stream. Right now, we're just working on like different arrangements of the main theme. So the Shepherd's theme. Um, but yeah, we're probably going to do like a full OST, like another like six to eight tracks after that of just like different atmospheric, like Celtic fantasy music. Um, and then, yeah, that'll all be used as like BGMs for 
riding Shepard, reading Shepard, and yeah, occasionally for streams like this. I mean, this one doesn't actually fit this stream too much. <laughs> Normally, I actually use them during fantasy things, but it is what it is. <laughs> and yeah, if you're a member of the membership, they will all be uploaded there eventually. Just see how long that goes on for. But I'm so glad that the composer wanted to come back and do all these arrangements. Because yeah, I'd reached out to them and I was like, do you want to do like a... I want to do like six more arrangements. How do you feel about that? <laughs> And they were just like, yeah, no, I'm down. Let's do it. <laughs> fantasy in a way. Oh, no, I mean, yeah, no, this is still fantasy, even if it's like a different soft kind of feeling. But I more meant like this. This would this would feel more calm and soothing in like an ASMR stream, like really quiet or something that's just trying to put you to sleep. Not in a tragic Yuri visual novel. Really, we should be playing something like scary, quiet, gothic, orchestral. How many OSTs do you have so far? I have no freaking clue. <laughs> At this point, I've stopped counting. I think for Legardis 505, I originally had like six, and then I like extended it and got like five to six more made. And then I had like three to four that were like made for like the archivist specifically, made to be like BGM for streams and stuff. And yeah, now we've already got like, I think we've got like six for the Shepherd as well. And yeah, there's much more on the way. So I like having my own music because for one thing, I'm always scared that even though a lot of music says, hey, it's copyright free, you can use it. I've used some of those in the past and still gotten copyright claims from random ass companies. So I like having my own music where I literally have the contract that says you own the rights to this completely. And I can just be like, yeah, try to copyright strike me. I dare you. I know the composer. <laughs> anyway. Moon Kindred, thank you for donating the few funds. Dear Fu, I thought up possible flavor text for your next masochistic golem stream almost as bad as self-checkouts. Oh god. <clears throat> Unexpected god damn it. Unexpected item in Baggins area? Read if it suits. Sorry for my punny spam. If I ever seem to correct you, I'm just being pedantic and silly. I I don't even remember you correcting me. But thank you for donating the food funds, Moon Kindred. That wasn't a bad pan pun either. I was ready to like read it in Gollum voice. I was like, is this just someone wanting me to read a silly line in Gollum voice? And then I saw the line and I was like, you know what? That's a pretty good 8 out of 10. I haven't seen that pun before, but that works. I feel like people could make like a short, quick, quick animatic or like a quick like four coma kind of comic out of it. It was funny. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> thank you so much for the big donation, Moon Kindred. I hope you enjoyed the stream today. I hope you have a lovely evening. And I'm so glad. I was worried when I started reading that donation. I was like, I thought up a possible flavor test for your next massacre in the mess of my masochistic golem stream. I was like, oh no. Is it finally happening? Are people going to request me to play golem again? <laughs> I don't think I'm ready to play golem again still. G give me another few months. I am going to finish that game. That's like my white whale. I will finish that game someday. But that is going to be a fucking slog. We're only halfway through. And yeah, the halfway took us six hours. Uh, maybe that'll be good, like, uh, I don't know. Uh, I had other ideas for April Fool's, but that might be an okay April Fool's stream. Or maybe like a Voxy birthday kind of thing. Vox always found that shit funny. When the fuck is Voxy's birthday? Vox Akma birthday. Oh, the 25th of April. Yeah, that's far enough away. That might be okay. That might be okay. Still remember the clip of you molding in that Golem game? The stupidest fucking thing about that game. <laughs> yeah, that one moment when I was just climbing a wall, jumped up, there was nothing around me. No enemies, no obstructions, no spikes, no nothing. And it was just like, you died. It was like, you died when I jumped into the air. I was about to grab the next part of the ladder. And I was, what did I die on? What? There was nothing there, which means there was some sort of invisible obstacle. Not even in other games have invisible walls where if you try to get like out of bounds, they're like, hey, you can't move. That's understandable. That game has invisible fucking death cones. And there was that part where it soft locked me for like a full 10 minutes where it was it saved state to us after we'd been seen by an enemy. And so the enemy, every time we reloaded, it was just like, 
oh, there's someone over here. Let me grab you. And it's like, how do I? It took us so long to get away from. That game is busted. That's the fun thing. Like, I can... <laughs> A lot of people talk about the fact that I'm like very nice to things, even things that aren't great. The Gollum game is a steaming pile of crap. <laughs> I will say that openly, and I'm still going to finish it someday. Rogue, thank you for donating the Foo Fighters. <laughs> oh my god. Thanks for the stream, Fuchan. This game was amazing. Since you enjoyed it too, I heavily recommend The Divine Speaker by the same studio. It's 18 plus and long, so not for stream. Oh, it's long, damn. I was hoping like some of the other ones, like I'm fine if the dream one ends up being like a good like 10 hour thing. That's just an interesting enough story that I'll dive into it. But yeah, I was hoping some of the other ones would be like short like today's one. <laughs> Has great characters and lovely art. Maybe something for your free time. Yeah, that looks nice. And also the Shansha one looked really nice and pretty as well. Bum, ba -da -bum. Anyway, that's all of our stream labs for the day. Where was that comment? I saw a comment that I wanted to grab. Somebody talked about... Oh no, where was it? That's another thing! Why the heck didn't the Niji Sanji official account take that clip? That's one of the funniest clips I've ever had. Me dying randomly in Gollum and then screaming and asking if I died to depression. Or the one with Fanana, where Fanana got me killed in Among Us and I screamed out like, We? We? Like, those are funny clips. Those are the kind of clips that would actually get fucking views not get me mocked <laughs> not make me cringe <laughs> you only do one route it might be doable but it's still like 20 hours that's the problem if it's 20 hours for like a non-streaming kind of thing it would take forever they did didn't they wait did they oh that clip was in one of the compilations oh okay now i feel better why do i not remember that one was i on break when that came out or something I just remember recently, it's been like a bunch of like kissy noises and barking and cat meows. And I'm like, how do you guys find this? You watch the whole stream and then just go for the cringe ones. Oh, so I can't find the one. Somebody was talking about like, oh, there we go. Gollum and Hobbit fanfics. I wanted to grab that because I can just imagine like. Just fucking Frodo and Gollum. Gollum just like pushes Frodo down, pulls down his pants, and it's like, Ah, Master Bat. Wait. Can I not do the Gollum voice right now? My precious. I can't. Holy shit. Smeagol. Smeagol. I still don't battle. That's more seahorse. Damn it. Clever hobbit says to climb so high. No, I can't do the Gollum voice right now. What the fuck? Anyway, I was just going to do the line of like, we like said raw and real. That line. That's a good sex line. Even, well, it's not a good sex line. That's a good cringe dirty line is what I mean. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You've got a voice clip of Seahorse talking about dirty, raw and wriggling sex. There you go. <laughs> Great line to walk in on. Uh, don't worry, person whose name I can't pronounce because it's actually just a cat. I want to grab that one. Your name is just a cat cow emoji. That's adorable. Did that get grabbed by the comment grabber? It didn't. I'm so sad. That name's so cool, but I can't pronounce it. But anyway, you walked in on that line. Too bad. We're actually ending stream right now. It's been, there we go. Oh shit, I missed it. Ah, that's an adorable little cow emoji name. Anyway, we're ending stream now. We've done all of our, we did five hours of gameplay, an hour of 20 minutes of <laughs> Zatsudan. This was supposed to be a one to two hour stream today. This is this is what I do with my life. But this was an incredible game. So awesome. So glad two and a half studios let us play it. Tragic Yuri that ended in beauty. So yeah, if you haven't, check out the VOD. The VOD will make it so much worth it. This was a great game. <laughs> 10 minutes of cringe. How dare you? It's never a one hour stream, Foo. I've done some short streams before. The few times that I've done like ASMR and stuff, like I know people don't like the Zatsudans being added to that. So we normally just end as soon as those are done. Those are normally pretty short. <laughs> so sad I missed the kiss. Yeah, I felt genuinely bad for you, Kaya. <laughs> when you came in and were like, I didn't watch this whole thing to not see them kiss. And it was just like, that literally happened five minutes ago. <laughs> anyway, we're going to end stream here for today. Thank you guys so wait. Oh God, I missed a super chat. How did I? 
Rain the Fuchan sheep. Thank you so much for donating the food funds. Ah, did I grab that one? Common grabber, let's go. How did I miss it then? Rain the Fuchan sheep. Thank you so much for donating the food funds. Ike, OG, oh, oh, EK, OG. <laughs> Sorry, because of the capitalization on that, I read it as Ike, OG, and I was like, oh, Ike, OG, Summer? Yes, old man Ike would be pretty sex. EK, OG, merch of Folger Ovid, instant sold out. Ah, uh, you'd be surprised. Some people like Ike OGs. Some people prefer the Ike men. Some people prefer twinks. Some people prefer twunks. Some people prefer big old hairy bears. Uh, big old hairy bara bear men. Yeah, it would just have a different kind of audience. We'll see. I'll definitely be talking to them about it. Because, yeah, I want merchandise of the archivist and the shepherd. <laughs> like I said, if they ever approach me with the whole, like, figure thing, I'm going to be like... Okay, but Shepard, though. <laughs> like, all the designs are amazing. Lamb Mama did amazing on Legatus. I can't wait to show you guys the Shepard. Oh, the Shep I can't wait to show you guys the Archivist. But if we're going to get a figure, make it the Shepard. You guys will understand why in a few months. Anyway. <laughs> One more super chat, and then we'll head out. Wait, the two more? Eh? Why is this blue? It's yellow. I don't know why it's appearing as blue on the comment grabber. Comfy Grabber, you are drunk. Go home. Claudines, thank you so much for donating the food funds. It says it's empty, but it's actually a super sticker of a cute little Shiba Inu holding a heart. Thank you for donating the food funds, Claudines. I hope you enjoyed the stream today. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening, and thank you so much for being here. Okay. Yeah, thank you all for being here. What are we doing tomorrow? Tomorrow's Bug Fables, right. So tomorrow, we're starting with Bug Fables at 10 a.m. EST. And then I am going to be joining Doppio for both his Totsu and... Did he announce what he's playing? I don't know if he did. So just to be safe, <laughs> we're going to be on Doppio's channel for a little bit in the evening. But yeah, we're starting with Bug Fables in the morning. I'm not sure how long we're going to take. Not even Bug Fables would take one to two hours. Bug Fables is like a 20 hour game. We're, we're going to play a few hours of it. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> But yeah, we're going to play a few hours of it and then we'll end. But yeah, tomorrow's Bug Fables and then my day off. So finally get a day off. Finally. <laughs> and I don't have to record a song. Oh, I'm so happy. How is it so long? It's like a full on like RPG kind of situation. I always thought it'd be like a silly little cute game too. This is the thing. I never even looked into it. P.O. Chan like gifted it to me and I was like, oh, that's so nice of you. Thank you. And I just never looked into it. So I'm glad we're finally going to play it. We're going to see why P.O. Chan loves this game so much. <laughs> That's a fantastic storyline. Well, we're going to try it. But right now, just from like the art styles, like I'm going in completely blind. I just know it's like, yeah, cute art for sure. Cute little chibi bugs. We'll see what happens. With that said, we're disappearing for today. We'll be back tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. EST for Bug Fibus. And we'll be on P.O. Chan's channel for a couple of other things, possibly. One or two other things. I don't know. We'll see what happens. <laughs> but thank you for being here. Um, should I end on the new outro? Yeah, we'll end on the Shepherd's outro. We've done like this all day. We might as well, yeah. I'm going to practice the Shepherd's outro again and see if I can make that sound good as an outro as well. As always, do not be led astray, my confidants. And as I've said in the past, never trust anybody who tells you not to be led astray. They're evil. They're doing horrible things. Do not be led astray, my confidants. And as always, I will catch you guys next time. And as usual, other than yesterday, because I was a little baby broke bitch who had to get out of there and rest, I'd like to read the membership names on the way out. So thank you to everybody who joined the membership today, including B Cement. Ayate. Maru Maru, thank you so much for the gifted membership. Ian. Saj. Andrui Murasaki. Ayato P. Chaos V. Yanka. Peaches. Sweet Tori. And my phone just ran out of battery. <laughs> I apparently didn't charge that properly last night. Ooh, there's someone in chat named Ibuprofen. Ibuprofen, how do you pronounce your name? <laughs> do you say ibuprofen? I, I just found out some people pronounce it ibuprofen. I've never heard of that before. I've always heard ibuprofen. How do you pronounce it? <laughs> but ibuprofen, welcome back to the membership. Veli Chan, thank you so much for the gifted membership. 
Step, thank you so much for the five gifted membership. I hope you have a lovely evening. Watermelon. Praise. Vixen Narwhal. Shimomi, thank you so much for the five gifted membership. User 8501. Betty Potato. My son. KB. Seri. McClaudia. Mina. Oh, that's a lot of Korean. I'm going to have to translate this, and I'm sorry if I butcher this. I'm going to do my best. Do. Oh, the first word is English. Dopamine. Dopamine 중독자. Dopamine 중독자. 중 중독자. Dopamine 중독자. Dopamine 중독자. 중독자 apparently means addict. So dopamine addict. <laughs> dopamine 중독자. Welcome back to the membership. Celsius, Kurumi, M. Jane, thank you so much for the gifted. Also, I'm sorry for calling out your name like that, ibuprofen. I just realized you never responded, so I hope I didn't make you uncomfortable. <laughs> Some people don't like when they get noticed in chat. Sorry if I did scare you away. <laughs> Green Bean, Doponiko, Yuminara, Refnot, Val, and finally Nara. Thank you all for joining the membership. Oh, and Pear Ploy, you got in just at the last second. Thank you so much for joining the membership. I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much for joining me today, everybody. We'll be back tomorrow at 10 a.m. EST for Bug Fables. As always, do not be led astray. And I will catch you guys next time. Bye-bye.